today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, it's game one of today's doubleheader between the Western Illinois Leathernecks and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Happy Saturday from a windy and chilly Iowa City. The the sun is shining. It's out, but <laughs> temperatures are in the upper 40s and low 50s. Uh, this morning as we get into the afternoon. Iowa started the series with a run rule victory, 11-1 to in eight innings yesterday, a complete game in all three facets. Brody Breck started for Iowa. He struck out eight batters, but only lasted four innings. The Hawkeyes had to turn to the bullpen a little bit sooner than anticipated, but the bullpen did a great job, led by Jack Young, who came in with the bases loaded, nobody out, and did a nice job to get out of that jam. Young led the Iowa bullpen, and held the Leatherneck scoreless and the, the uh, bullpen in its entirety. Young, Wheatley, Archer, and Detay did not allow a free base to Western Illinois. Offensively, Gable Mitchell had a career day going four for five with five RBIs. The defense turned a couple of double plays and made some outstanding plays in the field to clinch the victory. 11-1, to Iowa won it, but now comes the challenge of an early doubleheader. The Hawkeyes learn, look to turn this into a winning streak and it starts with game one against Western Illinois in a few minutes. It's Iowa and Western Illinois, the Hawkeyes and Leathernecks. A double dip today from Banks. Game one of today's doubleheader coming up in just a bit. Let's relive some of the highlights from yesterday's 11 to one run rule victory for the Hawkeyes. Here's the two, two. Called third strike, high outside corner. Brody got him. Michael choked up on the bat, the 3-2, blooped into right, hooking towards the line, it is down for a base hit, and into the corner, Garen chugging around second, he'll get to third base, Mitch Bowe puts up both hands, stop right on that bag, Blake, he'll stay at third, it's a double for Seager. One out, Seager's at third, here's Peterson, swinging at the first pitch, drives it deep to left, it is over the left fielder's head and to the wall, Peterson around first. He's at second with an RBI stand-up double. The Hawks have the lead. It's two to one. One ball, two strikes. The pitch, ground ball, left side. Seegers, backhand stop, throw to second for one. On to first, double play. How about that? Jack Young, you bet. He gets out of the jam in a great six, four, three, double play. Huxdorf drives this to left, carrying well, and it'll move the left fielder back. One hop off the wall. One run is in. That's Peterson. It's an RBI double for Huxdorf, jumping on the first pitch. 5-1 Hawks. A one. Mitchell shoots it into left field. Base hit. Tello will score. They're going to wave another run. Here comes Huck around third. The throw is up the line at third base. Two RBI single. Gable Mitchell. And it's 7-1. Here's the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Seegers, gloves, steps on the bag himself, throw to first base, got him for the double play. 2-2 from Archer. Beautiful pitch. Gannon goes to the curveball out of his quiver, and Archer sets down Loomis to end the top of the seventh. Mitchell drives this into the gap in right center. It is down for a base hit. One run is in. That's all it took. And the Hawkeyes win it 11 to one. Time to start a win streak, Hawkeyes. Two games against Western Illinois coming up in just a little bit. We'll take a break. When we come back, John talks with Iowa reliever Ben Detay. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. in the VIP club and you could win tickets to the sold out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. 
Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel, good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pre-Game. I'm here with Hawkeye reliever Ben Dete. Ben, thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's, I guess, well, let's start with a couple of things. One, how'd you, how'd you get to Iowa? I know you're a Central Iowa kid. How, how'd you get to Iowa City? I started at, I'm from West Des Moines originally, went to Valley High School, then started my college career at Iowa Central. Played outfield probably more than I pitched there and uh, found myself recruit here from from robin lund and fell in love ever since nice so you got here kind of a left-handed specialist or as a reliever and then then ran into some arm trouble what uh you don't have to tell all the dirty details but how how did that go for you yeah the first year i was here started out really well had really high hopes going into the season ran into some some arm issues here and there struggled more than you would hope and uh last last series of the season tore my ucl in the bullpen warming up for the indiana madness game um and had surgery spent spent a year recovering and uh it was it was a long haul from there so what's it like to be had you been injured before at all i had never had any kind of serious injury so this is my first time actually sitting out from from baseball for an injury so how was that to to not be you know kind of not be around your team what, what was that like mentally it was way harder than i was expecting you always hear people talk about how hard coming back from injury is and uh the the mental wear it takes on you but it's really hard to understand until it actually happens and not being on the road all of last year and spending that time around teammates it's a really hard thing to to adjust to and it also makes you appreciate the game a lot more this year it's been probably one of the most fun seasons i've ever had and it's purely because of my appreciation from the injury just to be back and be ready to go absolutely so you and i talked a little bit on the bus too one of the one of the tough parts of recovery is you know we always want to just be better each day what's kind of been the ups and downs of that of, of you know you're better than you were a month ago, but some days you aren't better than you were yesterday. How's that go? It's understanding the body, really, um, after you go through a surgery like that, but also just in this long season that we play, everybody experiences it. The body doesn't want to be 100% every day, and you have to learn to understand what that's like and know when to take some time off and know when when you got to do the certain things to get your body back to that 100% because you're not going to be there every day. And you just have to, to find a way to, to be able to compete through that. Listen to some of your body signals, and, and probably the injury taught you taught you when your body talks to you to pay attention. Yeah, yeah, I think that's something that goes really unnoticed, especially in high school and community colleges are notorious for letting guys just work through things on, the, on their own. And there's a time and place for that, and there's also not a time and place for that. <laughs> sure. So you and I... You and I talked a little bit about uh, uh, golf on one of the bus trips. How, what kind of what kind of golfer? How'd you get into golf a little bit? Uh, I always golf with my dad as a kid. 
a, a few times a year, but it really started with COVID. Once that COVID year hit, that whole summer of lockdown, I, I found myself working at a, a golf course and got to spend eight hours at a golf course working and then spend four more afterwards playing. They don't sell Waveland <laughs> short. It was Waveland. You get it. That's a, true. Waveland, Waveland Golf Course in Des Moines is a great course. Still love playing that every time I go home. Um, and that's that's really where I, I fell in love with the game and started watching more PGA. And um, it's it's just continued from there. You get around a lot of the guys here golf too, which helps. And we have a, a beautiful course in Finkbine. So getting out during the season on your off day and playing some golf is always a great way to break up the baseball. So you throw left-handed. Do you swing a golf club left-handed? I do. I'm purely left-handed, yeah, <laughs> with a mad slice. <laughs> and so I've been working with John Leo, so that would be down the left field line rather yeah. than... <laughs> yeah. All right, so what else besides baseball and golf do you do for fun? Uh, big movie fan. I love watching some movies and obviously the, the good old video games. Um, but other than that, not a whole lot. Fishing was it was in my, my past a little bit, but um, just being outdoors in general is fantastic. So how do you want to take advantage of the last couple months of your, uh, of your Hawkeye baseball career? Trying to not take it too heavily is, is really what I've learned. Um, I, got, I have one more year after, but okay. this, this year... Uh, is just trying to have some fun with the boys and, and be around everybody and, and smile a little more than I'm used to. Good stuff. Huh? Hacky sack champ. You, you come back one year, they'll never, when you come back another year, they'll never be champ. <laughs> yeah, hacky sack's my game for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Ben. I appreciate Thank you. it. Ben Dete, Hawkeye reliever. We'll be back with more Hawkeye pregame. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. The Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that, too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, nice. which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks. Compare with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for pretzel. The pick is in. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game as a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season. Please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. Doubleheader with Western Illinois to wrap up the series. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, let's go back to uh, yesterday. Your thoughts on the win over the Leathernecks? Um, really, really good day for us uh, in all areas. Um, it wasn't the, the, the start we expected from Brody Breck. Um, you know, didn't have his, his good stuff yesterday and, and, and lost his command. Um, towards the end of his day, uh, which put us in a, in a really tough spot when the game was still close. And um, Jack Young came in and, and works out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam. It's pretty impressive. And we turn a, a, a really, really difficult double play uh, with a ball in the hole and Michael Seegers and, and then a really quick turn by Gable Mitchell and then a nice, uh, nice short hop pick by 
Blake Aaron, the first baseman, and, and I felt like that was the turning point in that game yesterday. Um, and then the, the the super positive thing was that our bullpen didn't didn't allow a free base um, after Brody left the game, and Chaz Wheatley did a great job, and, and Gannon Archer was really sharp, and uh, you know it was just a, a really really uh, solid performance by uh, by our bullpen, and uh, that that was good to see. And then offensively, um, as we talked before the game, you know, the 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 guys they're starting against us, uh, Buell yesterday, you know, just a, a a lefty that just keeps it on the edges and uh, tries to get you to chase and tries to get you to you know to to cave and give in and and, and induce weak contact early. And, and I thought after the first uh, time through the lineup, um, our guys did a really nice job of grinding him out and and. And putting uh, some good barrels on, we scored runs, you know, in all the middle innings, um, and and had a lot of guys hit into bad luck yesterday. You know, the way the wind's blowing, it, it, it's you know it's tough. And we talk about it being a neutralizer. Um, you know, we would have had Michael Seegers was the one yesterday. I think he hit three balls, you know, just <laughs> right on the nose, and the wind the wind got him. And Petey would have had a home run in the first inning, and the wind got him. And just you, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing in bringing it up is it's going to happen, unfortunately, when the wind blows like it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's super important that we can be just relentless in, in our focus and our effort each at bat to grind them out and find ways to get on base. And that's when we were able to break it open when we started getting free bases. And, and then, uh, you know, Gable Mitchell had a big game and some clutch hits. And it was good to see... Um, Good to see some fall for Gable. He'd hit into some bad luck and was doing a really good job of getting on base. He's still uh, on base at over a 400 clip when his average had dropped to you know, like two, 220 or yeah. so. But he was hitting better than that and uh, you know hadn't been rewarded. And yesterday he got some hits to fall. And, uh, you know it was just Davis Cobb had a couple good hits and you know I was um, I was just pleased overall defensively. You know it, it, it was like oh no you know we, M Michael Sigers who rarely makes an error makes an error on the very first. First play of the game on a on a choppery, he took his eyes off trying to throw quick because uh, the runner was was fast and he he peaked and it cost him. And then um, the play he made later in that inning to save save runs uh, up the middle with a backhand flip to get the force at second was was outstanding. And then an unassisted double play and we just had some really nice defensive plays throughout the course of that game um, that um, that was impressive and just. Uh, yeah, the, the the fact that um, you know our bullpen, our bullpen came in and did the job, and and hopefully build some confidence there, and um, you know just overall was really pleased with the uh, with the effort. Uh, really excited, John and I were really excited about about Jack and his outing. It, you know, it was short, but came in with the bases loaded, nobody out, and then to see him come off the mound after getting that double play, everybody was fired up. It it felt like boom, just like that. The confidence was back for the bullpen, and then he set the tone yeah. uh, the rest of the way. That's exactly that's exactly what happened. And and the good thing is that like the the guys that that were out there yesterday have been out there quite a bit lately, and you know the more you get out there, um, the easier it is to go. Uh, and play one pitch at a time like you have to. And um, you just seen, I seen in all their eyes, you know, they were just pitching. You know, they weren't, there was no worry. There was no, you know, they were just executing, executing the next pitch. And when you get to that point, which we talked about, it's taken us a while, but hopefully, hopefully we're there. Um, and, and we start getting s some consistent bullpen uh, strike throwing. And if we do that, we'll be, we'll be in good shape. And, you know, today, today with the, the winds even, stronger and uh good, supposedly gonna be close to 40 mile an hour at times this oh, afternoon God. and uh it's it's pretty crazy how uh, you know that's a that's a factor that the pitchers have to deal with i mean it's it's not something that just affects the ball flight on a on a hit ball it's it's also affect, affecting ball flight and breaking balls and change-ups um you know between the pitchers now and i was hitting fungos um to the infielders pregame and it was blowing so hard that it was actually moving the ball uh, towards right field uh, wow. on the ground, on wow. ground balls it was moving it. So it's going to be one of those days. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks today. Uh, a doubleheader, we'll, we'll do this again. This is a more traditional doubleheader where you're going to start and finish uh, both games. 
uh, today. The, the challenge of that, Coach, a, a quick turnaround, another early morning. This wasn't a smooth weekend like no. we were hoping for schedule-wise. No, it certain, certainly isn't. I mean, it's, it's always a test. It's a test for your toughness. It's a test um, you know, when you play a lot of the same guys on both games, the – the, the ability to focus for that long, um, you know, in the perfect world, you, you hope you come out and you get a great start from Kate Obermuller and he really shuts him down and gets deep in the game and we, we jump all over him and, and end the game in a seven inning, 10 run rule, which mm-hmm. would make things a lot better, but you know, best laid plans and <laughs> it never really ever happens the way you, you, you draw it up, but that would be ideal. And, uh, but if not, you know, you just have to have to grind it out every inning and every every pitch because as we talked before the game, Coach Davis has done a really nice job, he and his staff, um, with getting this team to play and play hard. And you saw that um, yesterday. And, you know, they, they came out and they played some good teams. Uh, and even with Brody's stuff, I mean, they were, they were battling and, and putting the ball in play. And, uh, you know, they have some guys who can run. And, uh, you know, you catch a day when the choppers all – come at the right time or the wrong time and uh, you know you can find yourself uh, you know behind and getting beat and as we talked yesterday they have a closer that's uh, a, a legit guy and you you definitely uh, want to be on be you want to be ahead when you get to the sixth seventh eighth inning yeah. because you don't want to have to see him when he can put you down you mentioned Kate Obermuller getting the start in the first game against Western Illinois today Big Ten pitcher of the week coach uh, of the three starting pitchers uh, Brody, Marcus, and, and Cade, were you maybe a little bit surprised that Cade was the first one to get Big Ten Pitcher of the Week? Well, not not really. You know, if you look at Cade's outings, he, he, he hasn't given up hardly any runs. I mean, he's had he's had a few outings where he was was a little wild or, or had some wild pitches that got him in trouble, but he always worked out of it. And uh, of the three, he's, he's allowed the least amount of runs. And, um, you know, I'm just really impressed and happy with, for Cade because he's come a long, long way. And, uh, today is going to be another one of those challenges for him to, uh, you know, to have uh, the accolade, you know, voted Big Ten Pitcher of the Week, all that, you know, to go back out today and have a quality start uh, and follow it up with a with a quality start. That's going to be the test and the challenge for him. And uh, if he goes out and, and pounds his own like he did uh, last week against Jacksonville State, you know, we're, we're going to be in great shape. Um, but that's what we need him to do. Uh, when we get to the second game today, Coach, uh, Marcus Morgan will get the start uh, for you. Uh, what yeah. do you expect to see from Marcus? Just a little well, bit of a slow start to the season so far for him. Yeah, he's 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 not felt great. He's had some some stuff, you know, with his with his arm. Nothing serious. It's just not been feeling exactly right, and it's getting better. And I I feel like you're going to see. Um, a better version of Marcus today. You know, once he gets back, um, you know, I guess a hundred percent. Like I said, it's nothing. It's nothing crazy. It's just some nagging stuff that has, I think, really affected his his mindset. And um, I think uh, they had everything checked out. And he, 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 I think Marcus feels really good now about the situation. And I think um, you know Jake, our trainer, has been doing a really good job with Marcus and our team doctors and. Uh, you know, I don't want to paint a picture that he's been hurt because he's not. It's just, you know, some 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 random random weird type pain in the back part of his of his tricep, uh, low tricep, and um, where it, it where it goes to the elbow. And uh, I I talked to him yesterday, and I think he he told me he feels the best he's felt in a okay. long time. So. Um, I think you'll see a different Marcus today. I, you know, that's the hope. I mean, and, and, and all of us hope that um, he is feeling good and he can go out and be himself. And, and when he is, he's really, really good. And um, it'd be a good time to, to, to have him have a quality start and uh, take that confidence in the Big Ten play next week. Uh, there might be uh, some folks that will discredit uh, the win yesterday based on, based on the opponent, based on the competition. But... Uh, Coming off the field yesterday, the the team seems to be picking up steam, gaining the confidence of the complete game. How do you keep that going uh, into this doubleheader? Well, you just need to keep playing. You need to, you need to find ways to win games and do it in a clean fashion, like we did yesterday. Because um, you heard me say it three weeks ago. You know, our norm has to be yesterday. You know, that has to become the norm, and our players have to hold 
themselves and everyone on the team accountable to that. And that's the only way you get the consistency and the consistent wins is to play consistent quality baseball, good baseball um, that we weren't doing. You know, we were just given way too many free bases to have any chance to be consistent, regardless of what offense, defense, or anything like that. Uh, it, it, it wasn't uh, um, sustainable at all. And yesterday um, was, and and that's what we've done here for 10 years is, is, is try to get to a point where that is the norm. And once it becomes the norm and is accepted mentally by everyone on the team, then you'll see um, you'll see it happen. But it doesn't just happen. I mean, it takes what it takes, and it takes intense focus, but also comfortable focus. And uh, we're being at home and, and um, playing the schedule we played. I mean, you need to play games you know, that are like this. I mean, if you look at the teams, uh, every team in the SEC is playing teams like Western Illinois three of the four weekends before they start. You know, they're not playing uh, tough opponents every single game. They might play one series, uh, you know, one, and some teams maybe two out of the four that they play before they start conference play um, against a tough opponent. You know, unfortunately, being in the North, um, they force us to, to try to play tougher schedules because of the RPI and you have to go play on the road and you haven't played outside as much and all those things is a, it's a disadvantage. And, uh, you know, some teams uh, go out and things click right away and you're able to handle it and you win a bunch of those games. Unfortunately for us, uh, we just hung around that 500 mark and would have a, a flash in the pan where we would be really good and then two where we weren't. And, um, but the fact is we were playing really good teams, a lot of them. So uh, now that we're playing teams that maybe quite aren't quite as talented, um, you, that's when you need to build the confidence because we didn't get it done when we played the, the better teams, even though you know there were flashes. The consistency that we just talked about happens when you start stringing games together. And that's one thing that they're able to do down there is that they're able to get that going right away because they're playing a lot of teams that are not as good as them. Well, the confidence is, is starting to pick up. Coach, a, a good start yesterday. Let's take two against Western Illinois today. Yeah, that would be great, and um, hopefully we can get a good effort. And as we just talked, hopefully we can string a couple together today and uh, and get a, get things going. They call it a streak if you win more than two, Coach. That's Let's right. start a win streak. Get it going. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks today. We're back for first pitch right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat. Nice. Which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this morning for another minute before we get to the afternoon. We'll step aside one more time in pregame for today's national anthem. We'll be back with starting lineups right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. If you guessed that was the sound of a bag of Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans, you guessed right. Well, kinda. It was really the sound of an innovative team that spent decades perfecting a seed with exclusive genetics and the ultimate agronomic advantage. 
the sort of breeders who don't rest until they've achieved outstanding performance. Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans. Number one for a reason. Visit pioneer.com slash genetics. Sangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. National Anthem is complete. Before we get you today's starting lineups, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, the Hawkeyes are about to take the field as the home team in game one of today's doubleheader, Iowa eight and nine, Western Illinois four and 12. Let's go with the Leathernecks batting order. Their starting lineup, Chris Hagee will lead things off. A little bit of a change. They'll move Kyrie Alexander up to the two spot today for Western. Liam Bushy bats third. Adam Duran will bat in the cleanup spot for the Leathernecks. J.R. Hevelin is the D.H. batting fifth. Brock Loomis batting sixth. Seven, eight, nine, Owen Sullivan, Grant Palmer, and Max Slavens. For the Hawkeyes defensively on the infield as they prepare to take the field. Left to right on the infield, Raider Tello at third. Michael Seegers at short. Gable Mitchell at second. Blake Guerin at first base. In the outfield, left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, and Andy Nelson. Behind the plate catching today is Reese Moore. The starting pitcher for Iowa today is sophomore, a left-hander from Iowa City. Played his high school baseball at City High, Cade Obermuller. One and one on the season in four appearances, a 193 ERA, 18 and two thirds innings, eight hits allowed, five runs, four were earned, 12 walks, 26 strikeouts with a 138 ERA, seven wild pitches, seven hit batters. But that is your uh, Big Ten Pitcher of the Week after a, taking five hitless innings uh, at Jack State, gave up a hit, gave up two hits in the sixth inning, but, but still kept scoreless. Good outing from Cade in his last trip, and I just need to build on it. Yeah, had nine strikeouts against uh, Jacksonville State in Iowa's 20-1 to victory over the Gamecocks in that game. So we'll see him get uh, the start in game one of today's doubleheader. And, and coach, the coaching staff made the switch last weekend to go with the righty, lefty, righty with Brody and then Cade and then Marcus. Not performance-based, but just to give the opponents a different look for a series. Right, to try to, you know, just just that opposite. You know, and you see teams do that. You see teams do that out of the bullpen. You know, it's, hey, we've got a righty starter, so you bring in a lefty bullpen arm as your first arm out sometimes. And, uh, you know, this is just that same thing. You know, just just to maybe try to break up a little rhythm of, oh, it's a, it's a right-handed guy. And uh, obviously Cade, Cade with a little bit of a, a three-quarter arm delivery there out to the side is, is a way different look than, than Brody, and, and then that helps Marcus, too, by, by separating him from, from Brody's pitching. Uh, Cade has a, a sort of a funneled-in experience just like the, the team does right now where, okay, played a really good, complete game yesterday. String it together. Let's see if the Hawks can win a couple in a row. The same thing can be said for Cade. Hey, you had a great outing last time, but string it together and give us another one today. Yeah, Cade's been Cade's been pretty good through most of the season. You know, as you heard Coach Heller say, um, you know he, he's had, you know, if he's gone four innings, he's had three really good ones and then one that that maybe kind of bit him a little bit with control. And so that's just part of the growing process for Cade is you know, how many. You know, how many innings can you string together and you know lengthen those outings out get a little bit better a little bit better um, and go longer and longer into games western illinois chris hagee comes to the box we're about ready to start today's game double header uh, as we had yesterday there is the the run the rule in effect just as a the fyi five, 10 six, after hagee. seven iowa one the series opener 11 to 1 in eight innings yesterday. Kate Obermuller is ready out of the stretch. First pitch on its way home. That's inside ball one to Heggy, the starting second baseman for the Leathernecks, right handed hitter, batting 262 on the season.
Obermuller ready, the 1 0 delivery. That's down the heart of the plate, strike one. I was looking back at the, the schedule so far this season, and you know, the first weekend in Charleston wasn't too weird. We had the, the started, actually started early and then had an early Sunday morning start. 1 1 from Obermuller, fouled back over to the right. The second weekend in Jacksonville, the game started late. They were, you know, the schedule was all, all messed up. Old Miss, we were pretty good. Um, battled, you know, some some weird weather, but that got everything in. And then last weekend with the weird weather, now we come home, the weird weather. Just haven't strung together. Here's your start times. They're all going to be there. 1 2 is high and out from Obermuller. Count even at 2 to Heggy to start today's game. N hasn't been a smooth weekend yet. No, not really. And and that's the. Um, you know, then you factor in in the road travel and and all the time away from home and you know those unusual schedules. It's not making excuses. It's just been difficult. Cade deals the two-two, outside ball three. Yeah, well, he had Marty up here uh, yesterday talking in post game, and he said he even said that uh, it was specific to Brody that oh well that's just an excuse. You got to battle through it, but it is a factor. You know, and he was not saying that um, Brody's performance yesterday, that there was an excuse or, or anything like that. But that's what people tend to say is the 3-2 from Obermuller is inside ball Ooh. four. Heggie walks to start this afternoon's contest. But, you know, people say, well, everybody has to travel or everybody has to go through rain delays or this or that. True, but it is an impact. It is a factor that that uh, that uh, affects the game. Well, and the performance. Southern schools don't have to travel every weekend that first month. And, right. and you know, most north schools do. You might be able to squeeze one in here or there, but, but most have to travel. And uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky, the weather works out great, and sometimes you don't. Kyrie Alexander comes to the box, right handed hitter, the starting third baseman for the Leathernecks. Takes strike one. Windy day in Iowa City, much windier than yesterday. The the breeze is ripping the flags off the poles through the outfield wall. Line drive up the middle and through into center field for a base hit from Alexander. First two runners, just like yesterday, first two runners are on for the Leathernecks. So windy that uh, it's really rippling the jerseys and the pants of uh, the players, the, the coaches, the umpires. I would say the windiest day we've had this season. Well, because you see that line drive there as he lined it basically not too far from Michael Seegers. By the time it landed, it landed pretty much right over second base on a well-hit ball. And it was wind still pushed it that far over. So now we'll see Liam Bushy with nobody out. Runners at first and second left-handed hitter. Strike one from Obermuller on the outside corner. Bushy had a nice day yesterday for Western Illinois. Had a couple of hits off of Brody Brecht, would get a, a third single in the seventh off of an Iowa reliever. Alexander had a couple hits yesterday. That was a good swing there, and he had three here, so. Fastball, strike two, the outside corner. Stacking the stacking the order here just a little bit, but still like what you're seeing from Cade filling up the strike zone. I know we walked the first guy. Uh, I'd argue the uh, I'd argue about the third pitch a little bit, but um. no doubt so far with the 0-2 on its way. Swing and a miss. Had Bushy swinging out of his shoes for that one. Big strikeout from Cade. Good high breaking ball there. Got it up where he could see it and just tantalizing pitch up at the top of the zone that he couldn't get up to. Iowa wearing all white uniforms with Hawkeyes spelled out in black block lettering across the chest. Gold cleats for the Hawks today. Green ball caps getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. Green, green baseball caps for Iowa with the gold script eye on the front panel. I didn't wear my green today. I, I uh, haven't, uh, I don't have much green in my in my wardrobe, John. I think I could speak for both of us. We're, we're mainly black and gold. That's fair, fairly safe bet. <laughs> Strike one to Adam Duran, I may, catcher I, for Western. I may move to charcoal or gray, but that's about it. <laughs> I'm right there with you. 0-1 is inside. Duran turns away from it. Western Illinois wearing purple tops today with gold numbers on the backside. They've got their bulldog leatherneck logo uh, on the right chest of their of their uniform gray baseball pants for western illinois and they'll have purple ball caps in the field one one from obermuller popped up 
Shallow left. Peterson battling the sun a bit, and it moves over to Huxdorf in center, who will make the catch for out number two. Yeah, absolutely. What, well, and, and it's probably that what that happens is it probably brings up a really good point. As an outfielder and or an infielder, you can't give up on a ball. You can't assume it's, oh, it's over there. It's not coming to me. Uh, these, I mean, that ball probably moved 30, 40 feet with the wind. You know, it wasn't hit very hard. And also a sign of if you hit a ball up in the air to left, good luck. Forget it. Yeah. I suppose as a base runner, then, that the same – same idea, same concept can can stay in play. If you do hit one in the air, it, it could cause problems for those outfielders, you know, offensively for Iowa to, hey, if you pop one out, run it out, maybe even consider rounding first base and heading to second just in case. You never know. Two outs for J.R. Hevelin. 1-0 pitch from Obermuller. Swung on and fouled in the box. One and one. Evelyn limping around a little bit. That uh, that pitch from Obermuller was fouled. Looks like off the ankle, maybe the, the toe. Either way, the foot of Evelyn. He's their DH, batting just under 300. He's got some power with a few doubles and a home run this season. Right-handed hitter crowding the plate. Closed stance. Breaking ball. Came in the back door. Obermuller got it to go across for a strike. It's really good response from Cade, too, with, uh, you know, after the 3-2 Three two walk to the leadoff hitter and then giving up a sharp single to bounce back here. Finish the deal. One two. High and out. Good strong fastball. Good spot too. Evelyn didn't go for it, and it's a ball. Two and two. Ninety-five mile an hour just above the zone. That's one of those prime chase pitches, right? Get that high fastball, sort of hope that the hitter goes after it. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Ground ball left side. Tello will field it. He'll step. He'll throw over to Garen at first base for the third out. All right, so a walk and a single, but that's it for Western Illinois. Nothing doing after that. Andy Nelson will lead things off for the Hawkeyes when we come back. Bottom of the first right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Let's be honest, we all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. Andy Nelson comes to the box first for Iowa, and the rest of the batting order looks like this for the Hawkeyes. Sam Peterson to follow, Raider Tello batting third. Reese Moore, Kyle Huxdorf, Davis Copper, 4-5-6, Gable Mitchell, Blake Guerin, and Michael Seegers. The starting pitcher today for Western Illinois, another left-hander. The Hawkeyes will see another lefty, and it will be Kyle Rosenfeld. One and one on the season, five appearances, one start. He's got a 540 ERA, just eight and a third innings, eight hits, six runs, five of which are earned, has walked eight batters, struck out 11, opponents hitting 267. Going to see a fastball that's going to get there. Oh, it'll be mid to slightly upper 80s. He's got a slider and a changeup. He'll try to use all of those, but uh, uh, primarily the changeup will be to left-handers. So I think Iowa can really kind of sit on sit on fastball here and, and try to make sure the breaking stuff's in the zone. And again, kind of like we talked about yesterday, with the way the wind's blowing, really try to work that right side of the field. Right. Rosenfeld, a redshirt senior from Huntley, Illinois. Deals the first pitch to Nelson, way inside, ball one. Rosenfeld operating 
solely out of the stretch, just like Obermuller. Way over on the first base side of the rubber. Mm -hmm. Takes a breath, the 1-0 pitch. Strike one to Nelson. Andy yesterday had a, had a very productive second half of the game. Hit by two pitches and walked. The, the One of the hit by pitches got him up and in. Got him in the helmet. He was all right, though. 1-1 one, one to Nelson. Right down the middle, strike two, one and two. Rosenfeld near, you know, just in the first few pitches here, really doing a nice job staying right at the bottom of the zone. Mm -hmm. One two pitch, swing and a miss. Nelson down on strikes. You, you mentioned it yesterday, John. The, the leadoff spot has been a difficult place to be for <laughs> Iowa hitters. Hey, yeah, I haven't had a haven't had a ton of success from the leadoff hitter themselves. When they've moved to a different spot, they've been fantastic. But as you mentioned yesterday, though, you got what you needed out of Andy. You didn't get a hit, but you you got on base three times, and so you'll take that from your leadoff hitter all day. That brings up Sam Peterson with the bases empty and one out. Corners in a touch for the Leathernecks defensively. Peterson takes ball one. Even Sam would have to really crush a ball to get it out to left today. I don't think Sam's going to get one out to left right now. And the way the wind is forecasted to shift, I don't think that'll help any. 1-0 to Petey. Inside, ball two. Tried to set that up, John, in a, in a way that, that says that really nobody's going to take it out to left <laughs> because the only guy that could would be possibly Sam and even he's going to struggle to get it out to left today that's how strong the wind is blowing from basically Carver Hawkeye Arena into the field of play and over to the right field foul pole two balls no strikes pitch to Peterson ground ball just foul over to the left side yeah I'm actually a little surprised at the outfield positioning the center fielder has pd played to pull a little bit and just like we saw with that uh kind of that, that lazy looping fly ball in the first inning the ball is going to blow back to the center fielder so you can play middle of the field even to the right of the field and and get a little bit more room to chase it now you hit one on a line that's a little bit different mm -hmm. but 2-1 that's called a strike high portion portion of the zone Two and two to Peterson. Again, with this Western Illinois pitching staff, the starters throw it mid 80s, maybe a touch above that. Two balls, two strikes with one out. The pitch to Peterson. Ground ball left side. Alexander's got it. He'll fire across the diamond to get Peterson, who is sprinting down the line, out number two. And again, you saw so far both. Nelson and Peterson. Nelson, okay, he was trying to pull the two strike pitch and it was right on the outside part of the plate. Petey there with two strikes, tries to pull that one. And again, on the, it was on the white of the plate, but the outside. Gonna kind of want to have that willingness to at least go back up the middle, not necessarily pull everything. Iowa made the, the mid game adjustment yesterday. Raider Tello in the box, ball one. That uh, that adjustment being, you know, hey, take a couple of pitches against Buell, the starter for Western Illinois yesterday. Take a few pitches, make him come off the edges towards the middle of the zone, and then Iowa started to pick it up. Well, because even if you even if you make barrel contact, pulling it to the left side of the field, like you mentioned, it's it's not going anywhere today. Doesn't mean you can't line drive a double somewhere, but ground ball left side that'll get through, short and third, and Tello is on with a two out single yeah i mean that's the best you're going to do today a, a ground ball a low line drive over to the left side right you're, you're going to find a hole that way you're going to elevate it a little bit uh, to get it over the infield but uh, you know and then you can start arguing positioning of okay you hit one right down the line so you got a double out of it but that's that's really the best you're, you're going to accomplish now reese moore's got a chance to do something a little bit different because he can ride it just a little bit Tello at first base with the left-handed pitcher on the mound. He'll stay right around the bag. Strike one to Moore, left-handed hitter, getting the start behind the plate and catching today. You know, we, we'll talk about the wind a lot today, but uh, it's almost 
seems like it's blowing out just a little bit, like just behind the right field foul pole. Not necessarily in from right. Owan is a breaking ball that stayed outside to Moore. You think that's a the fair assessment, John? It's going out just a touch. I do, and that's why I think, you know, again, with where the center field's position center fielder's positioned at to just the left of second base, that right fielder has to cover a ton of ground, especially now with a left-handed hitter. Two outs for more. The 1-1. One, one, blooped into shallow center. It will get down for a base hit. Tello turns and stays put at second base. Back-to-back -back singles for the Hawkeyes. We get to the middle of the order for Kyle Oxdorf. Sometimes you don't have to hit it well. You just have to hit it where nobody's at. This seems like a lot of the the base hits that you know maybe maybe Coach Heller talks about uh, you know the wind being an equalizer where they don't make solid contact but they they stay in the game that way and and so far Iowa with a couple of singles to put some runners on for Kyle Huxdorf. A lot of pop in Kyle's bat. First pitch, swing and a miss. Chased it outside. Yeah, I'm not sure that had fastball speed, but had a lot of a lot of actual movement to it as well. Yeah, that stayed over away from Kyle, the right-handed center fielder for Iowa. 0-1, chopper right back to the pitcher. He bobbled it. Kyle hustling down the line. He will beat it at first base. Base is loaded. How do you score that, John? What do you think? Boy, that was got to be a hit, don't you think? Quick error up on the board. I, I, I think it was an error, but I would also not not be amazed. But yeah, it's a, went up quick on an error. All right, so Huxdorf reaches on the E1. Well, I think the problem was that ball was hit 59 miles an hour back at him. So, it, as a pitcher, you're just like, I gotta get it, and mm -hmm. he almost reacted too quickly and and got himself out of position that way. Big spot here now. Opportunity for Iowa to get on the board first. Bases loaded, two outs for Davis Cop. The pitch outside. Davis laid off the one that Kyle swung at to start his at bat. I mean, this is a big spot here just because, again, a guy doesn't doesn't get deep into games anyway. So you keep adding to that pitch count. You keep working. Maybe hopefully you add a run or two here. One out of Cop. High, ball two. But you, you start getting to it because... Again, we've got another game to play. You know, you start running through arms now, uh, and, and it, you set yourself up for a, for a good, hopefully quick afternoon. Right. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs, bases loaded. Rosenfeld ready. The pitch to cop. High and out, ball three. Red light for Davis. I would imagine so with the bases loaded. There's no... Uh, no real huge advantage here to, to swing at a pitch. Again, he's not going to pull one out of the park for a grand slam. So, And the star of yesterday's game, Gable Mitchell, stands on deck. Three balls, no strikes. The pitch to Davis. Down the heart of the plate, strike one, three and one. Again, stay selective, though, with just one strike on you. Cop batting 250 for the Hawks. He's got 13 RBIs this season, four extra base hits. Three balls and a strike with two outs, bases loaded. The pitch to Cop. Line drive, base hit into left. Here comes Tello. Gonna wave more. He's on his way home. He'll score. Ball gets by the catcher and over to the Iowa dugout. Runners at second and third. Two nothing Hawks. Big swing there for Davis Cop. 105 coming off the bat. That's a way to beat that win. And then when the throw came in, you saw Iowa run a lot on the left fielder yesterday. And that time, as the ball skipped into the infield, Alexander missed the cutoff and actually deflected it away from the catcher. So everybody's able to move up another spot. So second and third now for Gable Mitchell to try to really put up a good number. All this coming with two outs, John. There's something that the first four weekends of the year, Iowa couldn't buy a two-out hit, especially with runners on or in scoring position. And now a couple come across with potential to do more damage. Gable Mitchell swings at the first pitch and missed it. Runners at second and third, two outs. Two-nothing Hawks in the first. And Gable getting more work from the right-handed batter's box <laughs> this yeah. weekend than he's seen in a lot of cases. His stats significantly lopsided over to the left-handed left, left -handed 
box. No balls and a strike. Rosenfeld ready. The pitch. Mitchell sends a ground ball to third. It is just foul to the left of the bag. Mitchell down now 0 and 2. Gable was four for five yesterday with five RBIs. His sort of uh, breakout game. Now has to protect with two strikes. Can't give up on that, that slower pitch on the outside part of the plate. Hang in there, Gable. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Nice change up. Good pitch from Rosenfeld that retires Mitchell. The Hawks leave a couple on, but bring a couple home. 2-0 Iowa Hawkeyes, through one. We're game. back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry, we've got that too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Kate Obermuller back out for the second inning. Iowa up 2-0 and Obi gets to work with a... Uh, two-run lead. Kate had a, a good, a, a decent first inning. He walked the first guy, then gave up a single, but then after that was really strong, and so you you averaged that out, and it was, it was an all right. It was a good inning. It was a good response, and, and again, I thought his, the first at-bat, the walk, was, was still a good pitching at-bat, and the guy just got a hit off of him, so that wasn't so bad. Brock Loomis leads the Western Illinois second off. He is the six hitter starting first baseman right-handed batter and this is the part of the this is the part of the order that obi's just got to fill up the zone he's missed his first two one out one high right john uh, six through nine loomis has a 143 average uh, the next batter sullivan doesn't have a hit this year 2-0 is swung on and missed. I need to... Well, to steal the math that you did made me do yesterday, the bottom four guys add up to 280. Right. There you go. Four that guys. was quick. Four guys add up to 280. Really quick, John. Good math. But, uh, uh, yeah, Sullivan has just had a few plate appearances. Doesn't have a hit yet. Palmer, after him... 097 and then Slavens in the nine spot 040. So you make a great point. Just go right after these Western Illinois hitters and make them hit you. Three balls and a strike. Obermuller trying to get back in the count. The pitch fouled back to the screen. Full count. And you know, this is, you know, we talk about hitting and fielding. It's not an easy day to pitch either. Obi's getting buffeted in the back. You know, you catch a gust. There's all kinds of things. Uh, you know, so maybe you, you shorten it up just a little bit and you make sure you find a good rhythm. 3-2 from Cade. High fly ball foul over to the right. Yeah, I, you think about... Uh, you hope that Cade's hat is a size too small today, otherwise it's going to be blowing all over the ballpark. And he's got the flowing locks there, so <laughs> not always easy. Three balls, two strikes. Obermuller ready, the pitch... Called third strike. 
Yeah, With a hard fastball, fly. Loomis was hoping to walk. He had put his bat down and was ready to take his batting gloves off and head down to first, but he's headed the opposite direction. Second strike out of the game for Obermuller. Really good pitch there. Came back fastball. Not even too far up, but got it in a little bit. For the, Leathernex, the left fielder, number 14, Owen Sullivan. That's key from Obermuller right there to throw strike one to Owen Sullivan, the starting left fielder, right-handed hitter. Yeah, if he can get ahead 0-1 uh, on the bottom of the order here, he should be able to make pretty quick work. Outside corner that time, nothing in two. You think about uh, the, the possibilities of today's game and just really craving an Iowa starter to get deeper into the game than they have to this point of the season. 0-2 from Obermuller. That's low and in, ball one. Brody only got through four yesterday. Have to go back and look at, at which starter has made it the farthest in the game. Is it Cade at five and two-thirds? I think we got there was six out of Brody. Uh, and uh, Swing and a miss. Great pitch from Obermuller. Drop third strike. Moore picks it up. And slings it down to Garen at first base for out number two. Go ahead, Jim. He had six in uh, Jacksonville there when. Uh... Okay, against uh, Auburn? Yes. All right. Yeah, left with a three to two lead. Mm -hmm. So six is the max for starting pitcher. And and the, the Hawks have the the and talent for the on the, the mound from the, the starting Grant, position, Palmer. the starting pitcher group to get to six, seven. Obermuller off to a good start today. Strike one at the knees with Palmer in the box. One again, right. He'll probably beat this a lot today, but it's it's right there. It's strike one. It's it's attacking a team that hits 214. Yeah. Swing and a miss. And Off speed just low. And particularly a number of them that, that don't look comfortable in the batter's box or don't see the ball well against uh, against Hawkeye pitching. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from Obermuller. Foul tip, Moore juggled it, couldn't quite grab it with the glove. And so Palmer stays alive. Yeah, just rattled Reese a little bit there. The slider again, John? I would. 0 oh, 2. Ground ball right side. Mitchell charging hard. He gloves it, gets it out of his mitt, and throws it over to first for the third out. A 1 2 3 inning for Kate Obermuller and the Hawkeye defense. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Iowa 2, Western Illinois nothing. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels, Homewood Suites, and Home to Suites by Hilton. Each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. I would, I would take warm and friendly staff right now. Yes, especially the warm part, right, The John? warm part, yes, exactly. The sun is out in Iowa City today, uh, but it's so windy that it's killing the temperatures upper 40s low 50s and the real feel is is what probably in the low 40s upper 30s i think we're okay for now but it's uh for now uh oh yeah for now it's going to get not so great as the day goes 
forward. But with all that being said, a great crowd today. Yeah, really good. And, and yeah, quite honestly, it's a much better day to play baseball than tomorrow. Sounds like it's going to be. So let's let's play too. Yeah, get them, get them both in and end the series with Western Illinois. Blake Guerin will lead off the second for Iowa. He's the eight hitter today. First pitch, strike one. What are you going to do with your off day tomorrow? This is the first off day that uh, we've had in a long time. Yeah, it's been, uh, well, since uh, what we left for Charleston on Valentine's Day, February 14th. A one to Garen. That's up and in. Count even at one. And so, yeah, lots of... Uh, so we can wait we, we like to go for sunday morning walks so hopefully it's decent enough we can get in a, just a normal sunday morning walk you must like the the walks a little bit better than uh than you hate the cold john if you're gonna do that tomorrow <laughs> i can bundle up i can be ready <laughs> the one one to garen swing and a miss one and two i can get an especially for an hour i can get i can get enough clothes on i can get prepared and yes. be ready to go it's all about keeping your hands warm that's the key. You've got the great, nice hand warmer that uh, you've brought with you today. One ball, two strikes to Garen. Outside, count even at two. I'm going the uh, old-fashioned way, just the hands inside the sweatshirt pouch. I haven't, uh, I haven't drugged the sweatshirt out yet. I've got the, I've got multiple layers, but I haven't gone to that yet. I'm trying to, trying to pace myself. You are to stay warm. You are braver than I. <laughs> I even have an extra coat. The two-two. Garen pops it up, left side. This could come back into play. Alexander at third, sprinting forward in front of the Western Illinois dugout. It's the catcher. After all that, the catcher, Duran, who caught that. That looked like it was going to go over towards the Western Illinois bullpen or at least down the line a little bit further. That ball should have ended up in the in the practice football facility. Wow. <laughs> be ready. There'll be more during the second Instead, Garen pops out to the catcher. That goes down P2. Number 10, Michael Seeger. They announced bingo winners again, and I'm going to call. Already? Ball. I'm going to call ball on that. I'm, not, I'm just looking at these things. There's no way. What's the most uh, outrageous one that's on there? Strike one to Michael Seegers in the nine spot. Well, there are no outrageous ones, but, you know. It, Opponent makes a pitching change. Yeah. How about that one, John? Left fielder, right fielder catch the ball. That hasn't happened for the Hawkeyes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on here that hasn't happened yet. 0-1 to Michael. Ground ball to the second baseman on a couple of hops. Heggie picks it up, throws it over to first base, out number two. All right, well, it starts with two outs again if you're the Hawkeyes. That's how it went in the first. Back-to-back -back singles and then an error and then another single. The next batter for the Hawkeyes, right fielder. Andy and we'll go to the top of the Nelson. order. Andy Nelson comes up. I suppose I have six things marked off on my bingo card, so it's theoretically possible. Well, I hope nobody has to rely on the Hawkeye player to hit a home run today any player to hit a home run here's nelson line drive into center down for a base hit landed right on the eye of the black tiger hawk in center nelson starts things with two outs and that ball was interesting the center fielder palmer kind of thought about making a move for it but then it started to tail and <laughs> a chance for andy to stretch out his legs there this is one element of the game that i was trying to build up it's that uh that the speed game the the steal some bases, the short game maybe, and not necessarily with two outs. Are you going to be bunting or anything like that? But see if Nelson can take off with his speed. Got a decent lead at first base. They'll try and move over. High throw over to first base. Yeah, sometimes you try to throw the easy change up over there, and you just don't focus on what you're doing, and you make a bad throw. And that was a bad throw, but fortunately for Western, it was uh, catchable there by Loomis. Well, the wind might push it, you know, keep it up on a lob like that. Peterson flares this into right center. The right fielder will make the play. That's Bushy for out number three. First pitch swinging on both of those. And not uh, not a huge fan of that right now, but we'll see. Iowa leads 2 nothing through 2. Back for the third. This is Iowa baseball from their field. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. 
dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, nice. which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM College Sports Radio 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. 9-1-2 and two for the Leathernecks coming to the plate. Max Slavens to start it off, and then we'll go with Hagee and Alexander. Obermuller with a 1-2-3 inning in the second. Looks like he's settling in. Saw that from uh, Brody yesterday, though. Struck out the side in the second and then struggled in the third and the fourth. So we'll see what Obermuller's uh, uh, third inning looks like today. He gets strike one there on a foul ball over to the left side to Slavens batting. 0-40 on the early season, one hit and 25 at bats, one walk and nine strikeouts. Tough, tough matchup for the lefty, hitting 0-40 here. Blooped into left center. Peterson, Huxdorf come together. Peterson battling the sun, couldn't find it, and it's down. Slavens dives into second base. Wow. Yeah, he just, he never found it, never lost it right in the sun. He, he was right on it. He was right in the right spot. Just he put his glove up, and then right before the ball came down, you could see him, he had to turn away because he was getting blinded by the sun, and it dropped right on him. So Petey got there, but the, he had to turn away at the last second. That will go down as an error. Wow. Official score, angry today. <laughs> I'll have to knock on the door and get the... Uh, Thought on that one. Top of the order with Heggie. There's nothing you could really do there if you're Petey, right? I mean, that's a really tough play if you're looking right into the sun like that. You know, you're trying to use your glove to shield, and, and you know, if the ball goes into the sun and you're trying to block the sun. That, that very well could have been specifically what happened, right? Yeah, yeah. and so, I mean, I guess the, the kicker is if you can't see it around the sun, it's in the sun. So, you know, you basically try to just put your glove right in the sun and you hope for the best. And Petey was close. It's just sometimes you just can't pick it up. Heggie squares to bunt, and Obermuller fires it outside. Two balls and a strike. Two-nothing Iowa in the third. Almost needed a little bit more drift, so Huck would have had a reason to call him off. Low and in, ball three. Yeah, that's what I was expecting to happen. Not for necessarily Huck to call that off, but for the ball to tail enough over there to him where he makes a play like he did earlier uh, on Duran in the first. You know, a left-handed hitter, though, slices it into that wind a little bit, and it's mm -hmm. just enough to hold it up rather than get, let it get pushed back. That's a good point. 3-1 is tapped foul in the box. Ricocheted off of the batter, and now it's a full count. This Western Illinois unit doesn't have a bunch of guys that take good aggressive cuts. Even that one was kind of a, it's a fastball in the zone, but just more of an I'm, I'm, either, I'm not necessarily fooled, but I'm just kind of, I'm swinging for the exercise of swinging. Yeah. Every swing does kind of look like it's 75 or 80%. Here comes a 3-2. Ground ball right side foul in front of the Iowa dugout. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, and that, that presents some challenges when Cade fires it in there mid to low 90s. Well, yeah. I, I mean, one, I wouldn't think it would... If you're not going to swing quickly through the zone, it would seem to be difficult. But they, they've had some good long at-bats and, and hung around on some of these, fouled some pitches off. This is one of those at-bats. Full count from Cade. Fouled back to the screen. We'll do it again. And, I mean, Heggie himself has had two really good at-bats that walked on the 3-2 pitch in the first and can paddle off on a couple of them here in, in the third. These are the uh, types of at-bats that we think of when, it, when we talk about the pitch count, right, John? Oh, this is certainly driving it up. You get an eight-pitch at-bat. 3-2, outside, ball four. And then get the payoff on a walk. First and second for Western Illinois with nobody out in the third. Alexander will come up. 44 pitches for Cade. Alexander Sharp single up the middle in the first inning has the, the lone hit for the Leathernecks. Iowa turned two double plays yesterday. Both of them were a pretty difficult play started by Michael Seegers. Defense coming together for Iowa. First pitch to Alexander outside, ball one. Alexander's shown good speed too, so it'll take it'll take a ball kind of right at a defender, I would guess, to turn two on this one. Alexander really crowds the box. Breaking ball came in the back door, strike one. Good pitch there from Cade. Very difficult to, to not give up on that one. Starts so far outside and then at the last moment crosses just the back corner of the plate. Count even at one, the pitch from Obermuller. Lined foul over to the right. Well, not exceptionally easy for Cade to throw that breaking ball into this wind either. So mm -hmm. you know, whether it holds it up, you know, it, it would certainly change the, the shape and profile of it or potentially could. Now Obermuller looking for the strikeout. The one-two, ground ball, Cade knocks it down, stumbles, then throws it to third. Raiders got it. He'll pump fake over to first base. Good job by Obermuller. Great athleticism to come off the mound and make that play. I'm going to hassle him about it a little bit and not call it great athleticism. You don't think but, so? But, well, yeah, but I'm not going to tell him that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice job from Cade there to get off the mound and stick with it and, and then not panic. You know, he, he made the... He caught it, and he knew where he was going. Instead of trying to set his feet and turn all the way around, he knew he had the out. So just good good awareness to take the out right in front of him. That's the key point, to to in that moment, hey, relax, and, and just focus for a second, get that ball over to third. And, and like you said, John, don't panic. Don't panic. That's a big first out to get the lead runner at third. Keeps runners at first and second for Liam Bushy. A strike one from Obermuller. He's ready for the 0-1. Here it is. Low and out. Count even at one. And your outfielders are going to want to, if, if there's a play at the plate, obviously Peterson's probably got a little bit more help. So, the, you know, the wind more right behind him. But Huck will have to actually factor wind in when he throws it. He can't throw it right at Reese Moore. It'll end up up the first baseline. 1-1 one, one. at the knees. Strike number two. And yeah, not, you got to throw sort of into it, right? you got to throw it up the third baseline if you're Kyle. And good luck, uh, Andy Nelson and right. Yeah, Andy's going to really have to keep the throw down. You know, he's going to have to make sure, give it, give the cutoff guy a chance, and that's the only way it'll get there quickly. The one-two to Bushy. Fouled it off over to the left. And that's what makes probably the getting the lead runner at third base even more important because that takes away, as it stands right now, the opportunity for a sacrifice fly. Correct. Oh, for sure. One ball, two strikes with one out in the third. Lefty on lefty matchup. Just outside, maybe a touch low. Ball two. Great pitch. I think Bushy was fooled because I don't know how else you wouldn't swing at that. Yeah, he... Uh, uh... I, I don't think he would have been surprised if he got sent back to the dugout. It was low. Um, 
But an outstanding pitch from Cade. Two balls, two strikes. Cade comes set, the pitch. Inside now, ball three. Pitch count really going up for Obermuller now in the third. Garen at first base with his heels pretty close to the outfield, a couple steps away. Getting ready for the pull. The 3 2, outside ball four, and the bases are loaded. Let Bushy off the hook there. A couple of walks in the inning for Western Illinois. Yeah, he the, the one two pitch was was Cade's best pitch. Didn't get the strike call and wasn't a strike, but didn't didn't get the offer or the strike. And then obviously didn't execute two two or three two very well. Now that brings up Duran, who's batting two oh eight. Three walks on the day for Western Illinois. Iowa leading two nothing. Fouled back to the pad. He had the double yesterday, but he's also a double play candidate. So chance to get yourself out of here clean if you can get a ground ball at Michael. Are you surprised with the defensive alignment for Iowa? Corner stay back. No. No, again, I think you can get a double play, and he's not going to bunt it. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball stayed out. Moore tried to pull it in. Count even at one. The left-hander deals, ground ball, foul. Over to the left. Heggie had to hop into fair territory to <laughs> avoid that. If he gets hit in foul territory, it's fine. It's just a dead ball. You get hit in fair territory, you're out, and it's a single. As the base runner, you don't want to get hit in either place. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hurts either way. Good position here for Cade. One ball, two strikes, a pitch. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He knocks it down, throws it to second for one. On to first, double play. Six, four, three, yes. I believe I might have told you that was what uh, what was in play for the next one. Got it, John. You called it. Nice turn there right at uh, right at Seegers. You made a good backhand play and then a great delivery to, Kay, uh, to Mitchell. Nothing doing for Western Illinois. They get the bases loaded with less than two outs, but that'll do it. Three, uh, two nothing Hawks as we head to the bottom of the third. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oakville is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oakville.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. Three, four, five, come to the plate for Iowa in the bottom of the third. Iowa out in front, two nothing. We'll see Tello, Moore, and Huxdorf. A lot of power in this group coming to the plate, but maybe have to change their approach with the wind the way it is today. But uh, very effective the first time through this this middle powerful part of the order. A couple of singles, and then Huxdorf reached on an error. Well, and you know, it, as I was thinking, they needed to use the the right side of the field. They actually did a good job uh, as Tello singled sharply through the five six hole. Davis Cobb did as well. Uh, so they used. They used the left side of the field. Reese Moore went back up the middle. Ah, I still think Reese has got a chance to get a hold of one and take advantage of uh, take advantage of a little bit of not full helping wind, but a little helping wind. You can hit a ball 473 in any ballpark. You could be okay here today with 327 down the line, even even with the 
the wind. I wouldn't put it past Reese. As long as he starts at the Northwestern flag and lets it hook. <laughs> right, that would be the uh, fourth flag over for those at home. <laughs> 1-0 pitch to Tello. High ball two. So I've always kind of wondered, John, uh, the flag arrangement here. Help me out. I don't know. <laughs> it's there's, it's there very random. Doesn't, yeah, it, that's exactly what it seems to be. We'll have to ask the crew, the facility crew. 2-0 pitch to Tello. Line drive. Base hit into left center field. The outfielders come together. The center fielder dives to knock it down. Tello's around first, headed for second. It'll be a leadoff double for Raider. All right, we'll take that. And, you know, you're a hockey guy, too, so you'll appreciate it. But Raider needs some puck luck. You know, it just he, he's hit a lot of balls hard and, and, you know, either right at guys or guys have made good plays on him. That one, he hits 104, splits the defenders out there in left and center field, and he's able to get into second base. He, he's a uh, he's a batter that, we, you know, we've talked about it sort of in a joking matter at times, but he swings hard. He goes after a lot of pitches, takes great cuts. And so it is frustrating for him at times when when uh, things don't go his way, when he lines out hard. That's that's just a tough uh, part of the game for him at times. So off to a two for two start today. Good job, Raider. So to, to finish your, or continue your flag conversation, yes. where are the other four flags going to go? I, yeah, that's good. That's also a, a good observation. Uh, Reese Moore in the box. 1-0 pitch to Reese. Breaking ball stayed up and out from left to right. All right, we'll we'll give you the we'll give you the lowdown from left to right. <laughs> see if you can you can figure it out as we've got a mound visit for Western. Perfect Illinois. timing the, for the mound visit. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate that. Perfect time. All right, from left to right, just inside the foul pole and left. We start with Michigan State, the green and white Michigan State flag. Green flag, white Michigan State. All right, then. Nebraska, and then Michigan, and then Indiana. Okay, then there's the scoreboard in left center. On the other side of the scoreboard, we've got Purdue, and then Maryland, and then the Big Ten flag. And then we've got the batter's eye, and then to the right side of the batter's eye, we've got the United States flag, the state of Iowa flag, we've got the Iowa Hawkeye flag, and then we've got Ohio State, Illinois, Northwestern, Minnesota, Penn State, and Rutgers. So I guess I'm thinking about they're not, they don't have anything to do with our schedule because we don't play Michigan State and they start things off over to the left. We do play Nebraska. We play Michigan. Don't play Indiana. No, we start with Purdue and next we, week in we, West Lafayette. So, yeah, I, and at first I thought maybe... Maybe uh, football divisions, but that didn't work either. So, yeah, I'm not sure. We are going to get to the bottom of it. 2-0 to Moore. He drives it in the air, deep to right center. It's carrying. The center fielder's going back. It is off the base of the wall. Tello rounds third. He'll score. Moore's going to stop between second and third. An RBI double for Reese Moore. 3 nothing. Hawks. When that that was he, – he got the benefit of the win there as, as it just – it kept pushing it away from the center fielder who kept trying to track it. 102 off the bat, 393 to right center field, and another double for Reese Moore as he had a jam on the brakes. That's nine. He was thinking about trying to go for third, but Western Illinois actually didn't have any plans on trying to get Tello at the plate, so he would have been a, uh, a tough play at third. Would have been <laughs> dependent Reese. on a throw over the third. Iowa leading 3 nothing in the third. Moore at second. Here's Huxdorf. Takes downstairs. Better plate discipline to start the at-bat. Yeah, Reese's one triple was a, uh, a hand grenade throw on it. What should have been a double <laughs> thrown out at third. But <laughs> I can just picture that, John. Wor worked out well for him. That's what happens when you put pressure on the defense. Yep. Sometimes good things happen. One ball, no strikes. Huxdorf watches it go by low. Two and oh. I mean, think about how big this is now. Top of the third inning, bases loaded, one out for Western. They don't get anything. Iowa comes right back out, first two batters, double, double, and now it's a 3 nothing game. That feels more like Rick Heller baseball and Iowa baseball to, to get the momentum, right? Uh, from a defensive standpoint and then bring it into your dugout and then go right back out and score some runs. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the key is, you know, you get a little momentum from it, but you know you go three up, three down. You know you don't really get a lot of it. You send Cade right back out there. And now you give Cade a little bit of time to breathe. 3-0 to Huckstorf, low and in, ball four. 
and you're not done. Right. You know, you're two on now, nobody out, chance to, to add to the pile. And we got the mound visit, but there's you got a guy doing his, his plyo down there in the bullpen, but you don't have anybody for Western throwing. And so if you're Hawkeye hitters, you know, get him in the zone, get a spot you like. You know, don't go chasing, helping him out here. Make sure you, you make him earn it right now. The scout was similar with uh, Rosenfeld. It, you know, work the edges a little bit, make him come in. Don't don't chase, to your point, John. And now he's getting to the point where he's not hitting the corners, and instead he's misfiring as he just walked. He uh, just walked Huxdorf on four pitches and starts Davis Kopp off with a strike. But Davis has a single today with two RBIs. The pause in the pitch. Dropped in there for another strike, nothing in two. So just as I say that, he's <laughs> ripped off a couple of strikes. It happens occasionally. Feels like in this situation, you got to watch that outside corner. He's going to try to aim out there, it seems. The 0-2, oh, he brought it inside and low. Ball one. Yeah, I think you want to, you know, if you're Davis here, especially with a little bit of a shift on, you know, with two strikes, if he's going to work away at all, be be willing to go to that outside outside part, right field. One two to cop, ground ball left side. This could be trouble. Shortstop grabs it, throws to second for one, on to first. Good pick out of the dirt for the double play. A really good scoop there from Loomis, backhand side. That's a tough ball to pick up. See if Gable Mitchell can get that one more run across for the Hawks. Running batter for the Hawkeyes, second baseman, Gable Mitchell. Moore at third base with two outs. Iowa up three in the third. Six hits for Iowa. Mitchell squares to bunt, pulled it back, and the pitch sailed high. I mean, as it stands, Rosenfeld's thrown 11 fewer pitchers than Cade has, so. That's not an issue for him. Just Iowa starting to hit him around to touch, but 3 nothing as it stands now. 1-0 to Mitchell in the air to center. Moving away from the center fielder, and it will be caught on the run by Palmer in the gap in right center. Mitchell is the third out. Iowa gets one run. It's 3 nothing Hawks. We're back for the fourth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford tough trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Last weekend, Iowa's Matt Wesley. John Evans and John Lewin, the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. Iowa leading Western Illinois 3 0 as we get to the fourth. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Coverage on ESPN. The bottom half of the order coming to the plate for Western. They'll start with J.R. Hevelin, the designated hitter. Grounded out to Tello to end the first. Brock Loomis and Owen Sullivan up after him. Obermuller comes out for inning number four. 
the designated hitter, J.R. Hevelin. <laughs> Strike one from Cade. We're going to let the PA go all the way through that first pitch, weren't we? <laughs> Cade, Cade's set, ready to fire, and we're going to make sure we get that batter announced. Uh, didn't phase him. Strike one. Inside corner. That time, nothing in two. Evelyn not impressed with the call. He should be. It was a good pitch. Yeah. <laughs> right Kate on. Kate can live there. Right on the inside the edge of the plate. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Threw it right by him. Good start to the inning for Obermuller. That's exactly what you want to see out of Cade there. The minimum <laughs> for a strikeout. The minimum, yeah. Get uh there's a strikeout for the Hawkeye t-shirt. Here's, here's Brock Loomis. Baseman, Brock Loomis. Who wants a Hawkeye t-shirt? A couple of kids in the uh, stands went for it and so eager to get it, they fell forward. Hope they're all right down there. <laughs> took, a, took a spill. Again, great crowd today considering the, the elements. You're basically rubber when you're that age. <laughs> right, okay. Neither neither of us are that age anymore, John. I think I would have been down for the count for a little bit there. Now I'd have snapped at least two bones with the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Just shattered, huh? <laughs> Foul ball off the bat of Loomis. Count even at one. I think we paid we paid our, our dues. We put in our time last year with the cold, windy weather. We're, we are in for some warm weather in Iowa City this summer. Come on. Well, and you remember when game time, you said, oh, hey, there's one little cloud there. There's more than one little cloud now. Several starting to fill up the sky. It still kind of looks like the Simpsons sky, though. 2-1 from Obermuller, just in and a bit low, ball three. I've seen bits and pieces of that, John, so I, I do get that reference. I know you were throwing that one at me. Oh, boy. <laughs> wasn't, a, wasn't a movie. I thought I had a chance. Yeah. Your, Success. Atten your attention span is good enough for a 20, 25-minute. That's, right. <laughs> That's right. That's what I say. I comedy say that. cartoon. 3-1 from Obermuller. Ground ball to Mitchell at second. He brings it in. Makes sure that he's got it. And throws it over to Garen. Out number two. Good job there. That was Cade threw a pitch good enough to get Loomis to expand the zone there on, on a hitter's count. See if he can finish up. Finish up the at-bat, or finish up the inning here by just going right after Sullivan. Couple of quick outs, spaces empty in the fourth. Sullivan squares to bunt, pulled it back, and the pitch was low, ball one. Number of fans bundled up today, but not Blake Guerin's dad. He's in shorts, just walked by the... Uh, Garen's from Minnesota. That doesn't shock us at all, does it, John? No, there's, I, I could give you two really good reasons why, why he feels warm right now. <laughs> and the, being from Minnesota is one of them. Yes. 1-1 one, one pitch. <laughs> Called a strike at the knees. 1-2. Sullivan struck out earlier in the game. Obermuller's got his back against the wall once again. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from Cade. High and out, ball two. Yeah, you see the Hawkeye outfielders shifted toward the right field side. You know, we we're talking about that with, with Westerns at center fielder. You know, Huck basically beak extended of uh, in center field there. Yep. 2-2, two -two, called third strike. Inside corner, Cade got him. His fifth strikeout of the day. That'll end the top of the fourth. 3 nothing Hawks. We're back after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey, it's your friend, social media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. 
talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day health care needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. Bottom of the fourth in Iowa City, Iowa three, Western Illinois nothing in game one of today's doubleheader. This is game two of the series. The Hawkeyes knocked off the Leathernecks in eight innings yesterday, 11 to one. We'll have Garen Seegers and Nelson coming to the plate. Uh, Rosenfeld out for another inning of work. His first pitch to Blake will be pitch number 50 for the left-hander. Leading off the bottom of the fourth inning. Of Which I had to guess. Hickman, Blake, Just trying to find it here real quick. A career high wise, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, season high. I mean, he's at his season high. If he if he records an out, he's at his season high for innings pitched. Strike one to Garen on the outside corner. So that would be three and a third. Three and a third would be his season high. He threw three against Northern Kentucky. Three runs, or three hits, a run. Uh, actually had a really nice outing in that game. Lost six to one though. Oh, one pitch. Garen takes again for another strike. Oh and two. Interestingly enough, that's the uh, one of only two games where his pitches were counted. Didn't have uh, any tracking on the other ones, huh? But he pitched how many, 47, 47 pitches in that uh, game against Northern Kentucky? Yes. 0-2 to Garen. Here it comes. Popped foul over our heads. We'll do it again. 43. 43, okay. Has not actually. Uh, he pitched. Uh, he pitched two innings against Cincinnati uh, earlier in the week, and that's the first game he's pitched in that Western Illinois has won. That was a quality win for them. Ground ball to the left side. It's Alexander at third who cuts off the shortstop. Long throw to first base gets Garen for the first out of the bottom of the fourth. That'd be fair. They don't have a ton of wins, so there's probably more than one pitcher that hasn't been involved in right, a ton, right. of, yeah. ton of wins. The next batter for the Hawkeyes, the shortstop, Michael Seegers. At just two appearances last season, had 18 appearances and 34 and a third innings back in 2022. Seegers squares to bunt, pulls it back. Ball one. Yeah, so even with that, if you, if you go with the averages, okay, 34 and a third in 18 appearances, I mean, he's, that's he's, not even he's two. He's deep. Yeah, yeah, he's deep in a game for him. And, you know, through nine, had nine appearances actually in 2019. Uh, through 10 innings in those nine appearances. Wow. Yeah, this is, a, this is a redshirt senior that's out there for Western Illinois. One and one is the count to Seegers, bottom of the order for the Hawks. Three nothing in the fourth. And it's, it's similar to what happened yesterday. Iowa got to the bullpen of the Leathernecks, and that's when the really did the damage. Check swing. Did he go? They send it down to first base. He did not. Ball two. He was 6'4", listed at 6'4", 185 in 2022, and then was listed at 6'4", 215 his last two years. Somebody decided to update his bio page. That and he found the weight program, something. <laughs> 2-1 to Michael, floats in there, low and slow, strike number two. Michael grounded out to second, in the second. Trying to get on base for the first time today. Here's a 2-2. High, above the eyes, ball three. Anybody warming up down there, John? No. No. They've got... Handful of guys down there now, but nobody's uh, nobody nobody even in the Hawkeye bullpen, and just some guys milling around at the at the wall down the left field line. Nobody actually throwing in the Western Illinois bullpen. Nobody stretching anymore. Three two to Seegers, ground ball to third. Weak contact. Alexander fields it on a hop, throws it across. Out number two. 
He makes back-to-back -back plays for Western Illinois. He's been a, he's been a fine player for the Leathernecks. Alexander's done a nice job defensively and has a couple of hits in the series. I like the at bats from the from the Hawkeye hitters a little bit better. I know they both led to outs. Garen fouled off a pitch after he got behind 0-2, so at least it was a a four pitch at bat, a good long at bat there from Michael to get to the full count. Andy Nelson takes downstairs, ball one. He'll come up again with uh, two outs and the base is empty. Same situation as the second inning. He had a single back then. one out to Andy. Inside, ball two. Hitters count for Nelson. 2-0 pitch, line drive into center, base hit. Andy has his second hit of the game, a single with two outs in the fourth. They did a really nice job staying on that one, took the 84 mile an hour fastball that was really well located right on the inside part of the plate. And he was able to drop his hands in so that he could just square the barrel up. Hit it right back up the middle. Second singled almost exactly the same spot. Even watching those line drives that get slightly elevated, the way they hook with the wind. Try a snap throw down to first after the pitch was high to Peterson. Iowa has not risked running too much on the left-handed pitchers for Western Illinois. And with it being chilly, you know, it's hard to get going and, and risky as well. I just remember Chase Mosley last year. And yep. 1-0 pitch to Peterson in the dirt, and Nelson's able to run on that one. It gets away from the catcher. Runner in scoring position now. Two outs for Sam Peterson, who's got a 28-game on-base streak. Needs to get on today in this game to uh, keep that going. He's 0 for 2 in that regard. Does he have a perfect game, too? Jeez, why would, why would you do that to him? Well, he did. <laughs> He got plenty of time to to uh, get on base. Strike called in the inside <laughs> corner. Now I really need him to get on. <laughs> I mean, how many free throws has he made in a row? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, put them all in there, John. Yeah. <laughs> two balls, one strike to Peterson. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Two and two. What a cut there. I think he got the uh, got the catcher on the back swing there. A big one-handed long back swing. Clipped, uh, clipped Duran. Well, he took a beating yesterday, too. Really did. Really did. If they didn't give him ice bath and jacuzzi afterwards, they weren't uh, they weren't trying for him. No. Rosenfeld has worked back into the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch to Peterson out with Nelson out there at second base. Here it comes. Lined into right field. This will carry well over the right fielder's head and off the wall. Peterson will bring home Nelson. Petey's round in second. He's lost his helmet. He's headed for third. An easy triple for Sammy P. And it's 4 nothing Hawks. You are off the hook as Sammy <laughs> Peterson drives that one. 106. And again, you get just a little bit of carry, and, and what a tough play for an outfielder there with the ball kind of slicing back at you, and, and but then the wind's carrying it. There's a lot a lot of stuff going on. But the Peterson triple drives in another run, and Iowa extends the four to nothing. Maybe some frustration behind that swing a little bit, John, for, uh, for Peterson, who had uh, been held hitless in his first two at-bats. Really crushed that one out to right. 4-0 Iowa, two outs, bottom four. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch to Raider. Takes it for a strike. Low inside corner. Yeah, that's the thing with Petey, though, is just 
sticks with the approach and you know he can go 0 for 2 and end the game 3 for 5 pretty easily. Off speed stayed away from Tello, 1 and 1. Yeah, you make a good point there that Sam does have power all over the field. It happens to be that a majority of his home runs are to left. He gets a hold of those, but like you saw right there, drove that to right. 1-1 one, one to Tello. In the air, down the line, and right, and foul. Don't see Raider swing at that one too much. No, look, almost looked like he got fooled there. He was pulling off of it, and that ball was down and away. <clears throat> Again, you really want to see him if he, I, I'm fine if Raider wants to swing at that, but then it probably needs to go to right center field again. One ball and two strikes now. Peterson at third base, two outs, the pitch. Ground ball foul past the first base coach's box, occupied by Will Mulfler today. Will didn't even flinch. Watched it go. He knows that uh, John will uh, sprint down the right field line to go get it, as he's doing right now. The longtime bat boy for the Hawkeyes. Now he's got to run back into the wind. That's going to be tougher. He's not going to enjoy that as much. <laughs> The ovation from the crowd on hand will uh, motivate him, I suppose. <laughs> Count remains one and two. Pitch to Raider. Lined foul over to the right. Just working the outside against Tello. Raiders two for two today, a single and a double. He scored both times. The one, two, high fly ball down the line and right, and that will hook, slice. It'll slice out of play <laughs> to the bullpen. Yeah, there was no way that one wasn't going to get to. Remember Blake Guerin's early in the game that uh, should have been fouled into the seats behind the first base dugout and ends up being caught by the catcher on about that line. Yeah. Lengthy at bat now for... Tello, the one two line drive gloved by the shortstop in the hole bounces it over to first and a ground ball is fielded by the first baseman Loomis on that throw for the out had to get it out of the hand quickly I guess at, at short he really didn't um, but again it's one of those throws that it's easier if you the, the sooner you bounce it because the first baseman can basically feel it like a grounder instead of trying to figure out a short hop one run comes across for Iowa four nothing Hawks the fifth is coming up right after this this is Iowa baseball from Learfield even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit sharinghealthysmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. From when corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Cade Obermuller back out on the mound. He'll face 8-9-1 here in the Leatherneck batting order. The Palmer, Stevens, and Heggie. Palmer 0 for 1, Slavens 1 for 1 now after the, off the, top of the uh, inning. scoring was changed on the ball. He hit Center out to Sam Peterson, Sam Peterson in left Palmer. field. He switched that over to a hit now. First pitch from Obermuller, squares the bunt. It's a good push bunt. Garen will take it, he drops the ball. That's why you don't tag. Blake Garen tried to make the tag on the runner. 
and the ball bounces out of his glove because he didn't have it secure. Idea is you want to have it in your hand and touch with the glove, and then that way it's in your bare hand and not in your glove. And unfortunately for him, he lost lost control of it. The next batter for the Leatherneck, shortstop Max Slavin. So that'll go as an air on Blake Guerin. And so Obermuller now with the runner on first. First pitch to Slavin is low and outside in the dirt. And Slavin's doubled to left field his first at bat. All that Peterson was right on but lost it in the sun. Breaking ball outside, now 2-0. 3-0, 4-0, Hawks here, top of the fifth inning. A little bit of a, little bit of a bind here. Two zero misses, three and zero. Hagee on deck. He's walked twice. Some bodies down now in the Hawkeye bullpen. Nobody. Nobody getting too energetic yet. 3-0 pitch. Well outside again. And we're having some entertainment value here in the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, a couple of runners on for Western Illinois, and that was hitters 8 and 9, John. Second baseman, Chris Hagee. That are batting below 100. Yeah, that was a uh, you know, the free base on the air and then the free base on the walk. You know, one of the things that Cade's done a really nice job of this year is, uh, you know, not not letting that snowball build. You know, it, it's fine that uh, fine that you gave up a a hit. Fine that there was an error. You know, you saw it on on the ball that that Petey lost in the sun. Uh, you know, he was able to work around that and fight his way back. And that's you know now with two runners on again, he's going to be required to do that again. Four walks for Western Illinois. And uh, they have one extra free base via the error by Iowa. So five free bases awarded to them today. But now for the third time of, of today's opening game, they get the first two runners on. Ball one to Hagee. It's been innings... Uh, the odd innings, one, three, and five, where they've got the first two <laughs> batters on. Innings two and four for Obermuller have been one, two, three innings. How about that? Well, let's see if Cade can dig in here. 1 0 delivery, way high and out. Ball two. Now there's some activity in the Iowa bullpen, some bodies down there. Yeah, six straight pitches where Cade really hasn't even been close. Obermuller's 2-0. There it is. That's a strike. Maybe sat in the dugout too long. I don't know. Wasn't an exceptionally long inning for Iowa offensively in the bottom of the fourth. Well, he didn't get, unfortunately, the first batter here, you know, gave himself up on a, on a bunt right down the line. Garen dropped the tag. Ooh. Good spot from Obermuller. Just low, 3-1. and one. And so, you know, the, the out that he could have had, he didn't get. And then he hasn't helped himself here in the next two batters. Top of the fifth, Iowa leading 4 nothing. Here's a 3-1. Ground ball right side past Guerin and into the right field corner. Nelson will cut it off. A run is across. Runners at the corners for the Leathernecks. 4-1. to one. Fastball there, outside part of the plate. Just Heggy did a nice job going with it, was able to shoot it past a, a somewhat drawn in Garen. Next batter for the Leather, next third baseman, Kyrie Alexander. Pretty far off the bag, too, don't you think? Uh, past the cut of the, the grass over there and in, and just cut that reaction time for Blake. Yeah, just you know, maybe, maybe he's got a shot at it, but boy, it's. Uh, it's a tough play, and 
you know, and it's a tough day to tough day to field. And for the first time today, the free bases starting to hurt Iowa. And there's another one as Alexander is hit by the pitch. He turned his hips to get his swing started. And as he turned and faced Obermuller, the pitch hit him in the middle of the torso. Lower part of the torso. South of the breadbasket. South of the border. Oh, my goodness. He's down for the count for a bit. He can take all the time that he needs. The only redeeming factor for him was that was an 81 mile an hour breaking ball. The only. But I mean, at this point, <laughs> kind of get back. Right. It's four to one. Bases are loaded yeah. now, and there's nobody out in the fifth inning here. Uh, and Cade. Um, <laughs> Cade right now kind of needs a map to find the strike zone, and so this is uh, this is a tough spot. Not ideal in the fifth, as just uh, I, I mentioned earlier, just craving a, a super strong start by a, by an Iowa pitcher. And there's always an inning or two that just seems to be a bit off, and that would be. Uh, that would be this inning now in the fifth. Base is loaded, and Bushy is up. Oh, and they said it hit him. The pitch was up and in. Caught him in the forearm. Back-to-back -back hit by pitches, and it's 4-2, to two. and the Hawks are in danger now. I don't know who your fastest guy getting loose in the bullpen is right now, but he's got to get going. He better get going. 4-2, Iowa with the lead in the fifth. Bases still loaded. This is Duran. First pitch strike from Cade. Nobody out. And now you, you might see Kratz getting warmed up down there. Although it looks like it's a left-handed pitcher. Squaring to bunt and knocking it foul over to the right is Duran. 0-2. Oh that's an interesting call. Well, that's a choice from your catcher non-fast guy with the bases loaded turn that into a little one two three double play although you know we've talked about it from some of the hawkeye hitters what he was trying to do was he was aggressively trying to push bunt that mm -hmm. he was going to try to push it uh, with garen back and mitchell back going to try to push it that direction major advantage for obermuller no balls two strikes Trying to regain his control. Leatherneck on every base. Here's the pitch. Ground ball right side. Mitchell, he's got it. He'll go to second for one. Over to first. Double play. Got him at first base. They are going to instantly review that. A run scores on the back side. Western Illinois pulling within one now. It's four to three. Regardless of the outcome of the double play, that run scores. Umpires are meeting just in front of the mound. <clears throat> See if you do have a review incoming. Have the ability to do so, so I don't see why not. Yeah, I don't. I, I've never quite figured out what that part of the meeting is for. Right. Are there, you going to go with me? Are you going to go with me? <laughs> yeah. Or can we go to the bathroom together too while we're there? What? A... Now they're talking with Coach Heller. And they're heading over to the tent, just past the Iowa dugout, right, fans, over to the right to review it. Mm. And I was asking, they do have more views than just the the Big Ten Plus uh, camera work, so there are other cameras that the review will have. All right. So we'll either have, no matter what, the score will be four to three. Uh, with Iowa still leading. We'll either have two outs and a runner at third. That's a quick review, John. He is safe at first base. After I was worried with how quick that was. was first base umpire Shane Cannon must have missed it. 
Coach Heller is out of the dugout. Taking the slow walk to the mound. And I will make a pitching change in the fifth. Wheels kind of fell off for Cade at the end of his outing. 4-3, Iowa with the lead. Runners at the corners and one out. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Four three Iowa in the top of the fifth. The Leathernecks have pushed across three runs in this inning, chasing Kate Obermuller from the game. Runners at the corners for Western with one out after the double play was overturned and the runner was ruled safe at first base. So the Iowa Hawkeyes make a pitching change. It's time to see Jack Young again, the senior right-hander from LeClaire. Jack's now two and zero on the season after. Picking up the win yesterday for his heroics. Six and a third innings, three hits, one run. It was unearned. Three walks, seven strikeouts. A little bit easier spot than he came into yesterday. Bases loaded, nobody out yesterday. Now runners on the corners and one out. So still, uh, still a jam as Iowa just clinging to a one-run lead. Young came in yesterday with uh, the scenario that John just presented, got a fly out to the outfield, shallow enough to not bring anybody home, and then got the big time double play. Seegers to Mitchell over to first, and Guerin to seal that uh, scoreless inning then. That's how Young earned the victory, and that's all, if we say that's all, but uh, that's all we saw from Jack yesterday, that he came out of the game, and the rest of the bullpen did a great job. So Young in to put out a bit of a fire Right now, Iowa up by one, and a game that coming into the fifth was four nothing. Everything was, everything was great. Everything was grand. It felt very comfortable. Now a little edgy. Definitely a little edgy. The good news with Jack's appearance yesterday is, you know, he didn't go through the whole lineup. Two guys saw him yesterday, um, and they're already through. Well, actually, Heveland might have yesterday. He might have been the one that flied out because they switched the order just a touch here. That's a uh, hitter, JR. close. You've got your scorebook from yesterday. Yeah, Loomis, Loomis uh, saw, he was the one who flew out to right okay, against so. Young. So Loomis and Reese Davis, who's not playing today. There's a swing and a miss by Hevelin. So Loomis, the guy on deck, he saw Jack yesterday. And if he gets up and hits a little fly ball to short right field, that'll be just fine because that'll be hopefully the third out after Hevelin retires. Yeah. Runners at the corners and one out. Young comes set. Runner takes off. No, he goes back to first. Strike two called on the outside corner. Jack dealing strikes. Yeah, boy, I have a hard time imagining Duran running. He, yeah, he took a couple of hard steps to second. But you're right, he stayed put. One stolen base in three attempts. Check swing. Did he go? He did. And he's out on strikes. There's Young threw the same pitch to him three either. times in a row. Varied the spots just a touch. Two down. Yeah, didn't get that one really anywhere near the zone. Way down low. The next batter for the Leathernet. But got the, baseman, got the gone Lula. fishing sign up and got the first punch out. All right, Iowa clinging to their one-run lead in the fifth. The Hawks will have more Huxdorf and Kopp coming to the plate in the bottom half of the inning. Iowa out hitting Western 9-3, to three, but the lead is just one. Young versus Loomis, part two. Ball one from Jack. Yeah, unfortunately, six free bases from Cade. 
four walks, two hit batters, and then the error compounds that inning to make it even worse for him. Yeah. Just outside from Jack there, really went with the off speed and snapped it too hard. That was full Frisbee. Yeah. 28 inches of horizontal break. That's still that's still pretty impressive. Two balls, no strikes with two outs. Young comes set. The pitch from Jack. Strike call. Yeah, he gets that, gets that wind pushing it a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Not coming in real hard, and wind pushes it over. That one's inside and low. Moore knocked it down. Jack Young is sort of in this outing. I, I, I didn't notice it as much yesterday, but he's he's sort of like Jack Whitlock 2.0. He's he's copying Jack's pitches. It must be a Jack thing, huh? That that off speed, the 3-1 hit in the air, right center field. Nelson going back, still going back. This is trouble, and it's gone. It's a three-run home run for Brock Loomis, and Western Illinois leads 6-4. to four. Boy, that wasn't a bad pitch. Up, the only, the only problem you'd have with that pitch was the up part of it. It was off the plate. But boy, then again, the one place the ball carries to hits a then high better, fly ball, and it just drifted and drifted. Sullivan. Man. This inning has taken a turn for the worse. Base is empty for Owen Sullivan. And they've got that listed. These runs shouldn't, they're listed as earned runs, but they shouldn't be because Iowa should be out of the inning with two outs in the air already. 1-0 from Young, outside corner, count even at one. Not that any of that matters, because earned or unearned, they all count, but. Three run home run from Loomis. Gives Western the lead. Counts two and one to Sullivan. Well, I thought he turned his head to call it a strike, and I was gonna think, well, that was generous. I yeah. mean, it was inside. In Hawkeye fans wanted it, but it, it's inside. Mm. Strike two on the outside corner. Count even at two. Hawks have their work cut out for them now in the middle innings. Mm. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch from Young called third strike on the outside corner to... And the top of the fifth, six runs come across for Western Illinois. They lead it six to four back after this. this Iowa baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. At the game or at home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, the tides have turned. The moods have changed at Dwayne Banks now this afternoon with Western Illinois putting up a sixth spot in the fifth. 
They lead at 6-4. Iowa out hitting them 9-4. They've got six runs on four hits. Wow. Hey, that's the one bad inning. That's that's the one freebie inning that, that yeah, uh, the, the coaching staff talks about. Go the, ahead, Chad. Well, it's just, yeah, the tale of the Hawkeye season. You know, four walks, two hit batters for Cade. For the Hawkeyes, the you know, there was a, the air that, that started off that inning on a on – a, on a poor bunt right down the first base line that was an easy out. Western Illinois trots Kyle Rosenfeld back out for his fifth inning of work. Reese Moore sees him first. Two and zero oh quickly to Moore. What do you think the messaging is in the uh, dugout from Coach Sutherland as you attack Rosenfeld now for the third, potentially fourth time through coming up? Moore sends one right back to him. 2-0 pitch, and he hit it right back to the pitcher. He's out number one. I was just going to say you need to you need to keep being selective with good at-bats and, and you know, swinging at and again, you, you know, especially especially now that you're behind, you, you can't press. And, you know, and you also can't then just be outcome selective. But that's an 83-mile-an-hour fastball that's down probably below the zone on a 2-0 pitch. It's, it's just really not, not the pitch you want to go try to drive somewhere. Huxdorf is up. Takes strike one at the letters. It's just you know, do your process. You have nine hits here. It's not it's not like you're, oh, geez, how are we ever going to score another run? Ground ball up the middle. Second baseman juggles it. He took a really poor angle at that, and Huxdorf is on. That's an E4, no question about that. He, he, took, a, he took an angle that almost overran it, didn't he, John? Well, and a lot of times you'll do that as... It, you know, he wants to try to circle it so that he can get some momentum going back toward first base. But you almost need to circle it then. Make sure you get to the backhand side so you're coming forward. He kind of took a weird little diagonal to it. Uh, never really got that good angle at it. Huxdorf at first. This is Davis Kopp. First pitch popped up into right. Oh, it'll carry, though. Get going, baby. It is robbed. Did he catch it? Hold on, hold on. Did he catch it? It's gone. No, he didn't catch it. He sold it for a second. It's a home run for Davis, the deputy cop, and we're tied at six. He had me fooled, John. Well, and it, 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 it very nearly could have worked as, as cop could have ran past Huxdorf there. Good job of base running there to wait and see what happened. Davis cop gets a, the wind aided. <laughs> on track on track man that ball goes 360 and it flew over the 374 sign uh, which, which again kind of tells you how hard the wind's blowing here um, as that was just 95 mile an hour off the bat should have been a should have been a little pop-up to right field which is the same ball that that jack threw but at least iowa got one back tie game six apiece bottom of the fifth <laughs> oh what a game I'm just, I guess I'm still surprised that, and, and maybe this is Western's best option, but just surprised that he's still out there right now. I'm right there with you. He's He's got Mitchell in a hole 0-2, but Iowa has hit Rosenfeld well today. I mean, I guess he just sits at 80 pitches, so he's not. Oh, it's not like he's sitting at 130 and he's overly taxed or anything, but... Swing and a miss. Mitchell chasing a high fastball there for out number two. And that'll bring up Garen. I, I suppose my thinking is this is a game that Western feels like they can win, considering the score and the and the inning. And so maybe if they can get as close as they can to the end and then throw in that closer that they like uh, without having to go to another arm in between to maybe, you hate to say it, but cost them any extra runs before they get to the closer. There's 12 more outs you got to get between... Between those, Kratz is not a 
Kratz is not a guy that throws that many innings either. Not an innings, not an innings eater, they would say. He's 14 and a third innings in his seven appearances, so I guess you might be able to get two or three out of him if things are going well. So maybe decide to try to stretch him for 12 outs and see if you can steal this game. 0-1 to Garen. Takes it for strike two. Blake has been in a couple of two strike counts today. He's watched a couple of nice pitches go by, hoping for something better, I suppose, here. 0-2, the pitch. Way high and out. Catcher doesn't really give that one a look as it goes to the backstop. The only thing he could have done was... <laughs> Why? Torn his <laughs> left shoulder out of the socket trying to catch it. John. Yeah, I mean, there was. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone after it if he, either. If he didn't stretch beforehand, he wasn't catching that one. Find one you like here, Blake. The one, two. Low and in. Good <laughs> discipline. Well, it was funny because that was exactly the pitch I thought you should throw after that. You know, you basically you send one over his head to the backstop, and you know, now you throw a back foot breaking ball and just see if he swings over the top of it because his eye line's a little messed up. Yes. 2-2 two -two to Blake in the dirt. Ball three. This is the most disciplined I've seen Blake this season, I think, in, in today's game. He hasn't really chased much usually swings at a lot of pitches. He's trusted his eyes a little bit more here. Full count pitch to Garen. Popped it up. Straight back, up over our heads. I don't think it'll hit the roof, John. We gotta be ready. Uh, wind should keep pushing that well beyond us at yeah. this point. Tied at six in the fifth. It's a big answer for Iowa here in the bottom of the fifth inning though to to get those runs back, at least get some of them back. 3-2, swing and a miss. Good changeup from Rosenfeld, gets Garen for out number three. The Hawkeyes get a couple of runs, tie things back up. We'll go to the sixth, tied at six. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox home comfort specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Hawkeye History Trivia. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Western Illinois batted around in the fifth, sending nine batters to the box. And so they'll lead off the sixth the same way they did in the fifth with Grant Palmer coming to the plate. Eight, nine, and one. Palmer, Slavens, and Heggie. New pitcher into the game for the Hawkeyes is the right-handed sophomore from Dubuque, Aaron Savory. Five appearances for Sav, a 4.26 ERA, six and a third innings, six hits, three runs have all been earned, three walks, 10 strikeouts. Opponents just knocking him around at a 240 batting average. Deals his final warm-up pitch. Now pitches number 18. And we're all square getting to the sixth. So it's a race for the final few innings of game one of today's doubleheader. Leading off the top of the sixth inning. For the Leathernecks, left fielder Owen Savory out of the windup. He's ready. First pitch to Grant Palmer in there for a strike. And I just kind of want to get back pounding the low part of the zone Correction, here. A center fielder. Yes. Grant Palmer. Start dominating with strikes again. 
Ground ball right back to Savory. Fields it on a high chopper. Got to hurry over to first base. Got him. Took forever to come down into Savory's glove, and then he decided to wait for it to drop all the way basically to the ground to pick it up and then get it over to Garen for out number one. Well, I think I think that was still the wind pushing it. Just kind of pushed it away from him. Then he threw a little bit of a screwball into the runner at first. We saw that happen uh, on a uh, Brody Breck throw that took, mm -hmm. took the first baseman into the runner. And nice job there by Blake to snatch it out quickly. Now we'll see Slavens. Slavens just one for one today, but he walked in the big Western Illinois fifth. 1-0 pitch from Savory. Breaking ball low and a bit outside as well, 2-0. Yeah, for a guy hitting 077, he's not hitting, seeing near enough strikes from Hawkeye pitching right now. Yeah, and that's, that's probably the key for the Hawks. The rest of this game and even into the next one, get your strike throwers out there. And 2-0, rip down the line and right. That one will be foul. Had the distance just to the right of the foul pole. But get your get your strike throwers on the mound and challenge them that way to, to get base hits off you. And instead of having an inning like the fifth where there were numerous free bases awarded and then it just takes one hit for them. Out of the windup, the 2-1 from Aaron. Strike two on the outside corner. Good pitch from Sav. Friendly corner there for Sav after he tried to bust the 90-mile-an-hour fastball in. Slevin's hit it hard, but or Slevin's hit it hard, but no chance of keeping it fair. Similar pitch is fouled back to the net. You like that slider again, John, or you go back to a fastball? I like the slider inside this time. 2-2. Two -two. Outside. Good, hard fastball from Savory. Just missed. Counts full. Okay, fans disagree with you, but yeah, it, I think it was outside. It was, and uh, I think Iowa fans are just a little irritated with how this game is going. Swing and a miss. There it was, John. There was your off-speed inside. Yeah, and, and, and really, he set that up then, I guess, with the fastball outside. So he throws it basically in the same tunnel, and, and then instead of being the fastball, breaks it all the way across and gets the second out. Took an extra pitch to get there, but really had Slavens puzzled. And now to the top of the order for Hagee. Iowa has not retired Hagee today. Two walks and a single. Run scored in RBI. Oof. Moore with a great snag behind the plate. Ball one. Had a hard time with Heggie yesterday, too. Only got him out once. That's what I was looking at. He was 0 for 2 yesterday, but two walks yesterday also. It's worked a 2 and 0 count. Batting average is all right, 279. His on-base percentage nearing 500 at 467. 2 0 from Savory. That's down the middle, of strike one. Well, we certainly haven't. Hawkeye pitching hasn't hurt that at all uh, on the numbers this weekend for his on base percentage. So. Savory winds and fires. Ground ball left side. Tello's ready for it. He's got it. And throws it across the diamond for the third out. A 1-2-3 inning out of the bullpen for Aaron Savory. Good job, Sav. We're tied at six, bottom of the sixth inning coming up. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and take to work great. Right here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now. Please. 
U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Tied at six in the bottom of the six between Iowa and Western Illinois this afternoon at Banks. Before we make the pitching change for Western Illinois and introduce their new right-handed arm, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Freshly into the game for Western Illinois is a right-handed pitcher in his fifth year from Los Angeles, Cole Dale. 1-0 on the season in five appearances, a nine ERA, six innings pitched, four hits, seven runs, six are earned, nine walks, six, I'm sorry, four strikeouts, opponents hitting him at a 190 batting average, three wild pitches, he's hit a couple batters. Fastball is going to come in, again, mid to just slightly upper 80s. He'll have a slider and a changeup. Um, but as you can tell from the numbers, has really struggled with command. So uh, I'm just going to try to work off the fastball. But think fastball, think small window, and make him come into that box if you're Michael Seegers, because you can then also run on him if you can start it off that way. So a great answer by Iowa in the bottom of the fifth after giving up the lead. You tie it back up. Then you th go out there and throw up a zero, courtesy of a 1-2-3 inning from Aaron Savory. So see if the Hawks can take the lead. Good part of the order with Seegers leading off. Corners in to defend against Michael. And the pitch goes all the way to the backstop. I had joked that uh, Duran uh, didn't really go after one of the pitches from the, the last pitcher. Uh, from from Rosenfeld, he didn't even try at that one. Didn't even flinch. That was very impressive. If you're the pitcher, though, how do you see that? that you don't like that aspect. Ball up and in. Ball two. Closer to the strike zone for Dale. <laughs> oh, and that one was close. A wind up in the right-hander deals outside ball three. Yeah, I think, uh, again, right now, he, just based on the scouting report, everything you see, uh, you've got to exhibit extreme patience here and, and be very, very selective in your tunnel. 3-0, low and out, ball four. Seegers, dangerous runner, is on to lead off the Iowa sixth. He saw Coach Sutherland poke out of the dugout and talk to Andy Nelson briefly, who was in the on-deck circle, and that's probably along the lines of, hey, this guy's not even close. Right. And, and I mean, you know, you talk about now the run game. <laughs> you haven't seen a pitch that's easy for a catcher to throw yet, so. Yeah. He's had to reach or block all four. Seegers at first base. Here's Nelson. Ball out. I mean, you look at how Duran just caught that ball. His right leg was entirely extended straight out to to grab that. If Michael was running, he would have had no chance to, to pop up and throw that. I mean, on one hand, you don't want to risk running into an out when a pitcher can't throw a strike either. But 1-0 pitch to Nelson in the dirt. Michael takes off. Oh, he's caught in between first and second. Here's the throw down to second base. He's safe. He got there. Poor throw by the catcher. That's the only way, really. Well, correct. He he got a, uh, he at least caused him to hesitate, kind of double, double pump, and, and uh, sent that throw high, which gave Michael a sliding lane and let him slide head first over onto the third base side and get around a tag. It was a great read by Seegers at first base because the pitch was in the dirt, but it was a better stop by Duran who picked it out of the dirt. Yeah, fantastic clean pickup from Duran. Six straight out of the zone from... The Western Illinois pitcher make it seven as it's 3-0. and Dale struggling for the Leathernecks. Yeah, you're getting quick action up in the bullpen now. They're not floating this one out there too long. Nelson can shoulder the bat, right? I would think so. There's a strike. Three balls, one strike to Nelson. Andy's two for three today. Yeah, two solid singles back up the middle. He hasn't tried to hasn't tried to overpower anything, just stuck with a pitch, went right back up the box. The pitch from Dale hit foul over our heads. Full count now for Nelson. Mike, 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 Mike. 
Peterson on deck. Iowa and Western Illinois tied at sixth in the sixth. Find a way on here, Andy. Dale checking on the runner at second. That's Seegers. Here's the 3 2. Ground ball right side. Backhand stop by the first baseman. Now it's a race to the bag at first. He is out at first base. Andy went for the feet first slide at the bag. And Loomis beat him to it. Seeger's able to get to third. I don't know what Loomis was thinking there. I mean, I understand he picked it up, and but to think even to consider throwing the third there was. Uh, he took way too long. It almost cost him. Well, because not recognizing then how fast Nelson is, as he hopped away from the bag, he was only making it more and more difficult for himself to get back. A mound visit. Nelson grounds out to the first baseman, brings up Peterson, who extended his on-base streak to 29. I mean, if you're Western here, I wouldn't be against walking Peterson to set up a double play for Tello, but I doubt that's what they're talking about because that's a pretty easy conversation. Yeah, and that that would be a something a call from the from the dugout, right? Wouldn't require a mound visit, do you think? You wouldn't think so. Yeah. Maybe just give some more time for the relievers down the line. Are they still throwing down there? They are still throwing, but again, I suppose you throw one pitch and make the change. But my guess is, my guess is he's going to get uh, he's going to get Peterson. Infield comes in against Sam. Seegers at third base has to be smart over there. Dale ready, the pitch to Petey, way out, ball one. One out, Dale's gonna have to hurry, pitch clock getting down there. Here's the 1-0 as time expires. Peterson bloops it into right center. It will be caught on the run by the right fielder. Seegers tags. Here he comes down the line. He'll score. Iowa has the lead, 7-6. to six. They'll appeal to third. They will be denied their appeal. Not a good Iowa scored in five of the six innings again. So, I mean, third baseman. Haven't really ever hung up the big one. But. That's the key, John. That they have not had the, the the potential energy has felt like it's there, but the Hawks have just not quite broken through in that aspect. But you do like the consistency of, of traffic and putting pressure on. Raider comes up with the bases empty and two outs. Again, would just love to go back here to just a really patient approach. Make him throw strikes. 1-0 is low, ball two. Yeah, with the way things are going, um, with Dale throwing not very many strikes at all, just a third of his pitches in the zone, uh, even though there's two outs, you've got a lot of work that you could uh, do here. Yeah, I mean, he's thrown, he's thrown four strikes this inning. Will he's, not add to the total there, it's 3-0. No, I mean, he's, he's now thrown 11 balls on four, uh, on four strikes, so. Mm -hmm. Three balls, no strikes. Pitch to Tello, outside, ball four. As we, kind of, we kind of joked about it before. If you're gonna walk a guy, walk him on four pitches. Don't fool around. The minimum, yeah, the minimum. <laughs> Don't run your count up, just walk him. Reese Moore from the on-deck circle has to remove his shin guards and come to the box. Gets to, gets to remove his shin guards. How about that? Reese also has extended his on-base streak. Now to 12 for the Iowa catcher. High fly ball to right would work out nicely for Reese, I think. Ooh, this hits him though. Hit him in the foot. It bounced before it got there. He had nowhere to go. Couldn't go forward, couldn't go backward. He tried to leap up and it chased him and got him in the ankle. That's even more efficient than the four pitch walk. Right. Comes with a little pain though, John. Certainly some pain for Reese. 
the next batter for the Hawkeyes. You feel a little bit for, for Dale. I mean, just unable to find it. And uh, Iowa making making it hurt, though. Leading 7-6 to six in the sixth. First pitch to Kyle Huxdorf. Oh. Strike one. That's a, that's going to be a outside oh. corner part of the zone. Now, if you're Kyle, don't extend your zone here just because one got called out there. Yep. Tip your cap, but stay disciplined here. Nothing in one delivery. Outside, low. Good block by Duran. Yeah, my guess is he's going to – he's had this practice a lot with Duran. I mm -hmm. mean, it, or with, uh, with Dale. I mean, it's – these pitches haven't been really anywhere close for the most part. Count even at one for Huxdorf. Two on and two out. Dale taking his time. Pitch clock at two seconds. Low and out. He runs that all the way down, doesn't he, John? He really does. I don't know whether it takes extra time. If there's something about, you know, they don't get it to him quick enough. But, I mean, he's got the pitch. He's kind of ready. You know, he's barely getting on before 10 seconds, and so takes some time for him. Got to throw it in the next two seconds. Barely got it off. Here's the 2-1 hit foul. Well, the end wonder, of the bat. I wonder if that's like the uh, the delay of game in the NFL because the pitch clock had run out. Yeah, it's got to be at zero for one one tick, right, John? Isn't that what it is in the... Well, somebody has to look at it, and then they have to call it. <laughs> oh, there, that, that's the key. And somebody's got to see that it's at zero. <laughs> yep, somebody has to see it's at zero and call it. They don't, they, they're don't. they not anticipating it because, of course, they're watching the game. Two balls, two strikes, two outs for Huxdorf. Dale is ready, checking out Tello at second base. Long pause, the pitch, up and in, got away from the catcher. Tello's going for third, here's the throw, he is safe. Couple of runners in scoring position now for Huck and a full count for him. Caught a break there on another bad throw, really. Is the, the ball was, the ball bounced the right direction for for an opportunity to to make a good throw to third, uh, but uh, couldn't, couldn't keep it corralled. And now, really again, just the way we've seen these pitches go, good secondary leads, even if you swing at this pitch, you know, be ready. Yeah, good point. Who knows? Pitch in the dirt. Who, Who's talent? 3-2. Lined into right. It is fair. Inside the line and into the corner. Tello scores. Moore crosses the plate. And Huck hits a two RBI double with two outs. Hawks lead 9-6. to six. Two out free bases. Hurt the Hawkeyes in the fifth. They return the favor. Take the four pitch walk, take the hit batter, and Huck just laces it right inside the foul line and brings home two. Now keep doing damage. Again, it doesn't matter how many outs there are when, when the pitcher is, is willing to give you a few extra bases. Keep it rolling. Another runner out there for Davis Kopp now. Kopp hit a home run his last time up. Huckstorf with a great lead at second. Breaking ball dropped in for a strike. Cop shakes his head. Ball was high. He's had a he unlike yesterday, he's he's fairly consistently called that high strike, but Cop's probably more frustrated that seriously on me you're gonna hit that pitch. Uh, that's what I think it was. Pitch in the dirt, Huck with a good secondary, but he'll hop back to second base. It has to be somewhat challenging uh, for hitters going up against somebody that is not entirely accurate consistently. It's like, a, I don't know how you lock in every single pitch, but that's part of the game. That's part of the challenge to do just that, to lock in on every pitch. Inside, ball two to cop. When you hear about some pitchers, and, and Iowa has a few of them on the staff that are effectively wild, um, Dale probably doesn't fall into that zone right now as he's been a, a little bit wilder. You know, you can, you've got to come into the zone enough to, to keep hitters honest about it. Cop bends away from the high fastball three and one. Three runs across for Iowa. They've scored the last five to regain the lead. It's nine to six.
3-1 pitch to Cop. High, ball four. Just find it a really interesting pitching decision of your you're tied at six in a game you think you can win, or, or a game you, you clearly have a chance to win, tied at six with you know play, basically playing a four-inning game. For the Hawkeyes, second baseman, I, I'm with you. I, Mitchell. When you've got that great closer that everybody's hearing about, if you keep it close, show up in the in the eighth or ninth and do some damage. But now Iowa back out in front. Gable Mitchell is up, takes it inside around the shins. Or maybe you go with him. You go with him and say, hey, get me three innings. You the know, closer. You're talking about yeah, Kratz. Yeah, we're, we're going to score enough runs that, that we'll be ahead nine to six when we have to hand the, when you have to give the ball up from you and, and we'll still win the game. Two on and two out. Mitchell hits this in the air. Shallow center. We'll see if the wind plays tricks on it. Second baseman going back. It's playing with him, but he's got it. Heggy makes the grab for out number three. Three runs come across, due in large part by the two RBI double from Kyle Huxdorf. It's 9-6 Iowa. We're back for the seventh. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Our try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. As a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Aaron Savory out for another inning of work. He put down the Leathernecks one, two, three in the six. We've liked what we've seen from Sav the last couple times out. Sav's been, been pretty good. I've had a good opportunity to talk to him kind of on some of our bus trips and and out of during batting practice and things and I really like kind of where he's at he recognizes kind of what and why the first couple of weeks happened and and has made some adjustments to that and off the top of the really shown up in in his performances decent part of the order Ooh, ball one to Kyrie Alexander must have blinked Tie to Alexander, ball two. Two oh. Grounded left side, tough play. Tello, he's ready. He'll step, he'll throw. Got him at first. Made it look easy. I thought initially it was going to be tough, but Raider made it look simple. He really timed the hop well, came charging in on it. Got the speedy runner there. Raiders got such a good arm coming in on, on those balls. Throws a dart the across the infield. The right fielder, Liam Bushy. Bushy had his batting shirt grazed in his last at bat. Savory deals the breaking ball for a strike. Oh, one is grounded to Mitchell at second base. He fields it in shallow right field, throws it to Guerin, two down. Good job there. Got over, got it. Got it off to the side there. Easy play. Got his feet shifted around. Good timely toss to Guerin. The next batter for the Leathernecks, the catcher. Adam this is Duran. Flight out to center, hit into a double play, and... Reached on a fielder's choice his last time up. Swing and a miss. 
Savory has been efficient in his inning and two thirds. I like what he's doing too. He just checks the wristband, jumps right up there. Not a lot of walking around. Ground ball, Seegers chases it down, bobbled it. He'll spin, he'll throw to first base. Did they get him? No, called him safe. Heck of a play by Seegers. Yeah, he juggled it initially, but it was a tough play, a long run for him to get to it in shallow center. But to spin like that and to put that throw right on the money, wow, made it close. Well, that was the most impressive part was how accurate that throw was. I almost want him to challenge it just for fun. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it could have been. It, it could be, but uh, the Hawks not challenging, and it will be a single for Duran, his first hit of the day. Savory comes right back and throws strike one. I think he was clearly safe, but just on the principle of uh, maybe there's a glitch in the uh, in the matrix over there. <laughs> Build some suspense, yeah. Have some other people. Uh, Look at it and admire the play that Seegers made. A one, tapped foul in front of the Western Illinois dugout. Yeah, Seeks would have had to have spun to throw that ball anyway. The bobble just made it where he got, to, got into the spin a little bit quicker. No balls and two strikes. The pitch from Savory in the air to right center. Huxdorf moving over, still running, still running off of Kyle's glove and all the way to the wall. Nelson picks it up, tries to get it in, and a run will score. It's 9-7. to seven. That's the wind right there because Kyle is gliding. Kyle got fooled. Yep. He was not, he was not full sprinting, and boy, something you don't see very often with this defense, two balls have hit off Hawkeye gloves and didn't get the out in either so case, and it the cost the Hawkeyes a run. Brock and the, the Leatherneck hero steps into the batter's box. Yeah, and you got to watch him. He's got the three-run home run that gave Western Illinois the lead. Feels like hours ago in the fifth. Savory deals a fastball out. Yeah, I think you're going to want to maybe have a slightly different approach here with Loomis. The, trying to, as he went, so he was able to get to the spin, misses away on a breaking ball there. But maybe try to work that fastball just a little bit here. Well, you know, on deck you've got Owen Sullivan, who's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. I know you wouldn't want to bring the go ahead run to the plate but uh, Loomis is dangerous 2-0 hit right back to Savory no it's Moore who pops out of his stance he grabs it before it gets into foul territory how oh, depth perception fooled me for a moment yeah I thought it was more a chopper right back like we'd yeah. seen before uh, but the ball just stayed right at home plate so now two balls and one strike that was a Good pitch there. Saf came back with the fastball outside, tried to kind of sneak it past him a little. Try pickoff move to second base. Nice quick move from Savory on the spin, but the runner gets back in time. Heaveland has a, an aggressive lead there. Didn't shorten it at all. <laughs> Still out there, isn't he? Ground ball left side. Who's going to grab it? It's Raider. Tello picks it up, throws it across on a line to Garen to get Loomis. All right, got the dangerous batter. One run comes across for Western Illinois. Iowa leads 9-7. to seven. Time to stretch things out at Banks. Hey, Hawkeye fans, it's time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all, Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game, family, friends. 
We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Bottom of seventh inning, John Evans and John Leo from Iowa City on the campus of the University of Iowa. 9-7 Iowa, in a high scoring affair. Game one of today's doubleheader. We'll have game two 30 minutes after the conclusion of game one. We'll see Ben Wilmus come up for the Hawks. Leading off the bottom of this He'll bat game. for Blake so Guerin. Have Hawkeye. yet to see Bla uh, Ben rather in this series, trying to get Wilmus back on track. Cole Dale is back out for another inning of work. He surrendered the lead back in the sixth. Iowa pushed across three runs. So Wilmus comes up, takes ball one. The pitch to Ben outside 2 and 0 oh. interesting to note that Dale started uh, the 6th in the windup and then a couple of runners got on so obviously he went to the stretch but now he begins the 7th inning from the stretch so that's an adjustment that he's made <laughs> 3 and 0 oh, downstairs well miss able to take that pitch Probably a red light once again for Wilmus. It is, and he draws the walk. That'll push his on-base percentage up. Closer to 400 now as Wilmus draws the walk to start the bottom of the seventh. Here's Michael Seegers, but looks like we might have a pitching change as mound visit taking place. And yes, Dale is walking off the mound. Over to the left, headed to the Western Illinois dugout. The door opens up down the line and left. We'll take a pitching change break. Iowa leads at 9-7 in the bottom of the seventh. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Western Illinois makes a pitching change in the bottom of the seventh. It's 9-7 Iowa. And the Leathernecks will turn to Eric Cunning, a right-handed pitcher, six foot four, tall drink of water out there on the mound, 205, redshirt sophomore from Marlton, New Jersey. Spent some time at IMG Academy to prepare him for college. Let's take a look at the stats for Cunning, right in the middle of the, of the board for the Leathernecks, making his sixth appearance with a 0-0 zero and zero record. He's thrown seven innings, given up 14 hits, nine earned runs. Opponents hitting 400 against him. Do, does a good job against the free bases. He's only walked one, thrown one wild pitch, and hit one batter, but has got an ERA of 11.57 because he throws a lot of strikes and teams hit him. That's one way to do it. Yes. And so Seegers will come into the box and get the first look at him. Michael Seegers. 
Ben Wilmus was about a perfect pinch hitter for that pitcher. Yes. We'll try a pickoff move over to first. And Wilmus is back safely. Michael takes downstairs, ball one. Cunning's fastball, <clears throat> mid 80s, a little below. Super slow curveball, slider changeup. Again, low, ball two. But again, he's really, and you hit it right on the head. He's kind of a miss or middle guy, so. Opportunity for, for Iowa. If, he, if he's gonna go ahead and paint edge, is great. Inside, oh, it hit him. Just nicked Seeger's elbow. And a couple of free bases for the Hawks, and they're in business already in the seventh. You're going to get hit by a pitch. That's the way to do it. Yeah, barely get a piece of it. Yeah, it really just you know, hold the zone. Hits the corner, great. But you know, he's going to he's going to be in the middle of the plate at some point in your at bat, and then that's when you want to take advantage, do damage. Nelson. See if the Hawks can hang up a big number at that point. Iowa up two in the bottom of the seventh. Strike one, low outside corner. Ooh, yeah, maybe. Kinda. Yeah, the low the low pitch hasn't been there today, has it? With the exception of that one right there. Cunning is ready. The tall right hander deals to Nelson. Outside ball one. Might have been better than the last one. Yeah. Certainly higher, right? Certainly higher. Probably equally as off the plate to the outside as opposed to down low. Mm -hmm. A spin and a pickoff to second. Didn't get him. Second baseman tried to sell it. <laughs> Show it to him. Yeah. I got him. It'll be interesting to see how many fans hang around for game two because it is not very nice outside of the booth right now. Starting to creep in here a bit too, isn't it? I've been cramped up for at least an hour. Nelson squared to bunt, pulled it back. Probably could have put that one down. It's a called strike one and two. Yeah, I'm getting a little, uh, my nose is a little chilly. Hands are a little slow, losing some <laughs> dexterity. One, two to Nelson, way outside, ball two. There's the, uh, the uh, with the read there, the blue bunny ice cream. I'm like, <gasps> just today's not the day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I'm pretty good with ice cream almost no matter what, but <laughs> maybe not today. Two, two to Andy. Oh, he swung at that pitch, it was way inside. And he's out for the first of the inning. I was so surprised he swung at that pitch, John. <laughs> 76 miles an hour and just well off the plate on the inside. Left fielder Sam Peterson. He's getting ready to call it a ball, to be honest. But one out, runners at first and second. This is Peterson. See if Sam can put one in play. Drives the first pitch, deep to right. Get going, baby! It is gone! Sammy P over the right field wall. A three-run shot. Boom! 102 off the bat. That ball went 426. Got out of here in a hurry. Right fielder barely even flinched. And that was, uh, that was, that was big. Just to restore some order. You know, even at 9-7, it wasn't... Uh, game wasn't out of reach yet but but uh, that helps put a uh, put some separation absolute no doubter off the bat of Sam Peterson and you could tell the right fielder he uh, he took one step and watched it go just like the rest of us John well he's playing a super deep right field right now with the way the winds blowing and and so inside there with the breaking ball as he glances he, he kind of knows okay that ball is way over my head i've got about two steps back yeah that's, that's not an effort that's not an effort i need to use peterson hitting his fifth home run of the season tello line drive base hit into right raider sends it on a line a three hit game for tello 
Yeah, he hit that ball hard. That was 107. You mentioned it as you were describing the uh, the ERA that gets hit a lot. Raider had had the ground out to short earlier. That was 105. You know, he he's been kind of that boy. A lot of barrels that that haven't found gaps. That one did. Reese Moore swings at the first pitch and sends a chopper foul over to the right. Reese really loves the low pitches today. It's about the third or fourth time we've seen him swing at one of those. Unfortunately, he hasn't made fantastic contact on any of them yet. I suppose if he could barrel it up, it'd be a good piece of hitting. There's a barrel that Moore finds, single to right. Yeah, that's two balls that took, uh, you know, a snap of your fingers to get out to the right fielder. Boy, they both got just laced out there. A good uh, uh, swing path, right? Just right in the, the zone of the, the path for both Tello and Moore. We'll have a brief mound visit by the catcher, Duran. Anybody getting loose down there? No, it's, it's Cunning's inning here. This is uh, going to be all him. There's nobody stretching. There's nobody moving. Uh, you know, kind of like yesterday with uh, with Golden. This might be. Uh, you're just gonna. You're gonna go for a while for us now. And and to think back. You know, it was a six to six game. Uh, in the in the fifth. Well, and the difference is what Hawkeye pitchers have done. Fastball outside. Even though, even though it hasn't necessarily been, you know, Jack Young gave up a home run. Sav wasn't perfect, but you know the four walks all happened with Cade. As Huck swings and misses, we haven't had a walk since then. Yep. Haven't had a hit batter since then. Uh, you know, you can argue whether or not you you want to make those plays with Seegers up the middle and Huxdorf, but. As far as the actual pitching itself, there haven't been free bases. 1-1 one, one to Kyle. Sharply lined foul over to the right. That's not true from, that's not true now from Western is, you know, Rosenfeld did a nice job limiting free bases, just one walk, and then Dale comes in, walks four. Now, Cunning's just got hit, you know, yep. just three hits here and a, and a hit batter. Ground ball up the middle. The shortstop's got it. He'll flip it to second for one over to first base. Not in time. Huxdorf beats that out. And Moore is out at second base for the second of the inning. We'll see Davis Kopp come to the plate. Kind of thought about sticking up his bare hand there. And then thought it wasn't hard hit, but thought better of it. We talk about several choices, right? Like, <laughs> But we say that was a choice. Typically, we say that when it's uh, not a good one. It was a really good choice that Cunning didn't try to grip that. Uh, with his bare hand. I mean, Dale, Dale will get credit for an inning pitch, one hit, but four runs, four walks, and a hit batter. And Dale, or Cunning now, having similar issues. He misses low there with three hits and a hit batter. Hasn't walked anyone yet, so I guess that's better. can really tell when he's throwing the fastball versus the off speed. Runner takes off for second. The pitch is high. It's called a strike, though. Throw down to second base, not in time. Two in scoring position now for Cobb as Huck gets another stolen base. This is fourth of the season. Twelve seven Iowa in the seventh. Cop sends a chopper to third base. Alexander charging hard, scoops it, throws the first. Got him. Good play by Alexander. Good play, and that's a that's a that's a play that uh, that 75 percent, 80 percent Davis Cop probably beats out, but gets thrown out this time. But the Hawks add to the lead. 12-7. Seven through seven. We're back for the eighth. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. 
Oakville is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hot chocolate, maybe. There, now we're talking. I don't need coffee. Hot chocolate and a cupcake or tasty cookie. I'm in. I think I think we might deserve one after today. <laughs> A little something, something sweet. I think you're you're on a roll right now with the reeds, John. This has been your career best. Your no, your season best. Oh, season best. Your season best Thank to you. this point. Finish strong. <laughs> my, my Mountain Dew has stayed cold today. I haven't had to refrigerate it. I'm ready for between games. <laughs> Aaron Savory out for the eighth. Now face off with Owen Sullivan. Sullivan 0 for three with. Three strikeouts. Sav throws a fastball right by him. Here comes the 0-1. Breaking ball. <laughs> Outside. Moore tried to frame it. Forgot the one important part of framing. <laughs> Got to catch it first. <laughs> Got to catch it first. I talked to him yesterday actually about that. That was one of the things we asked about was trying to steal strikes. 1-1 one, one is a ground ball to Seegers on a few hops. Long throw across to Andy Nelson, who's at first base now for the first out. Yeah, we did have the switch. Ben Wilma stayed in the game. He's in right field. Andy Nelson then rolled into first base. Love Andy's versatility. It lets him do all of those different things. That's right. Uh, and it looks like that's part of the kind of rotation right now. I think coming into the season, we thought, okay, Cade Moss will catch, Garen will play first base, and Davis Kopp will DH slash play first, catch, whatever you need. Uh, as Savory deals high to Palmer. Uh, but then Cade's injury took him out of the equation. You insert Reese Moore, who's been an awesome surprise for Iowa. He's done a nice job catching and with the bat. Here's a ground ball left side. Savory, oh no, Moore will pick it up fair. Throw to first base, not in time. You think Reese should have let that go foul? I think it was staying fair anyway. Right. I mean, I, I suppose you could have let it go to see if it spins foul, but... But man, I always had some. I always had some tough luck on infield singles this weekend already. If that ball were to come to a stop, John, how how many feet does it travel? Fifteen? Uh, no, it was more than that. It was at least twenty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a high chopper that was deadened by the turf. Palmer gets on on the single. He's at first base now. Savory goes from the stretch. Strike one to Slavens. Yeah, not, not a statement you say very often, deadened by the turf. Yes. <laughs> uh, but back back to the point, the, the rotation that I guess maybe I assumed or, or you and I were thinking of didn't really pan out. It's it's really on the outfield and the, and the right side. Slavens fouls it back, nothing in two, between Wilmus, Garen, and Andy Nelson right now. Well, and then even the way the season started, and, and, you know, we saw this last year too, you know, just because – just because you're not playing opening day doesn't mean you're not going to play down the road. And, you know, Ben Wilmus was was the right fielder in opening day. And then, you know, maybe it's you're going to work into the DH spot. Reese Moore kind of crowbarred himself into the lineup. Misses outside there. Uh, Andy Nelson crowbars himself in the lineup. And you kind of make it where, um, you know, hey, coach, you, you, you have to play me. Yep. And so, you know, you only have, only have nine spots, ten, you know, I suppose ten with the DH spot. So... Uh, one ball, two strikes, pitch from Savory. Fouled back again to the screen. It gets caught in between the screen and one of the pillars just to the left of home plate. So yeah, and Andy's kind of done that with, with some of the really good at-bats he's had to, to force himself into the lineup. Ben's 
been in a little bit of a cold streak, but there's no doubt he's going to come back and be get into another hot streak and a groove. And... One two is a fastball out. So you just keep sticking to it and and you know maintaining your process and doing doing good things and give yourself an opportunity when it comes up. Ground ball to Mitchell at second. Underhand toss to Seegers at the bag. Over to first base. Another double play for this Hawkeye infield. Count them up. 12-7 Hawks will go to the bottom of the eighth right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. With 11 next, the top of the eighth inning. There were no runs on one hit. Correction. Yes, one hit. No errors, and they left no one on base. The Iowa women's gymnastics team competes next Saturday on March 23rd when your gym hawks head to East Lansing to take part in the gymnastics Big Ten Championships. Be sure to follow the action on the Hawkeye Sports app. Yep. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch Catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Second baseman, Gable. Gable Mitchell will lead off the Iowa 8. It's 12-7. Hawks up five. Squares to bunt. Puts a nice one down the third baseline. Alexander charges. No throw. No play. It's the speed of Mitchell. And a perfect bunt to start the eighth. Outstanding bunt there. And, you know, for Gable, for as good a day as he had yesterday, was struggling a little bit today. So what do you do? Hey, let's shake it up a little. Drop a bunt right down the third baseline and use your wheels instead. Been waiting for that uh, element uh, to factor in the, the small ball, the, the speed game. We'll see Ben Wilmus come up now. Walked and scored last inning. Takes that one inside. He said, see if Ben can get back on track, get on base percentage, getting back up closer to 400 again. 1-0 delivery. Wilmus hits it foul over to the right. Count even at one. It, I feel like we always talk about uh, the on-base percentage when it comes to Wilmus, but that's what makes him so dangerous. That's his strength. His batting average is 216, and people will look at that and say, well, that's not, it's not great. But when you factor in the on-base percentage, that's what makes Ben so effective. 1-1 one, one is high for a ball. Well, and, you know, four extra base hits. So he's got, got some pop in the bat, certainly has some if not home run power has gap power where he can where he can drive it and then you know take advantage of his speed and, and smarts on the base paths check swing by wilmus on a hit and run and he fouled it off over to the right that was a protection swing right well yeah unfortunately you know with a hit and run you have to swing at it and so even though that pitch is so far inside and really no chance to throw mitchell out with it your job is to still swing and so mm -hmm. You do your job, he was able to foul it off, and uh, which you'd probably probably been better if he'd have swung and missed it from a, from a Hawkeye perspective, because Mitchell would have stole second. 2-2, two -two, Wilma swings over the top of the breaking ball. He's out number one. 
feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete rules and details at IALottery.com slash VIP. Well, that turned into an unfortunate sequence then for, for Ben. Yeah, gives, for, has to give up a strike and, and then uh, swings over the next one. Michael Seegers is the batter. A couple of free bases. His last two times up. Hits this in the air to right. It'll carry well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Michael Seegers with a bomb over the right field wall. Boom. See, that's the, uh, there's the wind. 89 mile an hour off the bat. Says it went 372. It kind of had to go farther than that to get over that wall, but uh, Seegers gets one up in the stream, takes advantage of it. Hawks, Hawks score the touchdown to take a 14-7 lead. A football score, John. Feels like football weather out there, doesn't it? This is like that late October 11 a.m. kickoff just across the street over there at Kinnick. 14-7 Iowa, second home run of the year for Seegers. He okay, broke the scoreboard on the other one. Yeah. <laughs> If you can figure out how to get three runs here. Yeah, it's certainly in play. Just one out for Andy Nelson. Base is empty, and we got plenty of power hitters coming up. And uh, I think the uh, Hawkeyes have discovered that let's shoot the ball over to right, and it'll go. Really have. You know, I talked about that early in the game where Hawkeye hitters were pulling some balls. Nelson pulls this into left center. Center fielder going back. It burned him, and it's off the base of the wall. Nelson crushed it to center. He's got a true double, I think. Yeah, stand-up double. 110 off the bat. Holy cow, did he crush that. Wind or not, he smoked it. Yeah, I mean, and so, all right, here's your difference again. So Michael hits, Michael hits his, <laughs> you know, Andy hits his, and it, 110 off the bat. Trackman says it goes 397. Um, which would lead you to believe that it left the park. <laughs> right. Because the dead center is 396 out there, and that's basically where Andy hit it. It did not leave the park, which tells you that wind knocked it down pretty heavily. Sam Peterson trying to match Nelson, maybe chased one out of the zone a bit. Swing and a miss. 14-7 Iowa. The, the run rule is in, in effect here today. If Iowa can get three runs... In this inning, three more, game would be over. Breaking ball, that's in the zone, and PD didn't offer at it. Nothing in two. A good bounce back pitch there. So he throws the, through the breaking ball in the dirt, then, you know, okay, hey, I got you to chase one. You're probably going to take the next one. Throws mm -hmm. it up in the zone, in the strike zone. 0-2. Oh, mm, called third strike. Peterson fooled in that at bat. He is out number two. And that's the cap tip, you know, we, we talked about with the scouting report, that's it's not what he does very well. He doesn't tend to throw breaking stuff for strikes. Uh, got a little help with that and then threw two really good ones. And I think that's just a, a testament to the confidence in, in throwing that again because usually Sam likes those, those, those are pitches that he can drive. This is Raider Tello. Downstairs from Cunning. I'm just going to call this now. If Reese Moore comes up to bat this inning, the game's over. Okay. Whoa. Calling it. I'd like to see that possibly happen. How about that? 14-7 Iowa. Two outs. Runner at second base is Andy Nelson. Try a pickoff move. Close play. Did they get him? Ooh, safe. Whoa. Debating about a challenge in the dugout. I can just see kind of into the corner of their dugout and they will challenge it wow all right this is close john this is really close perfect throw to the bag and a great tag by Hagee. and so now they'll do this little conference oh no they skipped the conference it goes straight to the review <laughs> we're, it's, uh, we're it's cold, cold. Let's we're go. cold we're skipping this <laughs> yeah. you're right we are cold let's cold. skip this yeah. let's skip all of it come on so we'll have a review down the right field line you mentioned it yesterday uh, just kind of the uh, the different lead. Andy took a, a an angled lead there. Deeper lead. Yep. 
Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City community for 57 years. Oak Knoll is conveniently located near the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. Reese Moore ending the game, unless unless Andy got picked off second. And then we'll go to the ninth, but uh, we'll see. All right, John, let's let's look at the at the bottom line on that scoreboard out there. I was scored in every inning but the second. Uh, initially, it was okay a, a two spot in the first, and then single runs in the third and fourth, and then some elevation two three three two across in the eighth. Andy's safe at second base, by the way. Starting to put more runs on the board. Haven't had the huge inning, but when you score multiple runs multiple times, it adds up. We have four innings in a row now. I was put up two plus. Uh, six innings in a row they've scored. So uh, a good run for the Iowa offense. You know, 17 hits. 1-0 pitch to Tello. Line drive into left center. It is down for a base hit. Nelson around third. He'll score. And another single for Raider Tello. Fourth hit of the game. Fifth time on base for Raider. And it's 15-7. to seven. Reese Moore, do not let me down. Oh, man, you are on the spot now. I was put on the spot with Sam Peterson when he tripled in a run uh, earlier today. Now it's your turn. I won't make you feel bad about it either way, John. I just know that it's a little chilly. <laughs> First pitch to Reese. Downstairs, he laid off that one. Now, if he doesn't get strikes, that's not my fault. Right. That that's a that's a that's a pass. It's a push. It won't. Uh, <laughs> there you go. We'll yeah. call that a push. Yeah. Will not go as a win nor a loss for you, John. Your record's pretty good. One out of more. Inside ball two. Don't chase. Don't chase here. Well, if you have to get an extra pitch, chase one. <laughs> <laughs> if it keeps the at bat alive, huh? If it keeps the at bat alive and gives me a chance. Cause... 2 0. Called strike. Ooh. Outer he, half. He was not going to jerk that one over the right field wall, so I'm glad he didn't swing at that one. Cunning lost his hat there. He's got a long uh, mullet type of flow hairstyle. He lost his hat. It ended up in front of the Iowa dugout. The flow game is good on. On Cunning. Yeah, Western's got a few of those players that uh, take good care of their their hair. The 2-1 to Moore, skip to the plate, 3-1. That's <laughs> the Troy Palomalu head and shoulders. That's right, Back yeah. in the day. I wonder if they've got a couple of sponsors. <laughs> NIL deals galore these yes, days. So come the, on now. The local salon in Macomb. <laughs> is it a Vita or whatever that is? <laughs> yeah. Three balls and a strike to Reese Moore. The pitch. Called a strike on the inside corner. Full count now. All right, John. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Building the suspense for you. Giving Reese another chance to help me out here. Reese, I set you up for the hero status here after the interview yesterday. The pitch. High and out. Ball four. Okay, now listen. I was thinking of something along the way. You said if Reese comes to the plate this inning, the game will be over. You didn't say that he would end it. Yeah. So that's true. I didn't. I, I meant that. But. Uh, right. And I, and if if he would if he would have ended it, I would have given you credit for it. But I still think you got a shot here because he did come to the plate. Okay. But Hux, maybe it's Huxdorf that that ends it. Okay. Wouldn't, Fifteen to seven in the eighth. I wouldn't argue with that either. Pitch to Kyle's low and out. Cunning now having a hard time consistently finding the plate again. Sam Peterson's asking, why? <laughs> right. Why everybody else? Why me? 1-0 to Huck. That's a strike. I think this is the windiest it's been all day now. That Penn State flag is holding on for dear life out there in right field. It's basically what forecasters were pretty much dead on here. 1-1. One, one. Outside, ball two. The, the worst part of the equation is having, you know, starting to lose the sun mm -hmm. has made it uh, uh, less comfortable. We're closing the window in between games, John, I'll tell you that. Oh, I like where your head's at. Mm -hmm. Two balls and a strike. The pitch, up and in, ball three. Deep. <laughs> 
Raider kind of tricked Reese, which fortunately nobody was too interested in back throws or anything. So yeah, Raider didn't get too far off the second base. Reese was headed there. Three and one to Kyle. Cunning is ready. Here's the pitch. High ball four. All right, now you're in a spot where Davis Cop gets a base hit, and that would end it. Yeah, I don't know. In that, the right spot. I don't know that I want to wait through uh, two more walks to get there, so I'd just as soon. Yeah. I'd just as soon Davis lace one into right center field like Gable Mitchell did yesterday and put a bow on game one here. Game has been about three hours. We'll have a 30 minute break after this one before the second game of the doubleheader. And Cunning sets at 47 pitches, just 25 strikes after Dale was 34 pitches and nine strikes. Yeah. Cop takes strike one, bases loaded, two outs. A base hit to the right spot could end it. The winning run is more out there at second base. 0 1. Cop hits it on the ground. Foul. Pass third. 0 and 2. And Rosenfeld gets a little bit of the hard luck. I mean, I know he ended up giving up six runs in total, but just three of those were earned. Uh, but really did a nice job. Filled up the strike zone. 90 pitches, 55 strikes. Walked just one. Been kind of let down by his bullpen. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch to Cop. High ball one, close. Yeah, that's a really good pitch. You know, for a guy that's had for a guy that's had a hard time locating, that's a that's a pitch you're kind of begging for. Wouldn't have been surprised if he had called that a strike. Here's the one two. Ooh, up over Cop's head. Cop did a nice job too when he ducked his head down. He also ducked his bat down, so nothing silly happened there. Mm -hmm. You see that seems like once a year something weird happens where it catches the bat behind a batter. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit in the air foul over to the right. Long at bat. That was pretty pretty predictable there after getting ahead 0-2 and throwing a couple breaking balls. You can just see the wheels turning up. I'm going to try to sneak a fastball past him. Cop wasn't quite on it. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Base hit into right. Tello scores. We're waving more. Here he comes. He will score. Davis, the deputy cop, notify the authorities. Hawks with a run rule victory, 17 to 7 in game one. Got a little scary there early in the game when uh, the fifth inning, I guess, when Western Illinois hangs the sixth spot up there, but Iowa bats just kept plugging away. Iowa bullpen came in and did a job, put up a bunch of zeros. All right, up 2-0 on Western Illinois via run rule, both games, 11-1 to yesterday, now 17-7 to in game two. We'll have a brief pause of about 30 minutes before we start the second game of the doubleheader uh, this afternoon. Let's take a, a two-minute break. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball, baseball from Learfield. Following today's first game, the teams will take a break before returning to the field for the final game of this weekend's series. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need, whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Name the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. 
nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course. Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa wins 17 to 7 in the opening game of today's doubleheader. Aaron Savory gets the win. Cole Dale gets the loss for Western Illinois. Iowa got the scoring started in the first, pushing two runs across, then got one in the third, one in the fourth, then fell behind 6-4 to Western Illinois after the Leathernecks scored six runs in the fifth inning. Iowa answered tying it up with with two more in the bottom of the fifth at six, and then the Hawks really scored the rest of the way. Three in the sixth, three in the seventh, five in the eighth to uh, walk off Western Illinois and win by 10. Some of your highlights, John. I uh, really love what, uh, uh, you know, love what the offense did. You know, you look at it, three hits, two hits, four hits, three hits, two hits, three hits, one hit. Um, Michael Seegers had a hit. Your eighth spot didn't have a hit, but uh, had a walk and scored a run. So you, know, you, you kind of had, you, you had up and down the lineup production. Um, you know, so even when you weren't getting free bases, you did it. And then, really, the bullpen did, uh, particularly Aaron Savory in this case. You know, you, you asked Jack Jack Young to come into a tough spot again. Um, got a little bit of a hard luck with the with the home run that, that blew out, but then Sav came in, did a really good job. I, I know we gave up a run on, on three hits, but you know, Hawkeye defenders had, had gloves on both of those hits that led to the run that inning, but really exactly what you needed because now you go into the second game of the doubleheader with practically your whole bullpen ready to go. Yeah, just one off inning for the Hawkeyes in that game, and that was the, the sixth run fifth for Western Illinois. Yeah, you just... Uh, you, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to read too much into this one for Cade. You know, it, it, it's a tough day to pitch. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, when Iowa gets to where they want to get to in May, um, Cade's not going to have to pitch in a day like this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not we're not going to have these. And so, um, you know, he battled. He competed. Um, you know, he he had a couple easy innings and, and unfortunately a couple more hard innings. But overall. Um, you know, there's still a grittiness to Cade that I like this year, even though he's not going to love that final line. All right, let's hear some of the highlights from the opening game winner of today's doubleheader. Three balls and a strike with two outs, bases loaded. The pitch to Cop. Line drive, base hit into left. Here comes Tello. Going to wave more. He's on his way home. He'll score. Ball gets by the catcher and over to the Iowa dugout. Runners at second and third. Two nothing Hawks. Good position here for Cade. One ball, two strikes, a pitch. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He knocks it down, throws it to second for one. On to first, double play. Six, four, three, yes. 2-0 to Moore. He drives it in the air, deep to right center. It's carrying. The center fielder's going back. It is off the base of the wall. Tello rounds third. He'll score. Moore's going to stop between second and third. An RBI double for Reese Moore. 3-0. Hawks. Rosenfeld has worked back into the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch to Peterson out with Nelson out there at second base. Here it comes. Lined into right field. This will carry well over the right fielder's head and off the wall. Peterson will bring home Nelson. Petey's round in second. He's lost his helmet. He's headed for third. An easy triple for Sammy P. And it's 4 nothing Hawks. 
First pitch popped up into right. Oh, it'll carry, though. Get going, baby. It is robbed. Did he catch it? Hold on. Hold on. Did he catch it? It's gone. No, he didn't catch it. He sold it for a second. It's a home run for Davis, the deputy cop, and we're tied at six. He had me fooled, John. 3-2. Lined into right. It is fair inside the line and into the corner. Tello scores. More crosses the plate and Hawk hits a two RBI double with two outs. Hawks lead nine to six. See if Sam can put one in play. Drives the first pitch deep to right. Get going baby. It is gone. Sammy P over the right field wall. A three run shot. Boom. Ground ball to Mitchell at second. Underhand toss to Seegers at the bag. Over to first base. Another double play for this Hawkeye infield. Count him up. 12-7 Hawks will go to the bottom of the eighth. It's the last two times up. Hits this in the air to right. It'll carry well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Michael Seegers with a bomb over the right field wall. Boom. Here's a 2-2. Base hit into right. Tello scores. We're waving more. Here he comes. He will score. Davis, the deputy cop, notify the authorities. Hawks with a run rule victory, 17-7 in game one. First pitch of game two will be at 334, so just over 20 minutes from now. We'll get you set for that one after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Our try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. Doubleheader with Western Illinois to wrap up the series. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, let's go back to uh, yesterday. Your thoughts on the win over the Leathernecks? Um, really, really good day for us uh, in all areas. Um, it wasn't the, the, the start we expected from Brody Breck. Um, you know, didn't have his, his good stuff yesterday and, and, and lost his command Um towards the end of his day, uh, which put us in a, in a really tough spot when the game was still close. And um, Jack Young came in and, and works out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam. It was pretty impressive. And we turn a, a, a really, really difficult double play uh, with a ball in the hole and Michael Seegers and, and then a really quick turn by Gable Mitchell and then a nice, uh, nice short hop pick by Blake Aaron, the first baseman, and, and I felt like that was the turning point in that game yesterday. Um, and then the, the the super positive thing was that our bullpen didn't didn't allow a free base um, after Brody left the game. And Chaz Wheatley did a great job, and, and Gannon Archer was really sharp. And uh, you know, it was just a, a really really uh, solid performance by uh, by our bullpen, and uh, that that was good to see. And then offensively, um, as we talked before the game, you know, the 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 guys that are starting against us, uh, Buell yesterday, you know, just a, a a lefty that just keeps it on the edges and uh, tries to get you to chase and tries to get you to you know to, to cave and give in and, and and induce weak contact early. And, and I thought after the first uh, time through the lineup, um, our guys did a really nice job of grinding him out and and. And putting uh, some good barrels on, we scored runs, you know, in all the middle innings. Um, 
and and had a lot of guys hit into bad luck yesterday. You know, the way the wind's blowing, it, it, it's, you know, it's tough. And we talked about it being a neutralizer. Um, you know, we would have had Michael Sears was the one yesterday. I think he hit three balls, you know, just <laughs> right on the nose. And the wind, the wind got him. And Petey would have had a home run in the first inning. And the wind got him. And just, you, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing in bringing it up is it's going to happen, unfortunately, when the wind blows like it is today. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's super important that we can be just relentless in in our focus and our effort each at bat to grind them out and find ways to get on base. And that's when we were able to break it open when we started getting free bases. And and then, uh, you know, Gable Mitchell had a big game and some clutch hits. And it was good to see... um, good to see some fall for Gable. He'd hit into some bad luck and was doing a really good job of getting on base. He's still uh, on base at over a 400 clip when his average had dropped to you know, like two, 220 or yeah. so, but he was hitting better than that and um, you know hadn't been rewarded. And yesterday, he got some hits to fall. And, uh, you know, it was just Davis Cobb had a couple good hits and you know, I was um, I was just pleased overall defensively. You know, it, it, it was like, oh no, you know, we, M- Michael Sigurds who rarely makes an error, makes an error on the very first first play of the game on a on a chopper. He, he took his eyes off trying to throw quick because uh, the runner was was fast and he he peaked and it cost him. And then um, the play he made later in that inning to save save runs uh, up the middle with a backhand flip to get the force at second was was outstanding and then an unassisted double play. And we just had some really nice defensive plays throughout the course of that game um, that um, that was impressive. And just, uh, yeah, the, the, the fact that, um, you know, our bullpen, our bullpen came in and did the job and, and hopefully built some confidence there. And, um, you know, just overall was really pleased with, uh, with the effort. Uh, really excited. John and I were really excited about about Jack and his outing. It was, you know, it was short, but it came in with the bases loaded, nobody out. And then to see him come off the mound after getting that double play, everybody was fired up. It it felt like, boom, just like that, the confidence was back for the bullpen, and then he set the tone yep. uh, the rest of the way. That's exactly that's exactly what happened. And and the good thing is that, like, the, the guys that, that were out there yesterday have been out there quite a bit lately. And, you know, the more you get out there, um, the easier it is to go uh, and play one pitch at a time like you have to. And... Um, you just seen, I seen in all their eyes, you know, they were just pitching, you know, they weren't, there was no worry. There was no, you know, they were just executing, executing the next pitch. And when you get to that point, which we talked about, it's taken us a while, but hopefully, hopefully we're there. Um, and, and we start getting some consistent bullpen, uh, strike throwing. And if we do that, we'll be, we'll be in good shape. And, you know, today, today with the, the winds even, stronger and uh, supposedly going to be close to 40 mile an hour at times this afternoon and uh, it's it's pretty crazy how you know that's a that's a factor that the pitchers have to deal with I mean it's it's not something that just affects the ball flight on a on a hit ball it's it's also affect affecting ball flight and breaking balls and change ups um, you know between the pitchers mound I was hitting fungos um, to the infielders pregame and it was blowing so hard that it was actually moving the ball uh, towards right field uh, wow. on the ground, on wow. ground balls it was moving it. So it's going to be one of those days. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks today. Uh, a doubleheader, we'll, we'll do this again. This is a more traditional doubleheader where you're going to start and finish uh, both games uh, today. The, the challenge of that, Coach, a, a quick turnaround, another early morning. This wasn't a smooth weekend like no. we were hoping for schedule-wise. No, it certain, certainly isn't. I mean, it's, it's always a test. It's a test for your toughness. It's a test. Um, you know, when you play a lot of the same guys on both games, the, the, the ability to focus for that long, um, you know, in the perfect world, you, you hope you come out and you get a great start from Kate Obermuller and he really shuts him down and gets deep in the game and we, we jump all over him and, and end the game in a seven inning, 10 run rule, which mm-hmm. would make things a lot better, but you know, best laid plans and <laughs> it never really ever happens the way you, you, you draw it up, but that would be ideal. And, uh, but if not, you know, you just have to have to grind it out every inning and every every pitch because as we talked before the game, Coach Davis has done a really nice job, he and his staff, um, with getting this team to play and play hard. And you saw that um, yesterday. And, you know, they, they came out and they played some good teams. Uh, and even with Brody's stuff, I mean, they were, they were battling and, and putting the ball in play and 
uh, you know, they have some guys who can run and, uh, you know, you catch a day when the choppers all come at the right time or the wrong time. And, uh, you know, you can find yourself, uh, you know, behind and getting beat. And as we talked yesterday, they have a closer that's uh, a, a legit guy. And you, you definitely uh, want to be on, be, you want to be ahead when you get to the sixth, seventh, eighth inning yeah. because you don't want to have to see him when he can put you down. You mentioned Kate Obermuller getting the start in the first game against Western Illinois today. Big Ten Pitcher of the Week, Coach. Uh, of the three starting pitchers, uh, Brody, Marcus, and, and Cade, were you maybe a little bit surprised that Cade was the first one to get Big Ten Pitcher of the Week? Well, not not really. You know, if you look at Cade's outings, he he, he hasn't given up hardly any runs. I mean, he's had he's had a few outings where he was was a little wild or, or had some wild pitches that got him in trouble, but he always worked out of it. And uh, of the three, he's he's allowed the least amount of runs. And, um, you know, I'm just really impressed and happy with, for Cade because he's come a long, long way. And uh, today is going to be another one of those challenges for him to, uh, you know, to have uh, the accolade, you know, voted Big Ten Pitcher of the Week, all that, you know, to go back out today and have a quality start uh, and follow it up with a with a quality start, that's going to be the test and the challenge for him. And uh, if he goes out and, and pounds his own like he did uh, last week against Jacksonville State, you know, we're, we're going to be in great shape. Um, but that's what we need him to do. Uh, when we get to the second game today, Coach, uh, Marcus Morgan will get the start uh, for you. What do you yeah. expect to see from Marcus? Just a little well, bit of a slow start to the season so far for him. Yeah, he's 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 not felt great. He's had some some stuff, you know, with his with his arm. Nothing serious. It's just not been feeling exactly right, and it's getting better. And I I feel like you're going to see um, a better version of Marcus today. You know, once he gets back, um, you know, I guess 100. percent Like I said, it's nothing. It's nothing crazy. It's just some nagging stuff that has I think really affected his his mindset and um, I think uh, they had everything checked out and he, he, he I think Marcus feels really good now about the situation and I think um, you know Jake our trainer has been doing a really good job with Marcus and our team doctors and uh, you know I don't want to paint a picture that he's been hurt because he's not it's just you know some 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 random, random, weird type pain in the back part of his of his tricep, uh, low tricep, and um, where it, it where it goes to the elbow. And uh, I, I talked to him yesterday, and I think he he told me he feels the best he's felt in a okay. long time. So um, I think you'll see a different Marcus today. I, you know, that's the hope. I mean, and and, and all of us hope that. Um, he is feeling good, and he can go out and be himself. And, and when he is, he's really, really good. And um, it'd be a good time to, to to have him have a quality start and uh, take that confidence in the Big Ten play next week. Uh, there might be uh, some folks that'll discredit uh, the win yesterday based on based on the opponent, based on the competition. But uh, coming off the field yesterday, the the team seems to be picking up steam, gaining the confidence of the complete game. How do you keep that going? Uh, into this doubleheader. We just need to keep playing. You need to, you need to find ways to win games and do it in a clean fashion like we did yesterday because um, you heard me say it three weeks ago, you know, our norm has to be yesterday. You know, that has to become the norm and our players have to hold themselves and everyone on the team accountable to that. And that's the only way you get the consistency and the consistent wins is to play consistent quality baseball good baseball um, that we weren't doing you know we were just given way too many free bases to have any chance to be consistent regardless of what offense defense or anything like that uh, it, it it wasn't uh, um, sustainable at all and yesterday um, was and and that's what we've done here for 10 years is is <laughs> It's tried to get to a point where that is the norm, and once it becomes the norm and is accepted mentally by everyone on the team, then you'll see um, you'll see it happen. But it doesn't just happen. I mean, it takes what it takes, and it takes intense focus, but also comfortable focus. And uh, we're being at home and, and um, playing the schedule we played. I mean, you need to play games, you know, that are like this. I mean, if you look at the teams, uh, every team in the SEC is playing teams like Western Illinois three of the four weekends before they start. You know, they're not playing 
uh, tough opponents every single game. They might play one series, uh, you know, one, and some teams maybe two out of the four that they play before they start conference play um, against a tough opponent. You know, unfortunately, being in the North, um, they force us to, to try to play tougher schedules because of the RPI and you have to go play on the road and you haven't played outside as much and all those things, it's a, it's a disadvantage. And, uh, you know, some teams uh, go out and things click right away and you're able to handle it and you win a bunch of those games. Unfortunately for us, uh, we just hung around that 500 mark and would have a, a flash in the pan where we would be really good and then two where we weren't. And, um, but the fact is we were playing really good teams, a lot of them. So uh, now that we're playing teams that maybe quite aren't quite as talented, um, you, that's when you need to build the confidence because we didn't get it done when we played the, the better teams, even though you know there were flashes. The consistency that we just talked about happens when you start stringing games together. And that's one thing that they're able to do down there is that they're able to get that going right away because they're playing a lot of teams that are not as good as them. Well, the confidence is, is starting to pick up. Coach, a, a good start yesterday. Let's take two against Western Illinois today. Yeah, that would be great, and um, hopefully we can get a good effort. And as we just talked, hopefully we can string a couple together today and uh, and get a, get things going. They call it a streak if you win more than two, Coach. That's Let's right. start a win streak. Get it going. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks today. We're back for first pitch right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Does your company attire make you feel like you're always fourth and long? It's time for a change. Hand the ball off to Authentic Brand and watch your team transform into MVPs. On game days, our team dresses like champions in Authentic Brand. Ensure that your company's reputation remains untarnished by using nothing but the label specifically designed to display your company's identity. Ask your supplier for Authentic Brand products and see for yourself why it's more than just a label. It's a statement. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at hy V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the hy V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the hy V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop. And count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for hy V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Let's be honest, we all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's Authentic Brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the Authentic Brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at Authentic-Brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for Authentic Brand. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pre-Game. I'm here with Hawkeye reliever Ben Dete. Ben, thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's, I guess, uh, let's start with a couple of things. One, how'd you, how'd you get to Iowa? I know you're a Central Iowa kid. How, how'd you get to Iowa City? I started at, I'm from West Des Moines originally, went to Valley High School, then started my college career at Iowa Central. Played outfield probably more than I pitched there and uh, found myself recruit here from from Robin Lund and fell in love ever since nice so you got here kind of a left-handed specialist or was a reliever and then then ran into some arm trouble what uh you don't have to tell all the dirty details but how how did that go for you yeah the first year I was here started out really well had really high hopes going into the season ran into some some arm issues here and there struggled more than you would hope and uh last last series of the season tore my ucl in the bullpen warming up for the indiana madness game um and had surgery spent spent a year recovering and uh it was it was a long haul from there so what's it like to be had you been injured before at all 
I had never had any kind of serious injury. So this is my first time actually sitting out from, from baseball for an injury. So how was that to, to not be, you know, kind of not be around your team? What, what was that like mentally? It was way harder than I was expecting. You always hear people talk about how hard coming back from injury is and uh, the, the mental wear it takes on you, but it's really hard to understand until it actually happens. And not being on the road all of last year and spending that time around teammates, it's a really hard thing to, to adjust to. And it also makes you appreciate the game a lot more. This year, it's been probably one of the most fun seasons I've ever had. And it's purely because of my appreciation from the injury. Just to be back and be ready to go. Absolutely. So you and I talked a little bit on the bus too. One of the, one of the tough parts of recovery is, you know, we always want to just be better each day. What's kind of been the ups and downs of that of, of you know, you're better than you were a month ago, but some days you aren't better than you were yesterday. How's that go? It's understanding the body really um, after you go through a surgery like that, but also just in this long season that we play, everybody experiences it. The body doesn't want to be 100% every day, and you have to learn to understand what that's like and know when to take some time off and know when, when you got to do the certain things to get your body back to that 100% because you're not going to be there every day. And you just have to, to find a way to, to be able to compete through that. Listen to some of your body signals and, and probably the injury taught you, taught you when your body talks to you to pay attention. Yeah, yeah, I think that's something that goes really unnoticed, especially in high school and community colleges are notorious for letting guys just work through things on, the, on their own. And there's a time and place for that, and there's also not a time and place for that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So you and I, you and I talked a little bit about uh, uh, golf on one of the bus trips. How, what kind of what kind of golfer? How'd you get into golf a little bit? Uh, I always golf with my dad as a kid, uh, a few times a year. But it really started with COVID. Once that COVID year hit, that whole summer of lockdown, I, I found myself working at a, a golf course and got to spend eight hours at a golf course working and then spend four more afterwards playing. Hey, don't sell Waveland <laughs> short. It was Waveland. You get That's a, true. Waveland, Waveland Golf Course in Des Moines is a great course. Still love playing that every time I go home. Um, and that's, that's really where I, I fell in love with the game and started watching more PGA. And um, it's it just continued from there. You get around a lot of the guys here golf too, which helps. And we have a, a beautiful course in Finkbine. So getting out during the season on your off day and playing some golf is always a great way to break up the baseball. So you throw left-handed. Do you swing a golf club left-handed? I do. I'm purely left-handed, <laughs> yeah, with a mad slice. <laughs> and so I've been working with John Leo, so that would be down the left field line rather yeah. than... <laughs> yeah. All right, so what else besides baseball and golf do you do for fun? Uh, big movie fan. I love watching some movies and obviously the, the good old video games. Um, but other than that, not a whole lot. Fishing was it was in my, my past a little bit, but um, just being outdoors in general is fantastic. So how do you want to take advantage of the last couple months of your, uh, of your Hawkeye baseball career? Trying to not take it too heavily is, is really what I've learned. Um, I, got, I have one more year after, but okay. this, this year... Uh, is just trying to have some fun with the boys and, and be around everybody and, and smile a little more than I'm used to. Good stuff. Huh? Hacky sack champ. You, <laughs> you come back one year, they'll never, when you come back another year, they'll never be champ. <laughs> yeah, hacky sack's my game for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Ben. I Thank appreciate you. it. Ben Dete, Hawkeye reliever. We'll be back with more Hawkeye pregame. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. 
We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to Wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, 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 coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel, good squirrel. (laughs) While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work, too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field getting set for game two of today's doubleheader between Western Illinois and Iowa. The Hawkeyes won the first game of the day 17 to 7. Iowa now 9 and 9 on the season. Western Illinois 4 and 13. The Hawkeyes put up 19 hits on the board uh, and scored the 17 runs. Drew seven walks, uh, struck out only seven times and Iowa scored in every inning but the second. Nice job out of the the bullpen on the defensive side of things and some extraordinary plays uh, by the uh, infield in particular. And then the outfielders just having to do a good job sticking with the ball as it carried through the the windy air, windy sky. Well, we talked about it early in the game about just not assuming anything as, as, you know, saw a couple balls that, Maybe wouldn't have been home runs many other days fly out of the park, and, and they got there. You saw the Western Illinois catcher catch a pop-up that certainly seemed like it was out of the park. But, you know, as you, just looking at the, the box score from, from the first game, I think the two things that, at least the one that really snuck out to me as, as maybe somewhat surprising, Davis Cop six RBIs. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, three for five, has his season average up now to, to 281. Uh, you know, you, you probably could have easily convinced me that that Petey had five RBIs. You know, where he hit the, uh, you know, he hit the home run and the triple, but uh, didn't uh, didn't have cop there. But just every yeah. time he came up, he, he came up with runners in scoring position and he, he drove them in. So really great job, great job from Davis. You know, he was in the DH spot today um, for game one, and uh, you know, again one of one, two, three, four, five, six Hawkeyes with multi-hit games. That's a great job by the by the offense. Uh, as we take a step back, John, and look at how the team is coming together in the last couple of wins, certainly heading in the in the right direction and taking care of business against a team uh, like this. Well, because go to, go to the bullpen again. Uh, again, I know there's there's two runs allowed in there, but three and two thirds innings, no walks, no hit batters. Um, so two outings in a row now. The bullpen has been um, exceptionally clean. Um, you know, which certainly wasn't the case um, through much of the first first month of the season on the road. And now we're getting set for the second game 
of today's doubleheader. The the stands, as you predicted, towards the end of game one, John, uh, <laughs> have really cleared out. I took a little lap in the concourse below. Not too many folks sticking around. Uh, probably just the the parents of the respective players at this point. Well, I think we we had some. We've got you can see it over the left field. Uh over our left of the left field wall over there that we can see the uh, the parents tailgating spot they they've they've, uh, they've redone that and I could see people if if it's me I'm going back to my car and I'm sitting in my car for a little while and yeah I, I'm I'm coming back to the ballpark but I'm going I'm gonna get warm at least to whatever level I can for a half an hour first pitch of game two at 345 moved it back just a few uh, extra minutes and we'll get set for game two we'll get you the starting lineups and get ready for first pitch of game number two right after this three-minute break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Name the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Does your company attire make you feel like you're always fourth and long? It's time for a change. Hand the ball off to Authentic Brand and watch your team transform into MVPs. On game days, our team dresses like champions in Authentic Brand. Ensure that your company's reputation remains untarnished by using nothing but the label specifically designed to display your company's identity. Ask your supplier for authentic brand products and see for yourself why it's more than just a label. It's a statement. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at hy V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the hy V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the hy V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for hy V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Let's be honest, we all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's Authentic Brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the Authentic Brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at Authentic-Brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for Authentic Brand. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth. It's officially cold. I'm past the chilly stage, John. We started the day with radiant sunshine, but it was chilly and windy. Now it's overcast, still windy, and cold. And uh, that's the, those are the conditions we'll be playing in in uh, game number two. Well, we won't be, but uh, we'll, we'll be watching, observing. I wish I were exerting a little bit more. I'd be w probably a bit warmer. Yeah, that's true. Jogging out to uh, jogging out to, to shortstop or second base would be uh, would be maybe a little warmer than what we're doing here. But yeah, we've we've even turned away from the the 
the Homer Simpson Springfield clouds that I described earlier. Yeah. They're not dark and threatening, but they're they're not light and fluffy and and big old white puffy clouds anymore. We have the uh, starting lineups for today's game, the second game. Uh, we'll start with with uh, Western Illinois. This will come to the plate first. Chris Hagee bats second, uh, bats first. He'll start at second base. Kyrie Alexander will bat second, followed by Liam Bushy and then J.R. Hevelin. Brock Loomis batting fifth. Max Slavens up to the sixth spot in game two. Seven, eight, nine. Jackson Horn, Grant Palmer, and Justin Jang. Jang into the game. He will catch for the Leathernecks. Iowa with a, a similar lineup, a couple of changes. Andy Nelson will bat first, and he'll play first base. Sam Peterson will move from left to right. He'll play right field and bat second. Raider Tello at third, batting third. The DH is Reese Moore in game number two. Kyle Huxdorf batting fifth in center. Davis Kopp will catch, and he'll bat sixth. Seven, eight, nine. Michael Seegers at short. Connor Hennings in left, and Gable Mitchell will bat ninth and play second base. Uh, the starting pitcher for Iowa is Marcus Morgan. The starting pitcher for Western Illinois is Tyler Caprin. John, we'll see Morgan first. Uh, let's talk about Marcus a bit. Well, he, you know, he hasn't been, uh, you know, hasn't been the Marcus Morgan that, that he wants to be right now. You know, with just one and two on the season, um, you know, 15 walks in 16 and a third innings. And actually, the, probably the more unusual thing for Marcus is also giving up 15 hits. So opponents are hitting 254. If you remember last year, Marcus, you know, occasionally had some control issues, although he really cut down on that by the end of the year as well. But you know, had a little bit of control issue, but teams still just hit 160 or 170 off of him, and and really didn't do a lot of damage when they hit him. Um, this year, um, you know, in addition to the 15 walks, uh, six hit batters. Uh, so he's he's been getting getting hit around just a little bit more um, after he's given up the free bases. And you know, you've kind of seen, you know, Obi was able to to limit some of the damage. You saw Brody yesterday able to limit some of the damage after the free bases. You know, walks just a a weak single uh, until you turn it into more by by giving up you know harder contact. And that's a little bit of what we've seen with Marcus with you know five extra base hits of those 15 hits as well. You mentioned it at the end of game one, John. Uh, the Hawkeyes have the full complement of their bullpen for the most part uh, available. Who are who are some of the names that you're that you're referring to out in that bullpen right now? Well, I guess you'd see uh, you know depending on depending on the situation, what you're looking for. If it was you know, if it's a dirty inning like we've seen, you know, obviously Jack Young's been used twice in that spot, but, you know, this time you're going to go, uh, I guess we'll call him the other Jack for, for this. I think, you know, you'd see Jack Whitlock come in in a dirty spot. Um, you know, if Marcus comes through a couple clean innings uh, or, you know, throws four or five, six clean innings and, and you hand the ball off, you might see like what uh, what Iowa did on, on the first Saturday down in Charleston, hand the ball to, to Anthony Watts and, and let Waddy go get, uh, you know, see how many outs he can get. Uh, you know, but then you could also go. You know, you can go situational. Then after that, you know, you could you could use Zach Volker, who could who could buy you a couple innings there, and, and his stuff is going to be really good um, with a team like this. You've got Elliot Cadu Lanou. Um, yeah. You know, the, from a left-handed perspective, that that's shown good stuff. Sam Sam Hart was warming up there at the end of of that game. Might have come in to pitch the ninth inning. Um, you know, situationally, you've got Strack, you've got Hogue. Um, you still got Reese Buter, so I mean, again, when when you say you've got you've got live arms in the bullpen, there there's a ton of them there for the Hawks. Yeah, basically uh, everybody uh, ready to roll, uh, with the exception, I guess you could say, of Jack Young and, and Aaron Savory. Yeah, you I mean, you you take you take Cade Brody, uh, Jack Young, and Aaron Savory off the board, and I would guess you've got everybody else. You you've probably got you know Chaz could come back out. For, for an inning or two, uh, a batter or two if you needed him. Uh, Arch could do the same thing. So, yeah, I, I think I think really if you're Coach Heller and, and Coach McGrath, there's only, there's only four guys you don't have available here in game three of the series. And that's the way it should be, uh, especially when you take into account uh, the, the run rule being 
being in effect and, and the Hawkeyes utilizing that. Well, and that's the that's the benefit of I mean, you know, we kind of joked about it um, between games that, oh, it didn't feel like a run rule because we still played eight innings. But the fact is, Iowa had, you know, there's six outs Iowa didn't have to get. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, whether that's, you know, pick your pitcher that comes in, well, Hogue, Dermer, any number of guys to come in to get the, the last three outs in any of those games, you didn't have to do it. And so now you've got, you know, you have that full complement available and, and able to, to be flexible that way. And now here's the, the challenge that uh, we talked about with Coach Heller from earlier. Okay, this is a doubleheader. You, you got to come, you got to come back and, and finish the deal. You got to win game two. It's, it's easy to win game one. It may be easy to win game one, but the hard part is this score resets to 0-0. Zero, zero. You got to come right back at it and, and take game two now. Right, you're not ahead 17 to seven anymore. It's it's uh, you know it's the top of the first inning again, and so you've got to got to buckle back in and and go back to having good at bats. You know, Marcus has got to buckle in and, and throw strikes. Um, so all of those things, um, you know, all of those things go back to it. You know, Iowa was really good uh, in the first game and and pretty good yesterday, but as particularly in the later innings, but but really good. Uh, really good there, scoring in what would have been six of the, the you know the last six innings, and and they got progressively better. And I think that's the that's the part about this Western Illinois team is, you know, maybe be a little bit more disciplined in early in the game because run that pitch count up, get rid of the guy, yeah. and get into the bullpen because you can score a ton of runs on the bullpen. Now my guess is, you know, Caden Kratz might be the first guy out of the bullpen this time but you know he's not unhittable it's just he's their best arm and if the game's if the game's close we're probably going to see him now because i mean you don't want to go a weekend without throwing your best pitcher yeah that would be a strange a, a strange maneuver i suspect that we'll see him as as well all right we're ready for first pitch of game two the the uniforms stay the same for Western Illinois. They're purple tops and gray pants. Iowa makes a change for the second game of the doubleheader. Strike one from Marcus Morgan into Davis Cop. Iowa with the black tops now and the white baseball pants. Iowa spelled out in gold block lettering across the chest. Still have the green baseball caps, though. Morgan missed outside, one and one. Chris Hagee leading off the game for the Leathernecks. Andy Nelson must have had to get a new hat because he's got a stocking cap on too, so get the hat to fit over the stocking cap. 1-1 one, one for Marcus. Just out, ball two. Yeah, Nelson at first base, Peterson in right. And you see he's got kind of the, the what do you call that, the ski mask or that, that kind of uh, extra face protection over there in right. 2-1, low and out from Morgan, 3-1. Connor Henning's getting the start in left field for Iowa. He sensed that Peterson's got the, the stronger arm and right. Maybe that's why he makes the shift over there. I think it's also the more difficult field today with the wind. You know, any ball hit to Connor is going to be straighter into the wind, and it'll blow just to his left hand. Morgan's 3-1, low and out. He missed basically all four of the pitches that were out of the zone were over there. And Hagee continues to be a thorn in Iowa's side. He has... Reached. Well, he reached on an error yesterday to start the game. We walked him earlier today, and Morgan walks him to start this game. You were going to mention something about Connor Hennings, John. Well, just that I, that field, the wind is going to be more straightforward there. In right field, it's it's really going to probably push it to your glove hand. Good pitch there from Marcus, and then over your head. So, um, I guess you could argue that. If a ball gets pushed to you in right field, it's not going to be catchable, as we saw in game one. But mm -hmm. uh, Kyrie Alexander's the batter, right-handed third baseman. Count even at one. First start for Hennings? First start for Hennings. First career start here in Iowa. Obviously, the son that plagued Peterson in the first game is not going to bother <laughs> Hennings right now. Morgan out of the stretch. 1-1. Low, ball two. So 
So Morgan off to a touch of a slow start. Falling behind Alexander as well, two and one. Here's a delivery. At the knees for a strike. Evening the count at two. So you suppose Marcus sat in the clubhouse game one? I think so. Some place to stay warm. Maybe, right? maybe the last half of the game. I think you could have started out here, but... Yeah, watch part of the game, but don't, don't sit in the dugout and be cold the whole time. 2-2. Two, two. Outside ball three. And I think I wonder if... Okay, if the weather was good, was he, would he be out here the whole time, or do you think he'd go mentally prepare into the, into the clubhouse? Uh, I think to your point exactly, he would have spent the first part of the game, and then however long his routine is, he would have started to get into it. Runner takes off for the 3-2. It's low. Ball four. Really pulling for a good start from Marcus. He, he needs one. It's been a... Not a great start for him this season. One and two in four starts. 7-7-1 seven, seven, ERA. He's walked 17 batters. And really, almost every pitch here has been pulled into that left-handed batter's box. Just hasn't even been, um, uh, you know, hasn't even been a ton of of close misses on those the edges. For the Leathernecks, right fielder number 11, Liam Bushy. So a couple runners on, with nobody out. For Liam Bushy. Down and in, ball one. It's a little bit troubling. Bushy's a decent hitter. 1-0 pitch is swung on and missed. There's a good strike from Marcus. 91 mile an hour fastball. Right on the outside part of the plate, up in the zone a little bit. Got away with it. Ground ball left side, that will get through. They're going to hold the runner at third base. Hennings gets the ball in, and the bases are loaded. Ooh, nobody out for J.R. Hevelin. Well, it's actually hit harder than I thought it was. I thought it was just kind of a cue ball that direction, but did get off the bat 102. Good fastball from Marcus down in the zone. Bushy did a really nice job yesterday, too. Three for four yesterday. All right. First pitch to Hevelin is a called strike. Low outside corner. Good start from Morgan. Infield stays back for the Hawkeyes. Out of the windup, Morgan deals. Inside oh. Oh. ball one. <laughs> Learning a new zone. Marcus got squeezed there. That's a good pitch. Morgan deals the 1-1. One, one. Low, ball two. Hevelin batting 292. Four doubles and a home run this year. Yeah, one of the better hitters in the squad, particularly in the lineup today. 2-1 hit him. Three free bases. And Western Illinois is on the board, leading one to nothing in the first. The mm. next batter for the Le Leathernecks, first baseman, number 20. We'll have a mound visit Thomas. from Coach McGrath, the pitching coach for Iowa. He'll head out and talk with Marcus. The bases still loaded and nobody out. Okay, baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. How do you suspect this conversation is going? <laughs> well, I mean, there's only so many different ways you can, you can say, hey, we just need strikes. And so... It's really just asking Marcus, you know, how do you feel? You know, what do you trust? What do you believe right now? Because, you know, he's been kind of all over the zone with, with 
all over and outside the zone with any number of pitches. So it's just, hey, there's a lot of swing and miss in this Western Illinois lineup. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be in the zone. What what's your what's your go-to pitch right now? One nothing Western Illinois. They've still got the bases loaded. Nobody out for Brock Loomis. Had a home run in the last game. Morgan deals. Ground ball foul down the first baseline. Got some assistance from Loomis on that. Here's the 0-1. Scooped foul over to the right. Nothing in two. Petey shagged that fly ball or that foul ball and Marcus jumped back on the mound and was pitching before Petey was back into position. Could have been dangerous, especially with Loomis's opposite field power. Here's the 0-2 from Morgan. Check swing. He went around. Strikeout for Marcus. And Loomis is out number one. I mean, I like the and that's another. Uh, I like the dedication from Marcus at that point of, hey, I feel good. Give me the ball back. And so, you know, that, that side of it, that side of it is good. Now get a 4-6-3 double play here and help yourself out. Yep. Pretty surprised that Loomis was as free swinging as he was. No. Strike one from Morgan to Slavens. That's just a, I, I, how Loomis is, huh? Well, I just think this team is... Uh, I think when you throw strike one, this team will then uh, help you after that. Fouled straight back. Morgan settling in a touch now. I mean, Heveland, 14 strikeouts, one walk. Loomis, 15 strikeouts, six walks. Slavens, 10 strikeouts, two walks. Give them an opportunity. They'll strike out. Just like that. Foul tip. Oh, cop couldn't hold on to it. Oh, I thought he had it. Yeah, too. I did too. And so Slavin stays alive. I just think back to Loomis. Why don't you? Oh, two just outside from Morgan. Good, good breaking ball. Why don't you tell him to take a few pitches? I mean, Marcus has walked two guys and hit another. And I think Loomis sw he swung at all three pitches, and I'm not sure that any of them were in the zone. So Loomis really helped out Marcus, but it got the out. Here's the one-two. Popped up foul down the line and left. It'll stay out of play. And you saw Hawkeye hitters do that early in the last game too. You know, it's like, hey, why don't you, why don't you just take a beat here? And yeah, you know, you also don't want to take away your guy's aggressiveness. You know, if, if that's part of what makes him a good hitter. One, two. He got him that time. Nice breaking ball and buried it and at the ankles. Another. Slavens Hawkeye strikes out, out and now two here. down. Bases stay loaded for Jackson Horn. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Marcus. The next batter for the leather next the shortstop number 12 jackson horn you know, same thing here just keep attacking the strike zone especially if you can get ahead if you get ahead this the strike zones are going to get well expanded ground ball foul over towards the iowa dugout to start the at bat horn did not play the first game he was the starting shortstop yesterday and so now you're you're able to get horns Strike zone maybe now to be a little bit bigger on the 0-1. Another foul ball over to the right. Nothing in two. Good call, John. And now you can get it to be a little bit bigger on 0-2 and minimize the damage of all this little adventure. Yes, yeah, you can ring him up. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Marcus going for three in a row. Here's the 0-2. Low and out. Single's going to score two because they're not holding the runner on at second at all. One, two. Called third strike. Outside corner, and Morgan froze him. And, that's another and Western high. Illinois yeah, will leave sure. the bases loaded. They do get one run. Hawkeyes will try to answer right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you.
Let's be honest, we all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. The Hawkeyes come to the plate in the bottom of the first, trailing Western Illinois 1-0. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Andy Nelson, Sam Peterson, and Raider Tello come to the plate. In the bottom of the first, they'll face off against Tyler Capron, left-handed pitcher for the Leathernecks. One and two on the season with five starts, a nine ERA, 18 innings pitched, 22 hits, 20 runs, 18 of those are earned, 14 walks, 13 strikeouts. Opponents hitting a 310 batting average. And a four hit by pitch also. So again, I, I take it a step, a step further than just you know, swinging at strikes or making him throw you a strike. It's make him throw you a pitch in the middle of the plate in a place where you can drive it. Nelson takes ball one. Yeah, so based on what you just read off, it's not too dissimilar to what you've been seeing all, all weekend, right? Right. Strike and one there to Nelson. Go ahead, John. And so just force him, force him in the zone, um, you know, don't be afraid to to get to a strike or two because you're going to have an opportunity to, to still get a pitch you hit deep in or a pitch you want to hit even if you get deeper into the count. Two balls and a strike to Nelson. Here's the pitch. Fouled off the catcher's glove. Count even at two. And we saw Garen do a good job of that in the first game today where, yeah, okay, he fell uh, in the count early 0-1-0-2 but then would battle back and either draw a walk or find a way on. 2-2 two, two is low, inside as well. Decent pitch, ball three. It's a really good pitch. Probably even more importantly, again, we've, we've seen this, we've seen this Leatherneck bullpen. Three twos outside for ball four. Nelson draws the leadoff walk, here comes Sam Peterson. There, there's one guy that's marginally scary in there, and so if you get, if you get around and, and you know, can force them into it early and the more innings, the more outs you make that bullpen chew up, the more likely you are to be able to score a bunch of runs. Sam Peterson. Both of the previous games felt very similar. Sam Peterson takes strike one outside part of the zone where the starting pitching for Western Illinois was all right. It, it, Kept the Hawkeyes' bats relatively in check, giving up a few runs, but then the second it went to the bullpen, Iowa poured it on. Now the only exception is Iowa gave up a, quite a few runs in the fifth of the last game. But other than that, every game is the, – the two games before this have felt the same. How many starting rotations in the country do you suppose go with three left-handers? This has to be one of very, very few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my guess is that I, – I, I, I would almost be surprised if you could count the number on more than one hand. Yeah, I'm right there with you. One ball, one strike to Peterson. Nelson at first base. Sam late on the fastball. One and two. And that goes to show, you know, 84 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. If you're moving your pitches around and then you spot one up well, you can get an 84 mile an hour past a good hitter. One, two. High and out. Good eye by Peterson. He took a false step towards it, but didn't swing at it. Two and two. And that was an exceptionally good pitch. Went right back to the same spot. Just moved it a little bit more to the outside. Nelson with a good lead at first base. He's taken off. The 2-2 is low and outside. Throw down to second base. Not close. Nelson with a stolen bag. Well, like we talked about in as the relievers came in uh, to the last game, you know, those pitches are hard to throw for the catcher in that one down low and away he made a good snag on it but then made a bad throw as he tried to pop up and throw it quickly so hawks with the runner in scoring position trying to get that one back three two to Petey. down the line in right it is a fair ball 
ball. It was right on the line. Here comes Nelson. He'll score. Petey, he's headed for three. Here's the throw. Safe. We are tied at one. Peterson did it again. He hit it down the line and right. And if this had chalk lines, it would have kicked up chalk everywhere. Bounced right off the line. And that brings up another interesting thing. I, but it's back-to-back -back triples in a game. I thought that was a back-to-back uh, -back games with a triple is a different stat, but it's just kind of looking up as PD tripled in the last game as well. Hawks have a chance not only to get the one back, but to now go ahead and retake a lead. Nobody out for Raider Tello. Raider was exceptional in the earlier game today, had four base hits. Also walked, scored four runs. I'm not sure what the purpose of the half pulled in infield is here. Looks a little strange, doesn't it? 1-0, low to Raider. Yeah, you're, the, the corner infielders are playing even, maybe a step in front of the bag, but it's the middle infielders that are a little bit surprising to me, John. Is the same to you? or? Well, the, yeah, they're, they're the ones that confuse me because Raider's either going to hit it past them. 2-0, uh, popped up. Right side, this could be trouble. It's heading over towards foul territory, and it will drop in foul territory. It was playable, but Heggy couldn't get there in time, and the wind just kept pushing it. Raider gets new life. And that's a ball. The second baseman has to help out his first base. The first baseman has no chance on that. He's running full speed backwards. The wind's kind of blowing it over, over his head and over his right shoulder. Second baseman's at least trying to track it and follow it. It's still blowing away from him, but it, he can see the angle better. And I think he just got worried about the wall there, took kind of a false step or two. 2-1 to Raider. Low, ball three. But yeah, I, you know, to me, when you pull the infield halfway like that, you take him out of normal defensive position, and I still don't think you're going to get a guy like Peterson at the plate then for being back that far. Yeah. Here's a 3-1. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. Peterson will score. Raider drives him home with a single. And to your point, John, you know, I don't think that with the infield playing back, they would have made a play on that. But uh, at their current, the reality of where they were lined up, they certainly weren't going to make a play on it. Yeah, they had no chance with the rolled in, uh, you know, semi rolled in infield. Now, most teams don't play Raider to pull, so it wouldn't have had him shaded up the middle, so they probably weren't going to make a play, but Hawks have a chance here to just keep adding to a pile. 2-1. Iowa with the lead. More swings at the first pitch. Pops it up down the left field line. This could stay in play. It will, but Alexander cannot track it down. That was a long run for him. It's unbelievable Foul ball. how fast that ball just stops moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> the it, was like, it was like a bird flying into the wind. It was just going nowhere. It was flapping, but it wasn't going anywhere. The momentum of that ball, it's like, okay, that's out of play into the bullpen. Well, nope, it'll get into those bleachers right there. No, it just landed right in front of the short <laughs> wall there. Yeah, it hit a, it hit a force field, just stopped. <laughs> no balls in a strike for Reese Moore. The pitch. Fouled it back. He hung with it. That was a breaking ball. And he hit it foul straight to the net. Joke with those. Like you hit a, again, go back, going back to golf, you know, you hit a wedge shot up in the air that, uh, that blows and you hit it into the wind. And by the time it comes down, it's coming back at you. 0 oh, 2 to Moore. Rip down the line and right. It is foul. That, that uh, got out of here in a hurry. That'll say hi to one of those uh, university trucks parked over there. Yeah. Probably not suspecting a, a ball all the way over there, but today you are. Here's the 2 Low and out. Good discipline. Tello takes off for second base because Jang bobbled it, and Raider will slide in to second base. Might have been an interesting play if Jang picked it up the first time, but he kind of whiffed as he tried to Tried to quickly roll it up there. Didn't look to see how Jang throws really well. Here's a one-two. Low. Ooh. Jang's having a little, a couple issues. A little bit of trouble bringing the ball into his mitt. That one was just low and he, he had dropped it. <clears throat> two balls, two strikes to Moore. 
Low and out. Ooh. Right around. Capron not getting any expansion of the zone. So we're not we're not gonna do the low zone today. All right, fair enough. How low can you go? Well, not that low. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta really be about at the kneecap. Yeah. Below the kneecap's not good. Three two. Low again, ball four. That one just a beat lower. And more walks. Yeah, if the first two pitches didn't work, a little lower is not going to get it done for him. That's a good umpire right there. You know, it's a consistent so, line then. Yeah, those were, he was he was dead solid on all those. First four Hawkeye hitters have made it to base. We'll see Kyle Huxdorf come to the plate, right-handed hitter, center fielder for Iowa. Two on, nobody out. Two to one Hawks in the first. Huxdorf sends a chopper to second base. Sidearm flip to second for one, over to first base. Not in time, Huck frustrated. Missed that one. Runners at the corners with one out. Yeah, he got that 85 mile an hour fastball in the zone. And just, uh, you know, again, maybe instead of, instead of trying to go over the second baseman's head or, or you know, more to, more to the right side, ended up just kind of trying to pull it a little bit. And, Pounded it into the turf. Davis Kopp with six RBIs in the earlier game. Stands in with a chance to bring home more today. First at bat of game two. Takes fastball high and tight. No, more got thrown out at second. He can bring in Tello. Yeah. Ah, good one. S see what I did Good there? one, yes. 1-0 to Kopp. Low. Two balls, no strikes. That'd be yeah, kind of a nice day. Get the three-run home run to add to the total. Sure. Get him up to nine. You're going for the for the big shot, John. Runner takes off for second. Line drive. Base hit into right. On the hit and run. Tello will score. And because of that, Huxdorf gets to third base. Davis Cop, have yourself a day. Line drive that nearly killed Hux. <laughs> it probably would have taken it would that ball would have taken Huck with him. Would have left it. Left a giant exit hole. That was 106 <laughs> off the bat. And Huck had to turn around and kind of find it then because he knew he hit it. And he's like, all right, where'd it go? I heard it sizzle past. <laughs> yeah. Felt the draft. <laughs> so yeah, so another RBI for Davis. Hawks added to the lead. Nice job there. Here's Seegers inside. Backed him off the plate. Ball one. Just one out in the inning. Three runs, three hits for Iowa. I mean, this is right where Iowa left off last game, was just you know, piling up crooked numbers here. So just keep going. Don't let Western think there's any chance of, of winning this game. Line foul over to the right. Not many made it back from the uh, no. mid-game tailgate. No, the uh, heat map. It's all huddled together in the middle of the bleachers <laughs> over to the right. <laughs> One ball and one strike to Michael. Eh, we'll try a throw over to first base. I can't see down the left field line, John. Anybody down there? There's some. Because honestly, I think that would be the better side to watch from today is, is maybe the wind goes over your head a little bit and doesn't just hit you flat in the face like it's going to over on the first base side. 1-1 one, one to Seeger. Squares to Bunt. Bunts it. Foul. Quite a few folks sitting in the section right below us, right underneath us. Not a bad spot. Those are your reserved clan, too. Yes. I don't know if they still do the yellow stickers here for the... Yep. 1-2 to Michael. Off-speed stayed away. Ball two. This game is already off to a longer start <laughs> than the previous two. The kicker is Iowa has hit the ball around a little bit. Where well, I guess there's still two walks thrown in there, too, so... Here's a 2-2 pitch. Ground ball right to the second base when this will be trouble. On to second for one. Over to first. Wide throw of the bag. Seegers takes off for second base. He'll get there easily. Huxdorf scores on the backside. 4-1. to one. Cop is out at second base. So Seegers will get an RBI on the ground out. You can't assume the double play. And then he'll take second on the throwing error. And we'll see Connor Hennings come up now. The next batter for the Hawkeyes, left fielder, number seven, Connor Hennings. And yeah. 
This is high there. Anytime you're at 34 pitches in an inning right now is where Capron sits. That's uh, that's too many. Anybody uh, up in the pen? Nobody down there at all. Hennings, right-handed batter, swings and fouls it off. I mean, I would assume they have to plan on three, four innings. Regardless of almost how it goes. I mean, just based on what you see, they don't have, even when you look at the stats, you know, a lot of teams will have, oh, that guy's got seven, that guy's got six. You know, they don't have tons of guys with a lot of appearances. We saw Telford yesterday. Um, you know, Greenan's the guy we haven't seen yet that, that has a lot of appearances. Kratz, obviously. One ball, one strike, the pitch to Hennings. Hit in the air, down the line and right. That'll be foul. Hennings is a junior from Morgan Hill, California. Met his parents yesterday. That was kind of fun. Great. Had a chance to, Connor was a pregame interview a while back and talked about driving in from California. Had a really nice fall and uh, pretty productive in those in those contests. He's such a good athlete. When when all the pieces click together for him, um, he'll he'll be able to really be a productive productive piece. Yeah, good strong frame. Here's a two two. Hennings skies it down the line, and foul and out of play over to the right. Four runs across for Iowa in the bottom of the first. Good answer after surrendering a run in the top half. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Seeger's out there at second base. The pitch to Hennings. Swing and a miss. Good change up from Capron, and Hennings is down on strikes. 4-1 Iowa through one. We're back for the second. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that, too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Center field with number two, Brad Palmer. Top of the second inning. 8, 9, and 1 coming to the plate for Western Illinois as Grant Palmer drives this to right and over Sam Peterson's head. Off the wall, Palmer digging for three. He's going to have a triple. You put Petey in right, the, the veteran outfielder, and even the wind tricked him. Yeah, he charged that one and just didn't realize how much carry that ball was going to have with the wind still pushing it out there. Didn't hit it that hard, just 86 mile an hour off the bat. Um, but again, ha had the extra, had the extra carry, and it's just part of uh, part of playing on a day like today. So now runner at third, nobody out for Justin Jang. Catcher for Western Illinois. Looked good from Morgan, but didn't get the call. We have a small strike zone so far in the game for both pitchers. Low and out, ball two. Infield stays back for the Hawkeyes. Fully back. Not in, not 
a modified version. <laughs> Nothing, John. They're playing the the uh, normal depth. There's a strike from Morgan, two and one. Well, you'll certainly trade an out for a run if you're Iowa at this point. Low and in ball three. Boy, we're pulling for Marcus, aren't we? We are pulling for him to bring it together in the second inning. 3-1. Off the end of the bat, foul in the air over to the right. This is where you just, you know, in the first inning, Marcus did a nice job of, of you know, not having full composure and command, and but then buckling in when he needed to. 3-2 is low, ball four. And now you need to you need to do it, yeah. I think PD would tell you he should have caught that ball. He'll catch that ball, you know, 85 times out of 100. But now, if you're Marcus, you can't compound it. You can't walk a guy and get to the top of the order. You know, a guy with what two plate appearances on the season? Three plate appearances. You know, it's one for two. But and now you roll you roll to the top. So, and the top of the order has been a problem. Uh, for Western Illinois, this is Heggy walked and scored in the first. Runners at the corners, nobody out. First pitch strike from Marcus. That's the start you're looking for. I'm just gonna say, look, if you got it in you to beat me, great. But you know, here it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna fill up the strike zone, and and you know, he did a great job of that in his first start. Strike two at the knees. It might be the first time any pitcher's been ahead of Heggy this <laughs> in this weekend series. On base percentage, nearing 500, he's at 468. Before the 0-2, try a pickoff move over to first base. Morgan comes set, ready for the 0-2. Here it is, outside. I think right now, I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, you know, of a waste pitch when you're struggling for command as it is, but. And considering the pitch count already quite high for Marcus. One, two delivery, check swing. He went around, he went around about 75%, comes up empty, finally got Heggy out. Really good job there from Marcus, good battle back. And now you put the double play in effect, although, as you've mentioned a couple times, Alexander, quite a bit of speed. Yeah, he laid down a great bunt yesterday, so Raider might want to stay on his toes here, just even if it's not a sacrifice bunt. First pitch strike from Morgan. The off speed, high part of the zone. Runners remain at the corners for Western Illinois. One out. Morgan takes his time, ready with the 0-1. Blooped oh. into right. Peterson was playing deep, and it drops in front of him for a base hit. Ooh. Sam will come up firing and whip it home, but it will be late. In fact, cut off by Nelson. Actually, Four to two. Actually had a chance at second base with a force out there. Yeah. Runner was... You know, kind of caught. You know, he couldn't go too far because Petey wasn't very deep, but yet he needed to get off first base. So he was kind of in a, if Petey catches it, he can throw it behind you. If he doesn't catch it, he can throw in front of you. 71 miles an hour off the bat. Marcus with a great pitch. Just finds a finds a hole out there because Petey has to play so deep with the wind. We'll see Bushy now with runners at first and second. Four to two, one out. Boy, the the sound of the ball off the bat for Alexander there sounded like you, you took an empty pop can and and squeezed it and crushed it. <laughs> and I just, man. Strike one to Bushy at the knees. Bushy's been a relatively tough out this weekend too. Yeah, had a couple of hits off of Brody yesterday. Morgan's 1-1 one, one delivery. Ground ball, diving stop by Gable Mitchell. He'll throw it to second for one. Over to first base is late, but what a stop by Gable. That was uh, that was the one you kind of got back. You know, okay, you, you don't get uh, 
you don't get the help from the defense on the first play, but boy, you get picked up there as that ball was sharply hit. Gable stayed with it, short hopped it, made the play. And now you've got a chance again to kind of minimize some damage here and just get out with the one run. Two outs for Heveland, the DH. Morgan deals slider out. Four to two, Iowa in the top of the second. A lot of runs in this series, especially today. Lined into right, base hit off the end of the bat. And it's four to three. Runners at the corners once again. Boy, 69 miles an hour off the bat. <laughs> I just, Marcus has thrown two really good pitches and, and, uh, and given up singles on both of them. That pitch is low and out, and Heavlin basically threw his hands at it. Didn't necessarily commit to a fully, you know, a full entire swing and just shot it over to right, four to three. But that's where, you know, okay, the, you know, the triple is, is one thing, but then you follow it up with a walk to the bottom of the order. And... Luma swings and misses. It's part of the order that Morgan struck out. We know Loomis likes to expand his zone, so. I don't think he's swung at a strike this game. He's made them all strikes. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball, he took the strike. 0-2. Oh Morgan's got the sign for the 0-2. Cop setting up a little bit low and out. Here's the pitch, just low. Good spot from Morgan, just missed, one and two. Yeah, that's a really good pitch, particularly the way Loomis has, has had a larger swing radius. Bring it up just a touch. One, two from Morgan, in the dirt. Cop knocked it down. Iowa has Mitchell, Nelson, and Peterson coming to the plate in the bottom of the second. A one-run lead right now, 4-3. to three. Morgan comes set, ready for the pitch to Loomis. Here it is. Ground ball to third. Raiders got it. He'll step, he'll throw. Good grab by Nelson at first base for the third out. A couple runs come across for Western Illinois. Iowa 4, Western 3. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments. The proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Number 75, Nebraska, 4-2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Well, it's been a shootout so far, 4-3, <laughs> to three, Iowa at the lead, bottom two. Gable Mitchell in the box first. The switch hitter will go from the right side. Second baseman, Gable Mitchell. And the pitcher is Capron, left-hander. First pitch to Mitchell, high and out, ball one.
He will slice the 1 0 pitch foul over to the right. Mitchell batting 283 on the season, 430 on base percentage. And when he leads off an inning, he's 421. Here's a 1 1. Low for a ball. Okay, you know, I track the I track game scores for Iowa's opponents. You, know, you kind of watch. There's a website. You can see how it affects your RPI, yes. what happens. 2-1 to Mitchell. Line foul over to the right. So Ball State, an Iowa opponent earlier in the year, got beat by Bowling Green 34-8. to Whoa. 34-8. to What was the biggest inning? How much did they give 14 up? 14 runs in the eighth inning. Eight runs in the sixth inning. Gable Mitchell goes down swinging. They scored 17 runs in the last two innings. So even that, okay, 34 minus 17. Yeah, it was 17 to 7. <laughs> then it became 17 to 8 oh after Ball State scratched one back. The next batter for the Hawkeyes. <laughs> Did you see that coming when you were out there? Did you see that from Ball State that they could give up 34 runs? Uh, no. But, you know, the thing with those weekend series like that, ooh, is we only see one pitcher. You know, so we only see the one we we don't see. Hey, how did how did you wear their bullpen out? Yeah. Top of the order for Andy Nelson. Count even at one for him. Now I would guess it is just Saturday. So. Pop fly right side that will go out of play. Yeah, maybe it was like what we saw. He's get a position player or something pitching because it. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of give it up, give up the ghost there. Here's a one two. Dropped low, count even at two for Nelson. Anything else stand out to you? Any other good scores that, I know it's really early, so we don't want to talk about helping or hurting, but uh, just something to keep track of. Old Miss won again, helped out Iowa. Who are they playing? Uh, number 20, South Carolina. Nice. Yeah, they've good. taken taken two or three, showing that uh, Swayze Field is a tough place to play. 3-2, Nelson hits it sharply to second base. And Heggie will throw it to Loomis. Two down. All right, so that's good. You know, it's something to monitor, though, as the as the season goes. Okay, we need Ole Miss to keep winning. We need, you know, Auburn and Virginia. Need them to keep winning. Stuff like that. Teams like that. Northern Illinois won. Lehigh run ruled. St. Peter's. I think Georgia lost yesterday to Kentucky. Yes, and they're losing again today. Don't love that. <laughs> Well, much about Kentucky baseball. We need Georgia to keep winning. Here's Sam Peterson with two outs, bases empty. Popped up foul. How to play down the right field line. And kind of the point earlier that we were talking, there is nobody down in the Western Illinois bullpen. This is this is Capron's deal for the foreseeable future. And he's you know, he just crosses the 50 pitch. Mark here in the bottom of the second inning. 2-1 to Peterson. Line drive and foul in right. Painted the line the first time, just missed it that time. Yeah, Capron gave up four runs in the first. Done a better job in the second. 2-2 to Petey. High pop-up. Down the line in right. Moving over is the right fielder, and he will make the catch right in front of the half wall in foul territory. Boy, that was a risky play by Bushy because he sort of just reached out with his wrist exposed and made the catch. Iowa goes down 1-2-3 in the second. Leading 4-3, to three. we're back for the third after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, nice. which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. 
proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Ooh. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM College Sports Radio 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. Marcus Morgan returns for the third inning. One run lead deals a first pitch strike to Max Slavens, left handed hitter. 0 1 from Morgan is low for a ball. Congratulations to our pocket challenge winner. Breaking ball high and out. Ball two. Saw Marcus start the game that way too, where he jumped out strike one. You're like, okay, this is good. Line drive, fair ball. Inside the right field line, into the corner. Petey picks it up. He'll throw it in. Gable Mitchell cuts it off. Leadoff double for Max Slavens, who is batting 069. That's his third hit of the season. You just feel for Marcus right now a touch. Hmm. Well, but that's the next batter for the Leathernecks. Yeah. You, you do, but Rock it's top, it's Jackson it's self-inflicted. You yep. just you have to get ahead. You, know, you you take a guy that's not a very good hitter at, to this point in the season, and you let him you let him get ahead in the count. Now he can jump on a pitch. A bunt attempt down the first baseline by Jackson Horn trickles foul. I and mean, that's the fifth hit, the second extra base hit. Horn struck out looking to end the top of the first. Morgan deals in with a breaking ball. Strike two. He must have been bunting for a hit. I would have, wouldn't have been, I suppose you've got some guys coming up here, but wouldn't have been real surprised to maybe see him try to move him up, get him 90 feet away with, with one out. Ground ball right back to Morgan. He tried to barehand it. It goes off his hand. He'll step and throw over to first base in time to get the out. Woof. Use your glove, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, I, I think he recognized that it, it really wasn't coming very fast. Now, 56 no, miles an hour is still fast enough if you don't if you don't get it right on a cold day like this. But did a good job there. Kept it corralled enough that he could go over and and pick it up and make a good throw to first and get that first out. Runner had to stay put at second base too because Marcus did a great job to go look at him, make sure hey you're not going anywhere. Here's Palmer, tripled and scored back in the second. First pitch strike. Morgan taking his time, the 0-1. Slider low and out, count even at one. Okay, we've got Connor really shallow out and left. Huck shaded toward right center field and not very deep. And then Petey standing on the wall. <laughs> right. Isn't that something? <laughs> Interesting alignment through all of them. It's like a straight line from, but it just depends on the angle where you start at over and left. One ball, two strikes to Palmer. Morgan deals way outside, ball two. Tell Marcus just a little bit frustrated, He's trying to figure it out. But when he misses, he... He's visibly irritated. Yeah, and when he misses with that, with the fastball, he's just been overthrowing it, you know, just pulling it out into that left-handed batter's box. 2-2, Two -two, brought it inside, just missed. Great pitch from Morgan. Boy, just, just a bit inside, and boy, the strike zone has been very strict so far. 3-2, ground ball up the middle. Who's going to make the play? It's Seegers. Long throw to first over to Nelson. Safe at first base. Mitchell and Seegers crisscrossed. That is a pretty amazing play from Seegers, though. 
to make that, to, to be able to field that ball after Mitchell flashed in front of him. Hawkeyes will go ahead and review it. I think he was safe, but Hawkeyes will ask for a review anyway. Marcus flashed his hand up at that one too. We'll have the uh, little conference and go review it. Yeah, the the pre-conference before the two head off to review. I think I'm with you, John. I think he's safe on first look. We don't get a second fire. look, so <laughs> that's yeah, all we can go on. Best we can do is trust my uh, trust my old eyesight from here, but I I'm calling him safe on on uh, the live look. Maybe Coach Heller figured, heck, we paid for this technology. Why let the other team use it all the time? Yeah. Hopefully it's not frozen down there. Four to three, <laughs> Iowa in the third. Western Illinois with six hits off of Marcus Morgan. They've drawn a number of uh, walks, too. Marcus trying to regain his, his footing, get back on track. Was a dominant pitcher last year for the Hawkeyes, and and uh, that came middle to the end of the season, right? That uh, is not how it started out. Yeah, the Big Ten part of the season, Marcus was outstanding. He, he struggled early in the year, got got taken out of the rotation and, and brought in in relief and uh, you know showed he was worthy of the spot and, and then really worked as he's called safe at first base. The call has been confirmed. The runner is safe. So runners at the corners for the Leathernecks and one out. Tying run 90 feet down the line at third. That's a couple hits for Palmer. That... The next batter for the Leathernecks, the catcher, Justin Yang. So Jang, who walked and scored just an inning ago, he mm -hmm. comes up. Watch a bunt here. Yep, and he does square to bunt. It went down into the turf and then came back up and hit off his bat, so foul ball. you got to be quick about flashing signs now. We talked about that now. See, I don't know why the pitch clock isn't running. Right. It should be going. That was Our that guy's was, on the mound. That was why Coach Heller didn't want to be in the third base dugout or third base box anymore because he didn't have time to do that. 0-1 skipped in the opposite batter's box. Great stop there from Davis Cobb. Right now, we should be rolling. Guess, do we need to double check when that clock starts? When it's both guys ready in position? No, it should. It, it, that's it, that can't be because you just the clock would never start then until the batter you let the batter dictate the at bat, and that's right. There, there's a uh, there's an inconsistency as to how the pitch clock is applied and starts. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Good spot. Strike two, low in the zone. Good snap to that. And I know the first pitch of an at-bat is different than later on in an at-bat. But... See if Morgan can get a strikeout. Long pause. The 1-2. Poked foul. Right field and out of play over towards the Jacobson building. Good pitch from Marcus there. Breaking ball off the plate. Jang did a good job going out and fouling it off. Short leads by both runners. The next pitch hit on the ground right side. Mitchell, long run, dives, makes the stop, throws to first base. Got him at first base. Run scores on the back side. We are tied at four. But Mitchell gets a big time play there to get the, the second out and holds that runner at second base. The next and needed the, the out the there. Second baseman, Chris now, if you're Marcus, you needed the kind of needed the swing and miss. And, you know, instead of uh, instead of Iowa putting the pressure on after that first inning and making sure Western Illinois didn't want to play anymore, we're tied at four. Morgan deals a strike to Heggy. And this is the third time that Heggie's seen Morgan. We are in the third inning. <laughs> Morgan, 
0-1 pitch outside. Six hits, four runs for Western Illinois. Committed one error defensively. Iowa has scored four runs on three hits. Morgan deals the 1-1 outside and low. Two one, ooh, missed just low and out. Oh man, three and one. Just no, no zone expansion at all. The ball's right at the knees. Just not getting a call on it. I mean, Marcus has done some of this to himself, and boy, have they hit some cue shots right into good spots on him. Get some help there as Aggie swings and fouls it back. I mean, a couple singles last inning that were. 60 to 70 miles an hour off the bat, an infield single this inning. Three, two, line drive over Gable Mitchell. Another run will score, it's 5-4 Western Illinois. God, I said just, just as I said it, that's a good pitch from Marcus. It's probably ball four. And instead, he swings at it and hits it 71 miles an hour and just loops it over Gable Mitchell's head. Right now, Marcus can't catch a break. He will not have an opportunity to get another as Coach Heller is out of the dugout. And the Hawkeyes going to the bullpen in the third against Western Illinois. 5 4 Leathernecks will take a pitching change break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game, family. Friends, we know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, 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 coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel, good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Five four. Western Illinois has taken the lead in the third. The Hawkeyes will go to the bullpen. New pitcher into the game for Iowa. It's a right-handed junior from Cumming, Georgia, Jack Whitlock. One and two on the season in seven appearances. A 10.80 ERA. Ten innings, 12 hits, 12 runs have all been earned. Seven walks, 10 strikeouts, five extra base hits allowed too, including two home runs and hit three. So very unlike Jack Control. Uh, but the last two appearances have been much better, including a, a really good outing. Uh, right. Georgia. At Georgia, yeah, yes. Yeah, at Georgia. So, and, you know, nice nice for him, too, being the home state, you know, a little extra pressure, and he came out and handled all of that well and, and did a good job. And, you know, comes into a spot here where you, you really want slash need the, the series sweep, and now you're behind. And need need uh, probably... Probably multiple innings out of Jack to get it done. Yeah, I know. I have to be careful when I ask that because I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to presume that Jack can make it to his maximum. But man, you you need help getting through the fifth now at this point, at least, right? Out of Jack, if well, he's got that in the tank. Kind of joked with you a couple of times about you know let's let's do one inning at right. a time first. But but yeah, he threw he threw two plus innings um, Tuesday, and now here we are on Sunday, so he's on good rest and. Hawks don't play again until Wednesday with Grandview before we go on the road. So, Runner at first base for the Leathernecks. That's Heggie. This is Alexander in the box. Whitlock deals. Grounded foul. Seven hits, five runs for Western Illinois. Three hits, four runs for the Hawkeyes.
Short lead at first base. Whitlock comes set. Here it is. In the air, down the right field line, and out of play. Nothing in two. Iowa has a good part of their order, order coming up. Tello Moore, Huxdorf. In the third when we get there. Trailing by one now. The 0-2, here it comes. Outside. Ball one. What's been really interesting about this is Iowa pitchers have done a better job in the zone than they've done when they get out of the zone. Western Illinois, for whatever reason, has hit a bunch of little cue ball, ground ball shots on, on pretty darn good pitches. <laughs> but Iowa's gotten a lot of swing and miss in the zone. One hopper to Tello. He gloves it. He'll make the long throw to first base to retire Alexander and end the top of the third. A couple more runs, and Western leads it 5-4. to four. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Oaknall is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknall is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknall.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. Iowa trails Western Illinois in the bottom of the third. It's 5-4 Leathernecks. The Hawkeyes <laughs> being out hit 7-3 now. Get another look at Tyler Caprin. It'll be Tello, Moore, and Huckstore. Let's pause 10 seconds for station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, here comes Raider Tello. He'll lead off the Iowa third. Hawkeyes have trailed briefly today in this game and the first. And Tello will take strike one. But responded all, but both of the previous two times have responded right away. Right. The left-hander deals to Tello. Swing and a miss. Tried to catch up to a fastball out of the zone it was high and Raider went for it no balls two strikes oh cool. two catches the outside corner strike three well I saw it he saw it come and saw the break tried to follow it and it clipped the outside corner one out for Reese Moore the designated hitter Reese Moore Lefty on lefty matchup. Reese rips it into right. Base hit. Right fielder tracks it down, makes a scoop stop on the bounce, and Moore is held to a single. Good connection from Reese. 102 off the bat. Speaking of good connection, he just turned on that breaking ball right in the middle of the plate, stuck with it the whole time. He's just string together good at bats. You know, just keep, keep having good at bats. That was not Raiders' best. Pretty good first pitch swinging from Reese Moore there. We'll see Huxdorf now. Swings at the first pitch and just missed the slow 71 mile an hour pitch on its way in. Hit it foul over to the left. Yeah, but you're seeing, kind of seeing that first pitch swinging again. The sample size or the, the sampling from the earlier game and then yesterday would. Uh, back up what you're saying, John. Be patient and get a much better pitch to hit than the first one because the first pitches that Iowa hitters have seen this weekend have not been great. They've been strikes, but they, you know, they've been in spots that are not warranting a ton of success. Huxdorf takes downstairs, ball two. Yeah, just looking through this game, you know, Huck swung at the first pitch he saw in the first at-bat, grounded it up the middle. He was fortunate to beat it out. 
Two balls and a strike to Huxdorf. The pitch hit foul over to the right. Kyle tried to jump on that high outside delivery. So guess what I'm doing? If I look around, I look through this game, I was one for two with a foul ball swinging at the first pitch, so not as bad as it feels, I suppose. 2-2, two -two. stayed outside, away from Kyle. Full count. Davis Kopp on deck. Capron comes set, stares at Reese Moore at first base. He takes off. The pitch hit well to left. Left fielder moving back. He will make the catch in front of the track, and Moore has to sprint back to first base. Yeah, that's 104 off the bat. Any other day, the the uh, the hawk outside the wrestling facility is making that catch. And, yes, um, that is long gone on any day other than today. But unfortunately, that's the only day we're playing. That is. The catcher, Davis. All right, here's Davis Cop with two outs in the Hawkeye third. Runner at first base is Moore. Iowa trailing five four. The pitch to Davis. Stayed high. Cop one for one today. Singled in a run in the first. Takes a ball below the knees. 2-0. and oh. Moore with a decent lead at first base. Capron ready, 2-0, catches the outside corner, 2-1. Again, that's a strike. At your, the first strike you see, not the best one, hopefully, for Davis. See something better. Right, and you can't really do anything with that one. 2-1, hit on the ground is short. Bobbled, juggled, and the scoop to second base, not in time. And that'll be an E6. Boy, that was in... That was an easy play, an easy flip, and kind of over oh, two. Kind of, yeah, kind of bobbled both of them, and now now you got to make that hurt. I mean, that's you know, you, that, that's how that's how a team is four and thirteen, and you know, and, and you make that hurt of you know they should they should be out of this inning, they should have the lead, and their pitcher should be sitting in the dugout. And Michael Seegers needs to do some damage here. Runners at first and second. Michael takes up and in ball one. Yeah, I went back kind of through yesterday's game. Iowa was, was, I think, 5 of 10, 5 of 11 on first pitch swinging, so maybe I take it back. 2-0 to Michael. Hmm. <laughs> We're okay doing it. It didn't feel like that, and it started cold, and Iowa got better as the game went on first pitch swinging. Are, are you saying, you're saying, what, 5 out of 10? They had got hits. Got hits. Okay, so in terms of average. Yeah. So I thought you were saying whether they um, – Swung at it or not. No, so that was actually successful completion of got doing it, it. Got it. Two and one to Seegers. Iowa down one in the third. Find some green out there, Michael. Two one. Mm, breaking ball buckled his knees two and two. A really good pitch there. Doesn't have a huge amount of break. You just have to stick with it because it's going to loop back in, especially the slow one. Capron set with the 2-2. Michael flares it to right. Right fielder moving forward. He's got it, out number three. Hawks leave two. We've played three at Banks this afternoon. 5-4 Western Illinois with the lead. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales.
Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day healthcare needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, we'll see Jack Whitlock again. Whitlock faces 3 4 5 in the Western Illinois fourth. Down 5 4, John. Uh, first, uneasy again. First time on the weekend that Western's batted with a lead. There you go. Yes. Didn't really have an opportunity all on Friday. Run rule victory for the Hawks. 17 to 7 earlier, Iowa, but it was tied in the middle of the game. At six, giving up a few runs early. Five four in the fourth. Whitlock versus Bushy to start the inning. Whitlock out of the windup. He's ready. The first pitch on its way home. In there for a strike. Good start from Jack. Bushy with a good weekend, lots of uh, lots of hits so far. Rips this down the line in right, and it is fair, right on the line. Peterson picks it up, gets it in. It's a leadoff double. Where did this Western Illinois team come from? Boy, that was really good. Did not uh, that ball is inside. That's a good pitch. Jack threw the cutter right on the inside part of the plate. And to be able to swing and hit that and not hook it foul uh, is, is really pretty impressive. And another runner in scoring position. They've had 13 in scoring position, and we are in the fourth inning. 13 at-bats already? Yep. Cool. 13 opportunities. Here's J.R. Hevelin. First pitch ball. Whoa. Called the ball. Must have been too high. Had to have been, but geez, it's like I said, there is no there is no extra grace on the on the edges of this strike zone today. Jack deals down Main Street, one and one. And again, I'll, part of that makes it even more important that Iowa stop swinging at those pitches because mm -hmm. they're not getting called strikes right now. 1-1 one, one is outside from Whitlock. Hevelin uh, up over 300 now, batting average 306. Rips this foul by a couple of inches down the line and left. That would have been trouble. Boy, that was tight. You know, sometimes that's the... Uh... You know, the way the game plays out is, you know, you get, uh, you know, you're on the wrong side of every coin flip. Iowa wins that coin flip there as that ball just barely missed foul. Probably by about the same margin that that other one stayed fair to yep. start the inning. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out in the fourth. Whitlock comes set. He's ready. And he fires. Called third strike. There it is. Front door breaking ball. Hey, how you doing? Got that one into the part of the zone that umpire was comfortable with. I don't think Hevelin's seen that pitch too often. No, 29 inches of horizontal break. And you know, now here with Loomis, you don't want to leave this out over the plate or just a little outside. That's the one he was able to drive earlier. At least get it down low if you're going to do that. Whitlock fires outside. Hard fastball from Jack. Just missed. 
keep you honest fastball from Jack. Sure. <laughs> Runner at second base is Bushy, 5-4 Western Illinois in the fourth. Pitch from Whitlock. Strike called, upper outer portion of the plate, one and one. Yeah, that feels like the danger zone there. You don't want to, now that you've shown it, I don't know that you want to go to that exact spot again. Stay away from that area. Whitlock deals the 1-1. One -one. Fastball swung on and missed. Wind isn't quite as hard as it was earlier, maybe. Gusty? Yeah, it's gusty, and it's blowing straight out to right now. 1-2. Here it comes from Jack. Foul tip. Did Davis catch it? He did. There's a strikeout. So Jack stays away from the junk on back-to-back -back pitches and gets a big strikeout. Well, I think that was part of, uh, part of as you look at the, the scout there on, on that one, is just trying to make sure you, you don't leave one and, you know, Fastball up and spin down. You just don't want to leave that spin up. That's the not good combination. The danger zone. Two outs for Slavens, left-handed hitter. Strike one from Jack. Thought for a moment he wasn't going to call it, John. Was, <laughs> we were going to have to talk if he didn't. <laughs> Quick chat with him. Yep. Whitlock set with the 0-1. Jack fires outside off the plate. Ball one. He's actually, you know, again, we're hassling him a little bit. The strike zone's been very consistent. Yep. It's just not very big. Very small. And so, but, he, but he's, he's stuck to his guns on all that for both pitchers, or all the pitchers, all three of them. 1-1. One, one. Fouled off the end of the bat over to the left. One and two. And I think that's something to take note of offensively for Iowa. Now, if the zone's going to be just a little bit tighter, maybe, you know, tighten your zone, your wheelhouse with it. Yes. Again, you know, especially when you start thinking about what the pitchers look like with the, the miss or middle idea to it. One ball, two strikes. Whitlock is ready. He pitches. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Cop will apply the tag. And, and don't worry about five. throwing it down. Three strikeouts for Jack Whitlock in the inning after allowing a leadoff double. 5-4 Western Illinois leads. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey, it's your friend, social media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Bottom of the fourth, Western Illinois leads 5-4 in the series finale. Connor Hennings, Gable Mitchell, Andy Nelson do up for Iowa. Hennings struck out in the first. He'll get his second look at Capron now. The Hawkeyes scored four in the bottom of the first, haven't done anything since. The left Went down one, two, three in the second. Had a couple of base runners in the third, but nothing to show for it. Hennings, a right-handed batter. First pitch, ground ball left side, past a diving Alexander at third, and Hennings leads off the Hawkeye fourth with a base hit. Good connection. He jumped on that fastball. John, you can add that down to your tally of uh, swinging at the first pitch and getting a base hit. Now Gable Mitchell comes up. He'll bat from the right side against Capron. Possibly thinking about a bunt here, Gable. He squares, bunts it, and it hit off his arm after he bunted it. Foul ball. 
Couldn't get out of his own way. Decent lead at first base for Hennings. Careful over there, Connor. A one. Mitchell hits it on the ground, up the middle. Shortstop gloves it. Flip to second for one, on to first, double play. Six, four, three. And the leadoff hit by Hennings is erased on the double play by Western Illinois. Nelson. Top of the order for Andy Nelson, two outs. First pitch breaking ball, low and in. Andy reached on a walk in the first, grounded out in the second. Has seen a pair of pitches miss the zone in his third attempt. 2-0. Takes low inside as well, ball three. Sam Peterson on deck. See if the Hawks can get to Sam in this inning. Opportunity to give Iowa the lead, trailing by one. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike right down the middle. Capron has settled in after a rocky first inning. Out of the windup. He'll step off the backside of the mound, restart the pitch clock. A little confusion on the pitch selection. And looks like uh, it already used their already used their time, and so Capron stepping off with a few seconds to spare uh, turns out to be a ball awarded to Nelson, and so he'll walk and bring up Sam Peterson. We will see Sam. Iowa down one in the fourth. First pitch to Petey inside ball one. Looked good breaking ball. Didn't stay over the middle of the plate long enough. Raider Tello on deck. Like to see him try to get an at bat in this inning. PD needs to keep it alive. Iowa with five hits. PD swinging for the fences and touched it foul over to the left. Sam batting 380 on the season. One for two today with the run scored in an RBI. Tripled back in the first. Throw it over to first base. Nelson gets back without a dive. One ball, one strike, two outs. Quicker move over to first. Nelson has to slide head first back into the bag. Capron out of the stretch, comes set. Another move over to first. A couple of the throws have been wide of the bag, forcing Loomis to come off and grab it. But they're really worried about Nelson taking off. We'll go again with the 1-1. Here it is. He does take off. The pitch is outside. Throw down to second base. Not in time. Very good throw by Jang behind the plate. He let that rip. The pitch was way outside. He put it right on the money. Two balls and a strike now for Peterson. Runner in scoring position. That's Nelson. Could tie it up with a base hit. That was an outstanding throw from that location. Here's a 2-1. Swing and a miss. PD chased it. Needed the pitching wedge for that one. Down even at two. A lot of room on the right side for Sam. Capron comes set, checks out Nelson at second base. Here's the pitch. Ground ball foul over to the right. That one caused Mulfleur to move a little. Yeah, he kicked up his right foot, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, it was definitely minimized movement. But... Iowa down 5-4 in the fourth. Trying to tie it up. A base hit from Peterson would likely do so. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. 
Called third strike. Beautiful pitch from Capron. Came in the back door and froze Peterson for the third out. 5-4 Western Illinois. We'll bring you the fifth after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. All right, we're in the middle innings now. Top of the fifth. Western Illinois has scored in three innings today. One in the first, two in the second, two in the third. Jack Whitlock held him scoreless in the fourth, which earns him another attempt at the fifth inning now. You know, Western Illinois, they've got eight hits. They left seven on base. Could be doing more damage than they've already done, leading five to four. Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, they left 11 runners on base the first game. You know, and so part of that is, you know, the free base traffic. This game has just been more, you know, they've created more hits and done more things on their own this game. 7-8-9, Jackson Horn to lead it off. Swings at the first pitch and missed it. Whitlock deals. 0 for 2 today. Again, 7-8-9, not great averages, but uh, they've been able to get on at times today. Here's the 0-1, just outside. Horn laid off. I mean, to your point, Western Illinois in this game has had 17 at-bats with runners on base. Mm -hmm. 16 at-bats with runners in scoring position. Quite a few uh, extra base hits, too. Two balls and a strike now as Whitlock fires outside. Yeah, they've got three extra base hits. They've done a good job getting the leadoff runner on base. 2-1 from Whitlock. Call to strike inside corner. Enough break on it to bring it back in. Count even at two. You know, Iowa hasn't done a bad job. Three for eight with runners in scoring position. Just struggling now to create traffic and get that two out hit. 2-2 two -two grounded to Tello at third. He fields it fair. Throw on the run. Not in time. Again, boy, just <laughs> hate to say it. It's kind of one of those games right now with Another infield hit on a chopper. The good pitch from Jack. And turns a turns another infield single ball that probably wasn't hit. Sixty miles an hour off the bat, and it's another base hit. Nubbed over there to third. Just nothing Raider could do either. You can't bring the you can't bring the ball to your glove any faster than that. Can't really make a stronger throw, I don't think, on the run, which was necessary. Strike one from Whitlock to Palmer. It's one of the few times we've seen the strike zone expanded down. Yeah, that one caught the bottom bottom portion of the zone. 0-1. Oh, Again, chopper to second. Mitchell, he's got it. He'll throw to second base for one. That's all the Hawkeyes will get. It's a good job, though, to get the lead, the lead runner on a ball off the bat at 62 miles an hour again. And, that goes back to the point that you made in game one, John, of uh, it doesn't look like, and we're not trying to knock them or anything, but it just doesn't look like they swing that hard. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I haven't seen this on Trackman very often. The distance traveled on that one was one foot eight inches. That's that's a low. That's, that's a season low, career low. You're not going to get much shorter than that. 
in the history of TrackMan data collection low. <laughs> One out, runner at first for the Leathernecks. They lead at 5-4 in the fifth. Whitlock ready. Runners leaning at first base, just gets a good lead. This is hit into right center and going to be trouble. Huxdorf tries to track it down. He dives, can't come up with it. All the way to the wall. They'll send the runner around third. He'll score. 6-4. Jang smoked it to right center. So based on the throw, I just saw him throw. The now, <laughs> what, two hits and a walk? I've seen him contribute with two RBIs. How are you keeping this guy out of the lineup? No idea. He's got to be in there somewhere. He's got to be your DH. He's got to be your first baseman. He's got to be your catcher. Any of it. I mean, if you only have two catchers, you probably you can't catch one and DH the other. That'll cause you a different problem. But hmm. Now I was down by two. It's 6-4 in the fifth. Runner at second with one out. Fouled back to the screen. This is Haggy, top of the order. His fourth plate appearance of this game. Well, at least we waited till the fifth inning to get it. We broke, we broke that rhythm. <laughs> it's not trending in a good direction. Whitlock ready. He deals the 0-1. Outside. Evening the count at one. Hmm. This game has a funny feel. <laughs> There's nothing funny about and, it, yeah, really. Yeah, not one of the not one of the good funny moments. One one from Whitlock. Fouled back. Nine hits for Western Illinois. About halfway through the game. Hawkeyes will have Tello, Moore, and Huxdorf coming to the plate just like they did in the third. Here's the one two. Inside ball two. Great pitch from Jack. Again, that's just no, no edges of the zone at all. The ball's pretty much got to be in the strike zone to be called a strike. Not on the edge. Way outside from Whitlock there and in jeopardy of. Walking Heggie, full count. That'll put him in normal company with nearly all the rest of our pitchers this week. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Whitlock taking his time. The full count pitch. Flared foul over to the right. We'll clear the grandstand. We'll do it again. Jang, the runner at second base. Good lead out there. 3-2 from Whitlock. Line drive, base hit in the center. Huxdorf picks it up. They're going to send the runner. Here comes the throw. Nelson cuts it off. No play at the plate. 7-4 Western Illinois. I'd have to, go mm. back, have to go back and see what the notes were from that first game. But, you know, for a, for a guy that came in with a batting right, average of under, third baseman, uh, Higgy's batting Alexander. average was 262, uh, dropped down to 250 after game one. He has been uh, outstanding around the plate and, and just good bat control. Yeah, just not a, not a batter that was, I guess, totally on the radar coming into this. It was fair, it was okay, but really doing a nice job. Whitlock starts Alexander off with a strike. Hagee has been hurting the Hawks. 7-4 well, we, in the fifth. We talked earlier about you know how Iowa just, you know, man, you're just hanging one, you're just hanging one. And this is going to be trouble. Hit in the air to right. Peterson's back. And it is a fair ball home run. And it's nine to four. What in the world is going on? Just poked at it. 92 mile an hour exit velocity, but hits it right down the line and gets it out of the ballpark. Big time trouble in Iowa City. Nine four in the fifth. And 
And for Alexander, his second home run of the season, just inside the foul pole, down the line and right. The next batter for the Leathernecks, right fielder, Liam 11 Bushy. hits. I'm sorry, 12 hits. 12 hits for Western Illinois. I mean, I know this feels gigantic, but it's not. I mean, it, it's it's still extremely gettable with conditions the way they are and with what we've seen from the Western Illinois pitching staff. You just it's going to require good at bats. It's going to require guys focused in on what they're doing and making a comeback. And so far, it's playing to Western Illinois' plan because they've been able to save their their star reliever, and he, he's probably a couple innings away from coming in, but Iowa's going to have to do some damage and chip closer and into this one. Otherwise, it's going to be a world of hurt as we get later into the game. Coach Heller's out of the dugout. He'll take the ball from Jack Whitlock. Call to the bullpen is being made. The door opens up. We'll introduce the next pitcher right after this. 9-4 Western Illinois in the fifth. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel, good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Iowa turns to redshirt junior, the right-hander Zach Volker from Granite Bay, California. Eight appearances on the year. He has a save. Eight ERA, nine innings pitched, ten hits, eight runs have all been earned, five walks, ten strikeouts. He's given up four home runs, so it would be really important to keep that ball down a little bit. Uh, Any time Iowa pitchers have elevated, especially here in this game, Western Illinois has just kind of gone with the pitch and poked it out to right field. Man, 9-4 Western Illinois in the fifth. Not something uh, expected we'd be saying after a couple of dominant wins for Iowa in the first two games of the series. Now you're backs against the wall a bit. Plenty of time, but you, know, you can't, you got to start chipping away, and it starts with finishing this inning with no more runs coming across. There's runs to be scored. I think you could you could hazard a guess that nine might not be enough to win it. So Volker finishing his warm-up tosses. And his first opponent will be Liam Bushy, a left-handed hitter. Haven't been able to uh, keep him off the base pass today. He's got a couple of hits. Reach on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Volker, the right-hander, toes the rubber. He's set. Bases are empty with one out. Pitch from Zach. Inside, ball one. I did see it was Colton Kaczynski down in the bullpen warming up for the Leathernecks. Here's the 1-0 from Volker. Ground ball foul over to the right. Yeah, I wonder how much uh, Capron has left. Said a nice job for Western Illinois. After giving up four in the first inning, I thought it would be smooth sailing going up 4-1, but Western Illinois has not quit. Again, the Hawkeye at bats gotten shorter as the game went on. Flip-flopped, right? Where at the beginning of each of the first two games, they were short, and then the adjustment was made, and they piled on the runs. But since then, it's gone the opposite way. Inside from Volker, ball two. Kaczynski, at, I'm sorry. Uh, Capron at 84 pitches, 
just 48 strikes. I guess that might fall into the more effectively wild. 2-1 fouled over to the left. What do you think? Are you going to see him come out in the in the fifth? I was just trying to look real quick and see what, uh, if I could pick up what maybe his. Volker ready out of the windup. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball right side. Nelson waits for it. He'll throw it to Volker covering the bag. Two down. <laughs> Raider Tello was charging into the dugout. Fortunately, he stopped and made it look like he was uh, uh, just ready to play the next. <laughs> he's going to lead off the Iowa fifth, so he's probably excited to go hit. Capron did throw six innings against St. Louis, threw five and a third against Eastern Kentucky. That was 102 pitches. So uh, Safe to say he's probably their best starter. Maybe not by record, but he... Yeah, but you know, Northern Kentucky gave up He's a ground ball up the middle. Seegers has got it. He'll throw it over to Nelson for the third out. Northern Kentucky threw an inning, gave up six hits and eight runs with, with five walks. Yeah, that would be so his, his worst performance his, by far. His last two starts had been um, poor. Mm -hmm. And, boy, that's a nice bounce back for him today. 9-4 Western Illinois. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch Catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Iowa being out hit 12 to 5, more importantly being outscored 9 to 4 in the bottom of the fifth. Plenty of time, Raider Tello comes up to lead off the, the inning for the Hawks. We do see Capron. Breaking ball for a strike on the outside corner. Oh, come on now. We haven't done that all game. That's brutal. And that was that was a breaking ball, so it started even further outside. Raider lines this into the corner and right. Base hit. He rounds first, headed for two. Here comes the throw. Tello is in with the leadoff double. Good start to the fifth. Just made Raider mad, so he laced the ball out into right field. Good start to the inning with a line drive double right to the Nike swoosh out yes. there on the right field wall. Tello with the second hit of the game. We'll see Reese Moore. He's reached both times today. Left-hander on left-hander matchup. Heck of a day for Raiders. Six hits on the day. He's had a nice weekend. A a bounce back weekend for him. Whoa, throw to second base. Right on line with it and looked like it was going to hit him in the back of the head. Iowa down five, but like John said, seemingly manageable. One pitch at a time. Moore pops it up left side. This is going to be an easy fly out. Stop swinging at the first pitch especially at this portion of the game. You're just prolonging his outing. I, I sense that that was his part outing, of... His outing's over. <laughs> sure, but I, I sense that was part of the message from Coach Sutherland in the in the gathering on the right side of the first baseline was, you know, maybe an adjustment, maybe a little change, and it didn't happen there. Mound visit as it stands right now. I don't know if they're going to the... I think Kaczynski bullpen. was ready. 
But we saw this earlier where I thought, okay, the lefty will face the lefty and he'll be gone, and then he wasn't. So maybe he's just going to talk to Huck or talk about how they want to handle Huck's door. Because he's not throwing, trying to get a couple extra warm up pitches in right now. We'll break out the break up the mound visit. Iowa down five with Tello at first at uh, second base with one out. Kyle better not uh, swing at the first pitch, right? <laughs> The next batter for the Hawkeyes, center fielder, Kyle. Capron is at 86 pitches, nearing the very end of his outing. First pitch to Huck. Took it for a strike. Nothing in one to Kyle. The pitch, high and out. Ball one. Again, that's that. It's not completely in the zone. He has tended not to call it other than the first pitch to Raider there that was off the plate. 1-1 mm -hmm. in the dirt, ball two. Good job. Not swinging the bat. Make him come into you. You can afford to fall behind 0-1. Make him throw you three strikes that are... Great pitches. Here's a 2-1. Huck fouled it off. That, that's borderline if that would have been called a ball or a strike. Yeah, I think Huck thinks he missed it, but that's not uh, not as in the zone as he thinks it was. And that ball's probably a ball but on today's strike zone, the second game strike zone. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Tello at second to pitch to Huck. Swing and a miss. Chase to pitch in the dirt. And now, in jeopardy of stranding the leadoff double. Brings up Davis Kopp. Four runs for Iowa in the first, nothing since. Fallen behind, 9-4. Feels like the old Miss part of it, where you, know, you get, get guys out there and then haven't been able to, haven't been able to follow through. Right. Iowa 0 for 5 with two outs. See if, how Kopp answers that. Davis is one for two in this game with an RBI. First pitch, breaking ball outside, ball one. I know it's easy to say sitting up here, but boy, just <clears throat> do not expand the strike zone. The umpire zone is small. Cop takes down the middle for a strike, one and one. If he can throw that pitch, though, I mean, it was a little bit lower and inside. If he can throw that pitch three times, okay, then you eventually have to swing at it. But first time you see it, that's a hard pitch to do anything with. Here's 1-1. One, one. Chopper gloved by the pitcher. Capron will throw it over to first base. That'll do it. Raider Tello gets a leadoff double, and Iowa goes down quietly after that. Cannot bring him home. Still 9-4 to four down as we head to the sixth. This is Hawkeye baseball from their field. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. 
9-4 Western Illinois in the top of the sixth inning. Game two of today's doubleheader. It is the series finale. Iowa has already won the series, but that's not the main objective for Iowa this weekend. Really need a sweep of the Leathernecks and at risk of not accomplishing that goal. Down by five in the sixth. It just kind of goes to the, the difficulty in baseball of beating a team three times and particularly when other factors you know weather those types of things start coming into play got 12 outs to score it's mm -hmm. not uh, certainly not a lost cause Zach Volker will pitch to Brock Loomis ball one low and out and he can't give up anymore yeah you need you need zeros here and um, you know, good job by Western Illinois there to validate their four runs. 2-0 and oh, out of the hand of Volker. Boy, I was just looking at Kaczynski's left-handed too, so. All these left-handers. Impressive array of left-handed pitching. Assume that he'll be coming in shortly. 2-0 pitch from Volker's high, ball three. Four pitch walk. Boy, four pitches that weren't even weren't even teasers to to make Loomis want to think about swinging. And this is this is just the part of uh, baseball, I Thanks guess. You could be so hot all around. Uh, er, earlier today, it's, you know, that's how the the first game went, and the game yesterday, the Hawks looked great, and now falling short on both sides of the ball, both the offensive and defensive side. Yeah, this wasn't even like Jack State where it was 20 runs on a night and then oh, high strike there and then you have to come back the next day. This is the same day. This is within 35 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, you're you're kind of thinking that, hey, we'll just we'll keep strolling it together. You score four runs in the top of the first. And you're like, man, that's seven straight innings we've scored in. Line drive, foul over to the left. Volker way out in front of Slavens. Nothing in two. And now four straight innings you haven't scored, but even more importantly, four out of five innings Western Illinois scored, and three of those were, were multi-run innings. 9-4, mm -hmm. Leathernecks in the sixth. Here's the 0-2. High and out. Ball one. Long pause from Volker, the one-two, chopped right back to him. He gloves it, he'll throw to second base for one. Over to first, double play, one, six, three. That is a really good turn. That's not an easy play for a pitcher to pivot like that, particularly standing on top of the mound. You don't always see good throws from there to the second baseman or, or the person covering second base. In that case, it was Seegers. Seegers came across, threw a great ball then to Nelson. Turned an easy double play. Throw it to the bag, right? That's what you got to do. And Seegers was coming across from shortstop and made a strong throw over to Nelson at first base. Go with the seven hitter, Jackson Horn. Two down, base is empty. Volker fires in the dirt. 1 0. Oh. Ooh, inside, almost hit him. Ball two. Now you just get that big momentum building play. Come back and throw strikes here, Zach. Again, just the kind of some of the hard luck of this. I'd have to go back and, and chart it through through track man, but 2-0 from Volker line drive over a leaping Gable Mitchell. Base hit into right center. Two out single. And that's at least one of them that, that will disprove my theory a little bit. But 13 hits now for Western Illinois. And you know I'm not sure what the over under would be on the average exit velocity of those hits but it's not very high no not not relative to to what you would expect um, you know there haven't been a ton of well hit balls that one was 91 and that's one of the the better ones 
Folker out of the stretch, deals. This is a high pop-up, right side. Mitchell moving back into shallow right. Peterson is there. Sam makes the grab for the third out. All right, got to get the bats going. Down 9-4. to four. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Name the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. The Hawkeyes have seen the last of Tyler Caprin. The Leathernecks are making a pitching change. They'll go to a right-handed redshirt junior from Peoria, Jacob Greenan. 1-0 on the season, seven appearances with a 9.39 ERA, seven and two-thirds innings. He's only given up five hits, but eight runs have all been earned with 13 walks on just three strikeouts. Opponents only hitting 208 against him, but of those five hits, three were extra base hits. Fastball is going to be a little harder than what most of the guys have thrown for Western Illinois. He'll be right, just be, sit just below 90. He'll have a changeup and a slider. Um, but again, really struggled to command any of that. So Iowa's got to go up, look fastball. If he can throw anything else for a strike, it's a full on cap tip at that point. 13 walks and three strikeouts. Those are the two things that I need to know. Right. It, it, it tells you he's not going to overpower you with his stuff, even if you're behind. So, again, kind of that that uh, that take theory of, of making him throw a strike uh, because he, he's eventually either going to miss over the middle where you can do some damage to it or he's going to miss often enough that you'll be on base anyway. Michael Seegers will lead things off for Iowa down by five in the sixth. I don't suspect that he'll pitch for more than this inning or the seventh, right? Uh, maybe two. I give him six outs max, and yep. you'll see Kratz. Um, and so again, and Kratz is their guy. I mean, we've noted we've noted that they've got a really good reliever in their bullpen. Kratz is that guy. Yeah, the reason we keep it's talking about O63 ERA and seven appearances, Shortstop, four Michael saves. You know, a ton of strikeouts. 16 strikeouts in 14 innings. So, I mean, but he is hittable. Here's Michael Seegers. Takes up and in. Ball one. And, you know, you get a pitcher like this who struggles to command his fastball or any of his off-speed pitches. You get an umpire that has had a smallish strike zone all day. Patience. Skipped it to the plate. Ball two. I haven't seen anything resembling a... Swing worthy pitch from Green and yet. Hennings on deck, followed by Mitchell. Two balls, no strikes. Green and is ready. Here's the pitch to Seegers. Low, ball three. Red light. And Michael is. I don't know that they even have to send that one in to Michael, as he's pretty much on top of. Uh, the baseball IQ anyway. Green and fires. Strike low outside corner. Three and one. Might even consider taking again unless it's right down the middle. Here's a three one. Low. Ball four. Lead off walk. There we go. Because again, that ball Yesterday, first game today, is probably a strike. Mm -hmm. It's at the bottom bottom of the knees. It's kind of touching the edge of the zone. It's been called a strike in those two games. Hasn't been called at all today in the second game. 
Now, Connor Hennings, I think you start with a red light, like a, an actual call, not uh, if it's close. I think you just start red. First pitch to Connor. Takes it for a strike. Low inside corner. That certainly looked red. He didn't look like he was He was just kind of timing it up, ready to go. Didn't look like he was going to rip at it. And, and that's ground ball city, isn't it, if he does swing and make contact? You would think so. Seegers at first base, the 0-1 to Hennings, way outside, ball one. And and that's why you take it is, again, how many times is he going to dot that spot up on you as he tries to throw the breaking ball there and misses two feet to the outside? Michael with a good lead at first base. They'll check on him. A couple of wild throws over there. Loomis had to make a good play on that one. One for two today for Hennings. Singled back in the fourth. One one. Ooh, hit him. Hit him in the shoulder. And Hennings will jog down to first base. Now we're going. Now the Hawks are rolling. I think he might be going too. Look down to the bullpen, and that was quick. <laughs> Greenan is done. Kaczynski will be the guy. New pitcher coming in for Western Illinois. We'll take a pitching change break. Leathernecks lead at 9-4 in the bottom of the sixth, but two on and nobody out for Gable Mitchell. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need, whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Bottom of the sixth inning, 9-4, Western Illinois with the lead over the Hawkeyes, but the uh, but Iowa is threatening with a couple of runners on. New pitcher into the game is a freshman, left-hander from New Lenox, Illinois, Colton Kaczynski. 0-1 oh, on the season with six appearances, a 7.50 ERA, 12 innings, 16 hits, 11 runs, 10 are earned, five walks, nine strikeouts. Opponents hitting 314 against him with eight extra base hits, including... Three, uh, yeah, including three home runs. Fastball is going to be mid to slightly low 80s. He's going to have the, the change up and the slider as well. Uh, but again, you know, I feel like a broken record saying this. Sprays it. You know, so you're just going to have to make sure you see strikes. Now, Gable coming up. Gable will pinch hit or will switch hit. So he'll hit from the from the right side. Uh, so he'll, he'll but he's going to see more fastballs won't see as much of the off-speed stuff from the right side particularly with runners in scoring position you might try to change him up do you think about button if you're gable you've got enough speed where maybe you could turn it into a hit opportunity gable's 0 for 2 today and he has grounded into a double play maybe um you know if, if depending on where they play you i would i would think that they might be aware of that as well mm -hmm. um, you saw him do that uh, kind of get himself started last game uh, where he laid down a good bunt. But, you know, trust yourself. See what you see what you think. You could push bunt one, but, you know, typically on with first and second, you're going to bunt toward third. But in this case, with a left-hander falling that way, you've got room to push it to the right side. You got the top of the order coming up after Mitchell. So this, this really... <laughs> just needs to be a big inning for the Hawks if they're going to come back and win this game. Down by five in the sixth. Corners are in against Mitchell. Right-handed batter. Kaczynski's ready. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Mitchell stands in. They'll try a pickoff move to second. Seegers was all over it. 
and he's back in without a slide. Almost got him. <laughs> Michael was standing at the bag before the ball ever left the pitcher's hand. <laughs> Credit the Iowa dugout to be calling out for Michael to get back. Could see it coming with the creeping second baseman. The pitch to Mitchell. He squares to bunt, pulled it back, strike one. And with the way they have Gables played defensively, kind of pinching the middle a little bit, first baseman's in. He's got a lot of room to bounce one through the right side. See if the bunt sign is still on for Gable. Here's the 0-1. Way outside, almost to the backstop. Good snag by Jang, and it's 1-1. One and one. Yeah, I think the bunt was maybe the show, see what the defensive alignment was, how they were going to move. You know, Hennings has good speed, too, so you could play some games if you really wanted to. You're down five, though. Right. Long pause. The 1-1 one -one fouled back to the screen. Mitchell missed it. Right on a fastball, right in the middle of the plate, just slightly elevated. And again, that's the uh, difference in a day. Yesterday, that was a... That was an RBI single in the gap yeah. for him yesterday. Down on the count now, one and two. Nobody out. Two on for the Hawks. Kaczynski ready. Fires. Breaking ball way high. What an outstanding catch there. Holy cow. Yeah. He jumped up and then turned and contorted his body over to the right to make the grab. Two balls, two strikes. We kind of joked about that with Juran with... There were a couple of those balls he just didn't even make efforts at. No, not with guys on base, but a couple of those balls he didn't. That would have been the ball he just let go. 2-2 <laughs> two -two to Gable. Low, blocked by Jang. Full count, and this is a big pitch coming with Andy Nelson in the top of the order on deck. Gable's got to stay true to his zone. Stay true here, Gable. Full count. Kaczynski gets the sign. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Runners take off. Fouled off. Kratz is warming up now in the bullpen. They're desperately trying to milk some outs before they get the ball to him, but they may, be, they may have to make an executive decision that uh, best laid plans don't always follow. Mitchell trying to protect the zone with two strikes. Full count pitch from Kaczynski. Here it is. Fouled back again. Now if I'm Western, Michael's getting a good secondary lead off after a first look. If they tried that inside move and the second baseman broke in behind him. Trouble, huh? Could be. Although he could just go ahead and steal third. At Michael would have to take well. off. He'd have no choice, right? <laughs> He'd just have to go. Another full count pitch on its way home to Gable Mitchell. Here comes the 3-2 to Mitchell. Long pause from Kaczynski. Delivers Ball four. Outside. Bases loaded. Nobody out. What an at-bat there from Gable Mitchell after falling behind one and two. Fouled off a couple decent pitches. Stuck with it. Was able to work. Ball four. Top of the order, Andy Nelson. Andy's been on a couple times with a couple of walks, so plate discipline has been his his strength. Take, 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 Andy. Let him throw you a strike if he has to, if he can. Bases loaded, nobody out. Iowa down by five in the six. First pitch to Andy. Outside, ball one. Yeah, look like with Mitchell there. Sometimes you foul those pitches off. Sometimes you ground them off, ground out softly. Fouls them off instead. Is able to work the walk. Hawks have something cooking here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The 1-0. Low, ball two. Just, that was close. It was close, but it was down. And, and again, even based on that one doesn't even touch the bottom of the zone. So based on what we've seen so far, that was that's not a pitch he's going to call. Missed on a few in a row now, the 2-0 delivery. Outside, ball three. Sam Peterson on deck. In trouble of walking in a run. Sam Peterson on deck. 
You know, Western's gotten two pretty good starting performances today. Didn't get anything to show for it in the first game. 3-0 from Kaczynski. In the dirt. Ball four. Walked in a run. 9-5. And the Hawks will now bring up the tying run and about probably one of the best guys you could bring up the tying run. Wonder twin powers in the form of Sammy Peterson. <laughs> But with that said, Sam, you know, the plate discipline, he hasn't thrown, Kaczynski hasn't thrown hardly any strikes to the guys before you. This inning has been loaded up with three bases, three walks and a hit batter. You can be the hero and, and tie it, but just do your one ninth, one at a time. Peterson in the box, bases loaded, nobody out. First pitch to Sam. Low, ball one. Oh, oh he called it a strike, John. Called it a strike. Oof. It probably was. It probably was. That was mm. that was slightly on the upside of where the bottom of his strike zone has been. So, a one, that's outside and low. But again, I don't, uh, I don't believe he's got three of those pitches to right. strike Sam out with. So, right. and if you do swing at that, you know we're, we're kind of saying the same stuff. But it's so important right now. If you swing at that and make contact, it's trouble for the Hawks. 1-1 one, one to Petey. Swing and a foul tip. Out in front of the 76 mile an hour pitch. One and two. Time out from Coach Sutherland. I think just to get Petey right, he hasn't he hasn't uh, looked like himself at the plate here the last two at-bats. I love that by Coach Sutherland. Love it. It's just him. Don't bring the runners in. It's Coach Sutherland, Sam Peterson. One yeah. of your most veteran hitters, been with the program for what seems like forever, and you just have a little chit chat with him and say, probably say, "Hey, you're the man." Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just loosen him up, going, "Dude, you got this guy all day, every day. Don't, to, to your point, don't do anything extra. Yep. Do what you're capable of, and and we'll be just fine. Whether that's a single, whether that's a home run." One and two is the count to Peterson. Kaczynski deals. Low gets away from the catcher. Here comes Hennings. Catcher can't find it. Hennings scores. Nine six. Hawks within three. And that'll work. And that's the <laughs> the risk you run with a guy. I mean that ball's that ball barely finds my track man screen at all. Forget the tic tac toe board. <laughs> barely finds a piece of it. And so maybe this takes a little bit of pressure off Sam again. You know, just lift a ball out into the ball. Lift the ball into yeah. right. See what Sack happens. Sack fly. Two balls, two strikes, two in scoring position now. The pitch, Petey takes it inside. Close, but Petey's so close to the plate, it looks like it's about to hit him, but it's really uh, just off the plate inside. Full count, Raider Tello on deck. He's talking with Coach Sutherland. Three balls, two strikes. Hang in there, Petey. High fastball. The pitch. In the air to center. It is down for a base hit. Here comes Mitchell, he'll score. Trying to get the runner to third. Here's the throw, not in time. Iowa within two. It's nine to seven. Great job, Petey. So everybody listening now is trying to figure out how there was such a close play at third. And it was, Andy Nelson just got completely haywire hung up as he couldn't tell if the center fielder was gonna make the play. And so he ended up running back to second. And then all of a sudden he realized, wait, I can make it to third. <laughs> so he took off to third, and that's where the throw came from, even though that was his first first base to only move up 90 feet. Nobody out still, and Iowa's within two. Runners at the corners. Coach Sutherland and Raider were having a great conversation in the on-deck circle. First pitch from Kaczynski, the left-hander. Raider hits it in the air to the right, but it'll go foul. You're probably all right with Raiders swinging at the first pitch, right? Well, <laughs> He's about you're the only guy that... I, I'm not okay with it, but I'm I'm uh, I'm resigned to the fact that after a year and a half of watching him, I'm not going to get him to stop. <laughs> right, yeah. that That's uh, that's the way to frame it, right? No balls and a strike to Tello. Raider waving the bat above his head. The pitch, again, flared foul over to the right. Down on the count, nothing in two. Reese Moore on deck. No outs in the bottom of the sixth. 9-7 Western Illinois. 
Yeah, two for three. He was completely fooled by Capron earlier. That pitch stays outside. Good job by Raider to lay off. On the one time that they were, the Western was able to get Raider out. Nelson at third, Peterson at first. A lot of speed on the base pass for the Hawkeyes right now. 1-2 to Tello. There goes Petey. Grounded foul over to the left. Yeah, that ball's probably just off the plate, but you don't, don't really blame Raider for swinging at that one with two strikes. Yeah, and for as much speed as Peterson has, Jang has had a pretty good arm behind the plate, so maybe protecting Petey a, a touch too. We'll go again at one and two. Sam flinches towards second, stays put. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Yeah, and right now, Petey doesn't seem to have a real good read on what Kaczynski's doing over there as he was almost all the way back to the bag as that ball bounced in the dirt. Count even at two with nobody out. Peterson takes off. Raider rips it into left. It is down in front of the left fielder. Here comes Nelson. Hawks are within one. Yes. Yeah, and even more importantly, still nobody out here in the sixth inning. And you know, you and I were talking strategy before about how we would have handled Kratz and what we would have done there. And, and I said, I I'd have brought him in with I, I'd have brought him in with the five run lead. You know, make sure you get a chance to yes. get him in the game. With the lead, they've blown it now. I mean, they still have the lead, obviously, oh but but now even one mistake by him, and and you're in a bind. Obviously, with Iowa with two runners on here and and nobody out in the in the sixth inning, chance to give that lead all the way away. Here's Reese Moore. How about your one swing, John? Runners at first and second, nobody out. Lob it to second base. He's got to throw it, right? He does. That should be a timeout. So that's the one you get since he didn't throw it. I think they've already used their timeout earlier today. Per batter. Oh, okay, all right. Or per half an inning. I got you, okay. Kaczynski ready, deals to Moore. Outside corner, strike one, all right. All right, that was a little stretchier than we've been today. Maybe lefty on lefty. Trick the umpire. We're okay with Reese taking a pitch, right? Certainly that one. <laughs> that's an off the end of the bat ground ball, isn't it? And that's trouble. Oh, one to more. Runners take off. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Throw to third base. Not in time. Great job by the base runners of the Hawkeyes, led by Sam Peterson at third. Yeah, Peterson got a great jump on that. He had him timed up the first time. Got a great jump that way, too. And the best part of that is you allow Raider Tello to follow in your wake. Steal second base as well. Tying run is at third base. Go ahead, run at second. No balls, two strikes. The pitch to Moore. Ground ball right side. That'll bring home Peterson. Three unassisted. Moore is out at first base. We're tied at nine. Hawks score five runs before registering their first, as they register their first out. And now we're going to get the pitching. I don't know the. Unless he's ready to go. I don't think this is a pitching change. Yeah, it is. Boy, what a time to bring him in now. I, I, to say I don't understand what this move is, is uh, an understatement. All right, well, and is it Kratz? I think it is. He's the only guy is. that was on. Yeah, he was the only guy throwing. All right, so we'll see the highly touted superstar reliever of Western Illinois. He's coming into the game in a tie game now, 9-9 nine, nine in the sixth. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need, whether you're watching the game cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! 
or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Bottom of the six, tie ball game, 9-9 nine, nine between Western Illinois and Iowa. Kyle Huxdorf will be the batter with Raider Tello at third base. New pitcher into the game for Western Illinois. They're actually going to go with Mason Telford, a right-handed junior from Streeter, Illinois. Eight appearances on the year. He's 0-1 with a 6 ERA, nine innings pitched, 11 hits, six runs have all been earned, eight walks, six strikeouts. The opponent's hitting him at 297. He pitched two-thirds of an inning on Friday. He gave up a hit, a walk. Did get the couple outs in the four batters he faced. Again, fastball, you've heard all this before. Fastball is going to be, you know, mid to low 80s slider changeup. The one difference here, he really wants to throw the, throw the off-speed pitch. A you know, high percentage of his pitching uh, pitches are off-speed pitches. Infield comes in for Huxdorf. Go ahead, run at third. First pitch to Kyle. In the dirt, ball one. And so, you know, if you're Huck here, you're looking for a mistake on one of those, uh, you know, on an off-speed pitch, up in the zone, kind of like what you saw. The ball got hit out, Jack Young. Ground ball left side. It is foul. Ooh. Rode over the line until the very last moment and skipped to the left. You know, at, at elevated, you know, she saw Whitlock's ball got hit out, you know, an elevated off speed pitch. It's kind of what you'd like to see Hawk. And, and then again, that willingness to hit it to the right side. Ball will fly still and it wins down a little bit, but it'll still fly that way. One ball, one strike. The pitch. Huck squared to bunt, pulled it back. Raiders got to scurry back to third base. Pitch out and low. Ball two. Yeah, so Huck's had safety squeeze on there. Good job from Huck because that ball was clear out in the left-hand batter's box. Not Nothing he could do other than kind of dive at it. Infield on the grass. The 2-1. Huck hit it foul over to the right. He's irritated. He's so frustrated when he just missed it. Oh, he missed the pitch he wanted right there. That was the that was the elevated off-speed pitch out over the plate. That's barrel city for Kyle most times. That is full-on demolition zone. Two balls, two strikes. Inside, ball three. Got Davis Cop on deck. Full count. Telford's ready. The pitch to Huck. In the dirt. Ball four. Good job there from Huck. Way to keep battling and way to maintain discipline. You know, not go outside of the zone and chase. Now with Cop, and obviously he's a double play risk. But he's also a he's also a risk to lace the ball in a gap and score two. Yes. Yeah, that, that walk doesn't hurt as bad as, as other ones do because it presents an opportunity to hit into that double play for Western Illinois. Iowa being out hit 13 to 8. Well, Huck takes off on the first pitch. No throw to second base. And that opportunity's gone. The Hawks are going to solve that problem. We're not going to stand here long enough for you to double up anybody. And the infield has to roll back in now. Two more in scoring position for Iowa. Trying to take the lead in the sixth by trailing by as many as five Telford ready the pitch to cop low and out gets away from the catcher here comes Raider he'll score Hawks lead 10-9 Wow Hawks find their own six pack and they don't they don't even need to be done here they can keep adding that was a good one John thank you today's game is brought to you by Bud Light that's the next read <laughs> <laughs> should I just should I just go with the read? Perfect. That was a great time for it. Love it. 10-9 Hawks. Pitch to cop. Line foul over to the right. <laughs> Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light. Proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. And we are enjoying this now much more than we were earlier. Actually, I think I read that one already. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gave me the A plus last time. Good take there from cop up and in. Give me the A plus last game, and I'm I'm working C minus now. Although that sponsor probably enjoys me a little yeah. bit more now. I give him an up added value. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Oh man, it's been a long month. <laughs> Who am I kidding? <laughs> has. 3-1. Cop hits it in the air to right. Get going, baby. It's a no-doubter. Davis, the deputy cop, strikes again. Hawks lead it. 12-9. Yes. 95 mile an hour off the bat. 383 over the right field wall. And boy, have the Hawkeyes found a way to come zooming back here. That's what you do. I guess they converted the two-point conversion on that There one. you go. An eight-run inning for the Hawks in the six, and it's 12 to nine. <laughs> okay, bullpen doing a little, doing a little dance. I love it. The, the vibes are back down the line and right. The next batter, Not sure who's coming in to pitch next. Stop, Michael that what Seager. you're looking for? Back around with Seegers. Breaking ball high. Man, I can't believe that they didn't go to Kratz. I, I, yeah. I mean, great. He's going to be loose and hot now, but. Ball up and in. Still just one out. And I do, I mean, you, you often say I, I kind of feel bad for him. I feel bad for Capron. He pitched a really nice game after giving up four in the first inning, battled through, lasted five innings. Here's a strike on the outside corner, two and one. And I've been mildly, well, impressed is a really strong word, I guess. But the, the starting pitching for Western Illinois has been all right. Seeger squares to bunt, hit it foul. It's two and two. It get, the second you get to the bullpen, though, it's it's been tough sledding for them. Yeah, I mean, Greenan was, was eight pitches, two strikes. Kaczynski was 27 pitches, 14 strikes. Telford now is 15 pitches and six strikes. I mean, it, it's just an absolute. I, I mean, you got to pull your hair out in the dugout at that point. But again, with seeing all those numbers, just kind of reinforces. Well, okay, if you got the guy with the 0.63 ERA, why didn't you? I know he's not going to finish the game from here, but Seegers pops it foul down the right field line. But if you, if you trust him to put a, a, up a couple zeros, okay, you put up a zero in the sixth, you say, maybe you give up one in the seventh. And in the in the meantime, you're adding to your total, hopefully, is the goal. Well, because you it's, still have all the momentum. Right. Now that's totally gone. Seegers take strike three. High outside corner for Ooh. out number two. That was uh, right at the top edge of the, the zone, but... But yeah, I, I just, I mean, I, again, I don't necessarily want to beat beat a dead horse when we don't really we don't really know how they use their bullpen. We've never seen it, but um, you know, I look at the ERAs on that list, and um, there's a guy I want to make sure I get in the game. Hennings hits this high in the air to right. Bushy has got it as he tracks towards the line for the third out. Eight runs come across for Iowa in the bottom of the sixth. It's 12-9. Iowa now back out in front. We're back for the seventh. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. All right, we'll get to read right this time. As a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. 
A couple of defensive changes for Iowa. Blake Guerin enters. He'll go to first base, which pushes Andy Nelson out to right, and then Sam Peterson from right field to left field. New pitcher into the game for Iowa as well. The Hawks will turn to the freshman left-hander from Ontario, Elliot Cadu Lanou. Six appearances, three starts. He's three and one on the season with a 9.39 ERA, seven and two thirds innings, ten hits, eight runs, all of them earned, five walks, nine strikeouts. Opponents have hit four home runs against him, um, but that was a team called Georgia. Yes. <laughs> and I think you know, and you know, I know those numbers. You don't sit there and go, "Wow, what a pitcher." I'll tell you, the thing that's impressed me the most about Elliott so far, though, is just the nerve of the spots that he's gotten put in. None of them have seemed too big for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he hasn't mowed down every hitter he's faced, but he's come in and he's done the job that was asked. You know, the job he was asked at Georgia was to throw strikes. He did. A couple of them got hit a long ways. One of them got hit a long ways by a guy that's going to hit a million home runs this year. Right. Very steady. Elliott deals low to... Justin Jang, I've been impressed along the same lines too, especially for a freshman. Yeah, just, just very steady. Yeah, and I know we played for the he played for the Canadian junior team too, so there's some uh, there's some big light game already, I'm sure. Um, but you know he's come here and, and done a really nice job. Been fun to fun to talk to him and watch him. Talk about an opportunity for a shutdown inning, John. 1-1 one, one from Cadu Lanou, high and out, ball two to the right-handed hitter. You put up eight, man, a zero sure is nice in the top <laughs> half. Because yeah, you put up eight and you're still not as far ahead to be completely comfortable yet. Oh, so. Only up three, yeah. 12-9 to nine in the seventh. Grounded foul. It sure felt like it hit him or looked like it hit him. but Yes. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Jang today is one for two. He's had a really nice game. He's also walked, driven in a couple of runs, scored two. John, you've mentioned you know he probably deserves a little bit more playing time. 2-2 two -two from Elliott. Just high. Nice breaking ball. Had a lot of movement on it. The windup in the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Elliott got him. Well, what a good pitch there. Looks good enough to get some chase and breaks it off the off the plate inside and gets the strikeout. And within the within the inning, the shutdown inning that you're looking for, that first out, right. th getting the leadoff hitter out is so crucial to, to maintain that momentum. Well, Iowa's been poor at that in this game, and so to get the out is is a really big deal. Heggie takes a ball high above the letters. Yeah, and it's happened in all kinds of strange ways. Some of them I.O. pitchers' faults, some of them not as much, but. Cop reaches for the pitch that was outside from Elliott. 2 0 to Heggie. Just looking to walk, a triple, a double, a double, a single, a walk. More times than not, uh, I believe that, that runner scored. Here's a 2-0. That's a strike right above the knees, 2-1. and one. Yeah, Heggie walked the lead off the game, scored. Grant Palmer tripled, tripled the right over Petey's head, scored. Ground ball left side. Who's going to grab it? It's Seeger's deep throw from the hole. Got him at first base. Max Slavens doubles and mm -hmm. scores. Liam Bushy doubled. Actually got stranded. Jackson Horn singles, gets erased on a fielder's choice, and that guy scores. So in a way, that you know that that kind of works out. Yeah, walk got erased with a double play, and then obviously the strikeout this inning. So I guess when I said Iowa had been poor, I might have been giving them too much credit. <laughs> Four of those guys have scored, and three of those guys have scored. Alexander steps up. Elliott throws it in the dirt. And so to some of the things that we've talked about in previous games, you, know, you talk about getting a 1-2-3 inning. Um, that's been elusive today. 
One out to Alexander, high and out, ball two. Elliott's fallen behind. Each of the first three hitters that he's seen. Left hander set. Here comes a 3 0. Strike one. Three and one. Fouled back to the screen. Two strikes now on Alexander. Don't trust the scoreboard. I don't, but uh, scoreboard shows two and two. We'll go with it. Out of the windup, the pitch from Elliott. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He'll get around it, glove it, throw on the run. Blake's got it at first base. One, two, three inning in the seventh, and the Hawks get that shutdown spot as we're ready to stretch things out in game two of today's doubleheader. 12 to 9, Iowa with the lead. Headed to the bottom of the seventh. Hey, Hawk fans, it's time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all. Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oakdale is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oakdale.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. So ice cream and cupcakes. Count me in. Back to back, that was the that was the sweet inning. We had the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch, and we had uh, Molly's Cupcakes coming for the bottom of the seventh. Western Illinois makes a pitching change. They'll go with the right-handed junior, Billy Humphrey. 0-2 oh, on the season, five appearances. Let's have a couple starts, actually. 22.09 ERA, seven and a third innings, 20 hits, 20 runs, 18 of those were earned, six walks, four strikeouts. He's given up 15 extra base hits. Opponents hitting 513 against him. Mm. Fastball is going to be just below 90. Uh, we'll try to mix in a slider and a changeup, um, but again, another one of those guys where sit on the fastball and say, "You come right here," because yes. I don't think you're going to be able to nibble the corners and get me out. Bottom of the seventh, Iowa up 12-9, getting out hit by Western Illinois, but made the Leathernecks pay for their walks and, and free bases that they've issued. Yeah, five extra base hits for Western Three Illinois, just three for Iowa. For the Hawkeyes, second baseman Gable Mitchell. Humphrey is ready, deals to Gable Mitchell. Mitchell skies it in the air down the line and left, and it'll be caught. One pitch, one out. Iowa has 12 runs, and they're 0 for 7 with two outs. Very different than the first game. Yeah, the today. First, first game Iowa was very good. The box score disappeared on me. I'll see if I can get it pulled back up here. They, when they restarted the second game, they they killed and reset the first game into pregame, so I can't see it anymore. First baseman Andy to see the advanced Nelson. stats right. like that. Andy Nelson takes up and in for a ball. Andy wore a couple of those earlier. He doesn't need to take any more. Andy 0 for 1 this game, but been on base three times. Take that on base percentage. Getting up there for Andy. Batting 304. Really strong series against Ole Miss. 
a couple of weekends ago. Boy, he hit the ball hard that weekend. Yeah. Can you believe that that was two weeks ago already? Downstairs for ball two. Well, it was kind of the kind of the part where Andy made it impossible for the coaches to keep him out of the mm -hmm. lineup. Uh, you know, he was certainly a bright spot on Saturday down there and, and continued it on Sunday. Here's a 2-1. Low ball three. Yeah, this umpire's strike zone is not conducive to Western Illinois pitching. Because it's so small? It's so small. 3-1. High ball four. He just doesn't, he doesn't give, there's just no give off the edges for him. And again, that's perfectly fine. Observation. Because he's been very consistent about it all game. He, you know, he's, there have only been a couple outliers that when he gets his report that says, hey, what's your effective zone look like? His effective zone is going to be very, very consistent. He's been very good that way. Here comes Sam Peterson. Swings at the first pitch and hits it foul over to the left. Iowa up by three. Have six outs to get defensively, so let's see if you can expand the lead. PD two for four, drove his batting average up to 384 now. Runner takes off. No, he goes back to first, and the pitch was high and out to Peterson. What do you think about that, John, with uh, Andy there? I would be okay with him running, and actually I think he might have stolen a top-end strike from Peterson there as that wall was right on the edge of the strike zone that's been called. Was he meaning to steal, do you think? Nope. Breaking ball stayed high to Peterson, 2-1, and one, just a false step forward to maybe fake out the catcher? Yeah, just to show, maybe give a little look. Maybe to just time it up, see how it feels. Great lead at first base again for Andy. Two balls and a strike. The pitch. And else, uh, Peterson popped it foul over to the right. Out of play. Two and two. Yeah, Humphrey's decent to the plate speed-wise. You know, he's not not one of the fastest guys to the plate, but he does a good job. And, and you've seen with Jang, he's got a decent enough arm. Not always accurate, but good strong arm. Runner takes off. Peterson hits it foul over to Coach Bo at third. Coach Bo decides no chance am I going to try to scoop that thing. We're just going to take a couple steps forward and call it good. I'm out of there. PD 13 extra base hits, so 13 of his 28 hits on the year have gone for extra bases. He is the Sam Peterson that uh, Hawkeyes were expecting him to be coming into the year. Having a heck of an at-bat right now as he fouls off another one, this time over to the right. A good discipline there. That ball's probably outside of today's zone, but again, maybe maybe a little too close to take. So you go ahead and drop bat on it, foul it off. Count even at two, the pitch. Petey sends it up the middle and through into center field for a base hit. Nelson rounds second, heading for third, and he'll get there without a throw. The center fielder bobbled it, picking it up off the turf. Runners at the corners, and one out for Tello. Third hit of the game for Petey. Not enough of the Hawkeye parents left to give the uh, Raider power chant, <laughs> Raider Tello chant. Just a cluster over to the right. They're all too cold and cramped up like we are to yeah. try to give anything extra. My back's going to be sore tomorrow. I've been shivering. I've been <laughs> hunched over. My hand warmer battery wore out. Uh-oh. Petey takes off. Raider hits us on the ground. Left side through into left field. Nelson will score. Peterson easily gets to second base. Raider with an RBI single. What a weekend for Raider. I, I just know that he was a little bit frustrated uh, coming home from Georgia. Well, and he has broken through this weekend. You know, he hit so many balls hard and just kept finding interesting ways to make outs. <laughs> and so now to, to have some of those find holes to continue to hit balls hard. One out, runners at first and second. This is Reese Moore. Swings at the first pitch and hits it foul over to the left. It's in Reese's zone. Reese today, one for three with a walk and a run batted in. 
I don't know if Iowa can get to the uh, what have felt run rule was impossible a while ago. Ground ball right side through into the outfield, though. PD will be waved home. Tello headed for third. The throw will head that way, and Raider dives in safely. Peterson scores 14-9. to nine. It's not impossible. It's certainly not impossible if you start thinking about next inning again. But, yes. You know, Iowa has, you know, five outs to end this game early. Going for the, the sweep of the... Uh, Run rule, the run a run rule sweep. It's 14 to nine. We are in the seventh. Well, Iowa follows up the eighth spot with you know, two more here, chance to continue to add. Moore takes off, chopper left side, gonna be a tough play. Shortstop's got it. He'll make the long throw to first, not in time. Tello scores from third, 15 to nine. I think what I'm. What I'm completely baffled by at this point is Sam Peterson, I guess, I guess Moore took a pitch, but Peterson is 2-2. Mitchell flies out to left on the 0-0 pitch. First pitch he sees, Peterson gets a handful of pitches. Tello singles on his first pitch. <laughs> Reese Moore singles on his second pitch, and Kyle Huxdorf singles on his first pitch. And Iowa continuing to run and put pressure on. Not a ton of pitches that Humphrey's thrown this inning. No. Only at 17. Cop takes strike one on the outside corner. He's allowed three runs. Yeah, I mean, he's allowed three runs on four hits. Two on, one out for Cop. 15 to nine. Here's the pitch to Davis. Hit in the gap in left center. It's hanging up in the air. Center fielder is over. He dropped it. He dropped the ball. Here comes the throw to third. Reese hustles there and gets to third base. Bases are loaded. Wow. He got there and he just dropped it. Mm. And again, just a uh, a testament to how difficult the conditions are. I mean, you know, we've got a great view of that ball. That ball is is at the I or maybe the O in Iowa on the left center field wall. Comes all the way back to him. And now Michael Seegers is 330 feet down the right field line from sending us all home. Bases loaded, one out. Iowa within striking distance of the run rule, 15 to nine. First pitch to Michael, in the dirt, ball one. Blake Guerin is on deck. I was even the hit battle now. Yep, 13 apiece. Offensive explosion this weekend, especially this game, both teams. Humphrey is ready. Pitch to Seegers, high and tight, ball two. Time called, we'll have a pinch runner. Ben Swales enters for Davis Kopp. What a weekend for Davis. Tip your cap there. Nice job, Davis. And really, I mean, he's got the batting average up to 290 now. Um, had, a, had a pretty good game, hit the home run at Georgia. Um, but nice to see him kind of finding a rhythm. I know I talked to him beforehand that he's feeling a little bit better. Um, so a little bit more confidence in and uh, the body parts will all cooperate. Yeah. Hitters count for Siegs. Two balls, no strikes. One out, bases loaded. 15 to nine, Iowa with lead, bottom seven. Pitch to Michael. Dropped in there for a strike, two and one. Pitch running for the Hawkeyes, number 13, Ben Swall. Oh. Two one, Michael hits it in the air to left center field. It's carrying well, and it is down to the base of the wall. Here comes one. Here comes two. They're waving swales. He loses his lid. Here's the play at the plate. Save. Three runs come home. Bases clearing. Double. Michael Seegers. It's 18 to nine. 99 miles an hour off the bat. And again, that's that's another windblown ball. I mean, it's a, it's a well-hit ball anyway, but that ball just kept slicing more and more towards center field. Got away from, got away from the left fielder all the way out in the gap. That was just like the ball. You take the wind out of it, but it was hitting the same spot that Michael hit the ball against North Carolina last year in the regional, all the way to the left center wall, that scored a, a couple of runs there in extra innings to give Iowa the lead in the elimination game, and now a base hit 
yeah. could win it for Blake Guerin and the Hawkeyes with one out, runner at second. It's 18-9, to nine, and are we going to have a pitching change? He made the wiggle. We can't possibly go into the guy now. Well, is this, well, this looks like could be something else. He's uh, bringing the trainer, trainer him, yeah. yeah. Trainer's coming out to talk to Humphrey along with the coach. And they are sprinting down to the bullpen. Yeah, you got guys. I mean, if he is hurt, now you got you got somebody needs to get ready quick. And I mean, they'll get as much time as they need. And he, yeah, he's he's making a change already. And the guy just kind of stripped off his warm up top and came in. So uh, th this will be this will be a bit of a delayed uh, a delayed change here. I think. Ooh, you, you feel for Humphrey there as he's kind of limping off the field. And a new pitcher is coming in for Western Illinois. I think that's Golden again, isn't it? We'll have to check on the number. It looks like him, John. I think you might be right. It is. It is Chase Golden coming into the game, a sophomore right-hander from Carmel, Indiana. He'll enter and have as much time as he needs, which could be quite some time. He threw 48 pitches yesterday. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he, this... The, and again, this goes to the we, we don't really know what's going on in the in the Western Illinois bullpen. They have to be there. There has to be injuries and things that they're fighting through right now that um, to, to roll back to to a guy that threw 48 pitches yesterday. Coach Heller had, had mentioned they were a little bit shorthanded in the bullpen. I thought just generally on the season uh, in the, in the uh, first year head coach uh, for the first year head coach uh, at Golden, the pitcher at uh, Western Illinois, but they might they might mean right now, too. And yeah, they might I mean, Golden's got a long way to go because he's doing like the crow hop and everything coming off the mound. He hasn't even thrown a pitch yet. Yeah, now they're, now they're giving him the, uh, the, the data. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. 18-9, to 9, Iowa in the bottom of the seventh. The Hawks are one run away from winning this one in seven after winning yesterday in eight and earlier today in eight. Have a chance to uh, get all three wins via the run rule, and that would be, be all right with us. Has your depression lifted? Because you, you weren't you weren't anticipating that at some point earlier in this game. <laughs> I was certainly not anticipating a run rule even being a possibility, John. I was fearing a loss at nine to four. I was down in the dumps already, John. You called me on it a little bit, but we were down nine. To, the Hawks were down nine to four in the in the six. I was I was in rough shape. I've been picked up a little bit though. <laughs> That's why you, that's why you keep playing. You stick with it. You keep playing. Well, you keep broadcasting. You keep calling the game, John. And and, and evidently, they, you know, they, Hawkeye dugout may have known more too. But uh, and, and maybe we didn't see Kratz warming up in the bullpen. But I think Coach Heller thought he was available because he talked about it in one of the twice, pre, yeah, in one of the pregame <clears throat> interviews. And I thought I saw him warming up, but maybe it was 36 instead of 26, and maybe it was the. You know Humphrey instead, but uh, you know just been a uh, you know Humphrey at least threw strikes, uh, but you know got hit around and uh, I look like he limped off. And I always for a pitcher, I'd rather they have a lower body injury than anything upper yeah. body. You know, the arm stuff is is super scary, and yep. so you know maybe he tweaked an ankle or he's got a pulled groin or anything like that where it's. You know, it's, it's not great right now, but it's not, oh, man, you're going to be out for months. Looks like Golden is good to go. And so Blake Guerin will walk behind the batter's box and stand in from the right side, ready to roll. Right. Seegers right. at second. He is the winning run in the seventh. And remember, we saw Golden yesterday, two and two-thirds innings, four hits, four runs were all earned, three walks, didn't strike a Hawkeye batter out. So chance here to finish the deal. Golden, the right-hander, out of the stretch. The pitch to Garen. Dropped it in there for a strike. Ooh. That's a new strike zone. And it was a breaking ball. Maybe that's Blake 6-6. Six, six. Yep. Remember we've kind of joked about that too, how some hitters, you know, Huck had a stretch of it where some guys just get either dotted or weird calls from the umpire consistently. No balls in a strike. The pitch to Garen. 
outside. Good eye. Ball one. You know, Golden really kind of throws the fastball all over the place. It'll be 85 plus a little slider changeup. Kind of gone more to the, the breaking stuff in some of his more recent appearances. Count even at one. Low strike call there. One and two at the knees. I guess, you know, to your point a little bit, Blake draws a, a bigger zone. One ball, two strikes. One out for Garen. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Garen down on strikes, two outs. And we'll see uh, Kellen Strohmeyer come to the plate. Love it. If he gets a ball on the inner half. <laughs> He's got the ability to really turn on one. He really likes to try to turn on one. Number 44, Kellen Strohmeyer. Seeger's still out there at second base with two outs. He'll be going on contact if Kellen can find some green in the outfield. Strohmeyer, the left-handed hitter. First pitch, swing and a miss. Good healthy cut, missed it. I like the swing, though. One of the things with, with Stroh has been a passiveness at the plate where he's taken you know taking pitches maybe he shouldn't have that ball that ball's down low in the zone but a one called a strike low inside corner nothing in two swings over the breaking ball takes the ball right on the inside part of the plate the o2 pitch Hit him. Oh, Kellen couldn't get out of the way. Had nowhere to go, and he got hit in the knee. Yeah, there was there was nothing to do there. That's, I mean, because your inclination is I need to go backward, and as soon as he hops backward there, he's he's cooked. There's no there's no extra room there. He had to go forward probably to get out of the way. Yeah. That can't feel good either. I'm not sure if the game doesn't end here. Not sure who plays second base. Yeah, that's uh, Strohmeyer in for Mitchell there, so we'll see. Andy Nelson is up, takes high, ball one. Do you suspect? You could put Strohmeyer in right, you could move Andy to second, yep. and leave Blake in then at first still. That would make the most sense. Or you could just single, or... <laughs> si single the center field and finish this game up. 1-0 to Nelson, here it is. High ball two. Giant green light here. Get a fastball. Oh, okay. Get a fastball in a spot you want it. Drive it. Ambush it. Yep. Two zero pitch to Nelson. Low ball three. Close, but not a strike. Peterson on deck for Iowa. I'd take that too. Yep. Good options. Here's a 3-0 called oh. strike. Oh, my goodness. That's that's a charity strike. We've, we've talked about how consistent this strike zone has been. That has not been a strike. I think plenty of donations to charity have occurred today. We can uh, avoid that one. Here's a 3-1. Nelson taps it foul, and now the count's full. Now you, now, you need to sw now you need to swing at that pitch. Runners will be moving on the pitch. That's something to note. Full count, two outs. Nelson in the box, Golden ready. The pitch called third strike. And he watched it go right by. He's out number three. The Hawks get six more runs. It's 18 to nine. We'll have to go to the eighth. We're back after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. 
We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo at Dwayne Banks Field on the campus of the University of Iowa. It's 18-9. to 9. The Hawkeyes have doubled up Western Illinois. We're in the eighth inning. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, Elliot Cadu Lanou spent some time in the dugout. Hopefully, he stayed warm underneath those heaters. He'll come out for another inning against Liam Bushy to start. He took Andy Nelson the full uh, the full time allotment to find his infielder glove that wasn't a first baseman's glove. Yeah, we got through the ID there without a uh, second baseman. <laughs> then Andy poked out of the dugout. Cade Moss in too now behind the plate. 1-0 pitch is low and out, ball two. This got to be tough for Elliott after sitting for so long. And my only argument to Elliott's outing right now is, you know, he's been behind 1-0, 2 to pretty much everybody he's faced. Oh, just, now come on. Yeah, now what, what are we doing there? Ball three, just a touch outside apparently. I mean, again, based on today's zone it was, but we got a little stretchy on the... Ah, boy, those are those are three non-competitive pitches, though. Unfortunately, the the, the one maybe you could argue for, but uh, the other ones were not very not very debatable. So a four-pitch walk to Bushy will bring up Hevelin. The next batter for the Leathernecks, the designated hitter, J.R. Hevelin. First pitch is a strike, high outside corner. Six four three, John. Downstairs, ball one. I'm on board with that. Boy, I was just looking at the scoreboard. You know, four, eight, and six, and then four zeros. <laughs> it's been an interesting day for a Hawkeye hitting approach. The one one, way high and out, ball two. And Elliot's from Canada. Surely there's been some cold days there to throw in Canada, so. This probably isn't too too out of uh, something he hasn't seen before. 2-1. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two two. I'm 100% on board with the 6-4-3. Uh, I I'd take the strikeout here and get Loomis to ground into it, too. Okay. I don't care. Either yeah. way. We're in strikeout position. Two balls, two strikes. Elliott ready. Foul back to the net. It'll roll back to Moss behind the plate. Yeah, Kate is going to. Yeah, is he going to have to bat? Might not. Depends on how the top two, three, four hitters do for him. 2-2. Two, two. Ground ball, left side. This will be a tough play. Tello picks it up. He'll throw it to second for the first out. And a nice job there to get the lead runner. That's all Iowa gets. Andy Nelson does a good job just playing his first base position at second base, making sure he gets the out. Probably could have come bouncing across and tried to make a throw, but don't think there was anybody to get there. So keep the force play intact and try to roll two here. One out. New runner at first base is Hevelin. Elliott deals a strike on the inside corner. Good start. Just a notch below 90 from Cadu Lanou. Good to see strike one. You know, just had a hard time getting to 0-1. Give yourself an advantage here. Swing and a miss, and that's why you do it right there, right, John? Yeah, because then you get a wild whiff on a ball that's not even, not even close. 28 inches of horizontal break again. 
No balls, two strikes. Runner at first with one out. Cadu Lanou in a staring contest with a runner at first base. Throws it in the dirt. Cade knocks it down. Throw down to second base. Got him. Save. Called him safe. Will they go to the review? Drop the ball. Okay. All right. Didn't have the ball. Because, yes, otherwise I think he was toast. What a recovery by Moss behind the plate. One ball, two strikes. Go get him right now, Elliot. Here's the pitch. Check swing, went around, you bet. Kind of a check swing. He went a lot further than I thought he was going it to. It was, I'd really like to check my swing, but I can't. <laughs> can't stop. The brakes are out. <laughs> that was that was full runaway train there. and I, I know I'm not supposed to swing at this, but I can't make my body stop. <laughs> can't do it. Two outs for Slavens. Runner at second base. Breaking ball, strike one. Wow. What a pitch from Elliott. 68 mile an hour looper. Yeah, let's be nice. Let's make sure Iowa only needs one and not two in yes. the bottom of the eighth inning. Yes. Here's a yo one. Fastball high. It'll be Peterson, Tello, and Moore for Iowa. 1-1 one, one from Elliott. Swing and a miss. Woo -hoo -hoo. Went back to 66. I mean, there's there's 23 miles an hour difference between pitch one, pitch two, and pitch three. Wow. How do you gear up for that? Yeah, now what do you do? Here's the one, two. Hit down the line and left. Peterson moving over, still sprinting towards the line. Peterson dives. He made the play. Petey with the spectacular diving catch. How about that? Hawkeye defense saves a run. They've had a couple opportunities to make those plays. Haven't been able to pull it off. Sam Peterson in a big spot there gets one. That heck of a play there by Peterson will go to the bottom of the eighth. One run to win it for the Hawks. It's 18-9. to nine. Back after this, this is Iowa baseball from Learfield. <laughs> Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City community for 57 years. Oak Knoll's conveniently located near the Iowa City hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. We've got a new pitcher in the game. Yeah, the uh, Leathernecks will go with Jackson Rogers, a right-handed freshman from Glen Carbon, Illinois. Well, you screwed me up there. I was checkmarking the read. Hold he on. is six foot three, one ninety-five. I need one more stat for him. Up. Nope, I got it. 0-1 on the year, four appearances, 18 ERA, five innings, 10 hits, 10 runs allowed, five walks, two strikeouts. Opponents have six extra base hits against him as well. Fastballs. Low to mid 80s, curveball, slider, changeup. Petey rips it foul past Coach Bo at third. He was swinging at the first pitch. Iowa needs one run to win it. It's 18 to nine in the bottom of the eighth. Not a lot of uh, 
Not a lot of good breaking stuff here. That's low. Good eye from Sam. So you know, make him, make him come in the zone and then do damage on that fastball. Peterson lays off. I mean, this is this is power city for the Hawks. And you got Peterson, Tello, Moore, and Huxdorf. So, you know, back-to-back -back doubles, you know, double and a base hit. Here's two one to Petey in the dirt ball three. I mean, lead off walk might be okay too. Walk stolen base and then <laughs> yes, any way to get a run across. A lot of ways to make that combo happen. We're back in action Wednesday against Grandview. Grandview. Don't check the weather for that one, John. 3-1. Petey hits it in the air, down the line and right, but it'll move foul and out of play. Full count. Potential that we don't play it. Uh, it's supposed to be 40 on Wednesday. It is supposed to be 60 on Tuesday. Potential we move it to Tuesday. Potential of that. I would, I, again, haven't heard anything along those lines, but forecast-wise, you would kind of think so. Here's a 3-2. Petey takes in the dirt. Ball four. And he'll walk to start the Hawkeye eighth. Yeah, I've got a real feel high on Wednesday by AccuWeather, which is the one they have to use or do use in the Big Ten, is 46. No thanks. And it's way above the threshold, but. Yeah, the real feel would be 42. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be warm enough to start a game. And, and I guess the good news is the average wind is only nine miles an hour, so. Here's Tello. Bloops this down the line and right. That's going to get down for a base hit. Petey will dig for three, and he'll easily get there. Raider off the end of the bat has another base hit. His fifth of the game. Love it. And now the winning run just 90 feet away. Tello's, Tello was 370 before that at bat. See what the average jumps to when he gets that hit credited to him. You know, the downside to Tuesday, though, 58 degrees, average wind, 17 miles an hour. Double. With gusting of 37. 37? No thanks. Don't yep. love that either. Yeah. So. All right, we'll have a pinch hitter, Will Mulfler. He'll get an opportunity to win the game for the Hawks. Senior from Mercer Island, Washington. Will's been around for a while. I'm still more excited. I used to really like Will. Now I'm more excited about his mom being a golf coach. <laughs> right. Number 42, Will Muffler. Look forward to that interview when you do that one, John, <laughs> right? I know that's going to come up. Runners at the corners. The only one that really matters right now is Petey at third base. Infield comes in. First pitch to Muffler. That's high, ball one. And if I remember correctly, Will told me he doesn't play. Hmm. So, which isn't terribly surprising. Neither one of my girls play, and I was... I was going to ask you that. Sp spent some years uh, in the golf business as well. Yeah, I think that's a key note to understand. 1-0 pitch to Mulfler takes it high. You know, you, you talk about golf and, you know, the golf approach. You're not just some average guy that plays every once in a while, you know, on a Saturday when the sun's out, John. We probably should have informed the uh, audience about your your uh, history with the game. Maybe we'll do that uh one of the games at Purdue. Blooped into center field for Mulfler. It's down for a base hit. Here comes Petey. He'll score, and Will Mulfler ends the game. 19-9, to the Hawkeyes win it. Third hit of the year for Will. Nice job there. Boy, what a, what a nice job to stay in your process for the Hawks. Just keep doing, keep doing what you do, and boy. It was a lot of work, but but got to a good finish line for the Hawks here with the with the run rule win again in game two of the doubleheader and game three of the series. The sweep is complete for the Hawkeyes. Knock off Western Illinois, 11 to 1, 17 to 7, and 19 to 9. All coming by run rule. All coming in the eighth inning. All right, some positive momentum. Hawks headed in the right direction as we get ready for the midweek with Grandview and then the big-time series with Purdue coming up this weekend. We'll take a break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Fight for Iowa and go Hawks. 19-9, Iowa beats Western Illinois in eight innings to complete the sweep over the Leathernecks. Strong performances up and down the uh, batting order for Iowa. If you had to pick a player of the game, John, do you lean Raider Tello for this one? Oh, I think you have to. Just... Hey. If for if for no other reason than uh, you know the combined day, let's let's get that right here. Raider Tello was. We find the game one box score. Iowa won game one, 17 to seven. Raider Tello was four for five. Raider Tello was five for six. So make Raiders day nine for 11. Scored seven runs. Drove in four. Yeah. That, that makes him player of, of, player the, of the game, day. player of the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, Davis was great earlier today at six RBIs, but uh, a really nice job by Raider Tello today. Uh, for him and his confidence and his momentum as we get rolling now into gear towards conference play, nice job. Who stood out uh, pitching for for the Hawks today? Had four pitchers in this second game, Morgan Whitlock, Volker, and and Kadu Lanou. I think what I'll go with is, is more of a... Uh, uh, a weekend uh, with sure. with the bullpen, the much maligned, difficult time throwing strikes bullpen walked two guys all weekend. Uh, you know, Zach walked a guy today. Kadu Lanou walked a guy, um, but two walks the entire weekend from the bullpen. And if I was going to compete and win, that's got to be the yeah. answer. Nice job to take care of Western Illinois this weekend. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with post-game coverage right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa completes the sweep with a 19-9 winner over Western Illinois. Let's relive some of the highlights. One, two. Called third strike. Outside corner, and Morgan throws him. And, that's another and Western line. Illinois will leave the bases loaded. They do get one run. 3-2 to Petey. Here comes Marty. Down the line in right. It is a fair ball. It was right on the line. Here comes Nelson. He'll score. Petey, he's headed for three. Here's the throw. Safe. Short leads by both runners. The next pitch hit on the ground. Right side. Mitchell, long run. Dives. Makes the stop. Throws to first base. Got him at first base. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out in the fourth. Whitlock comes set. He's ready. And he fires. Called third strike. There it is. 
Front door breaking ball. Hey, how you doing? Side. Raider lines this into the corner and right. Base hit. He rounds first, headed for two. Here comes the throw. Tello is in with the leadoff double. Good start to the fifth. Long pause from Volker, the one-two. Chopped right back to him. He gloves it. He'll throw to second base for one. Over to first. Double play. One, six, three. Telford ready. The pitch to Cop. Low and out. Gets away from the catcher. Here comes Raider. He'll score. Hawks lead 10-9. 3-1. Cop hits it in the air to right. Get going, baby. It's a no-doubter. Davis, the deputy cop, strikes again. Hawks lead it 12-9. Yes. 2-1. Michael hits it in the air to left center field. It's carrying well, and it is down to the base of the wall here comes one here comes two they're waving swales he loses his lid here's the play at the plate save three runs come home base is clearing double michael seegers it's 18 to 9 blooped into center field for Mulfler. it's down for a base hit here comes Petey. he'll score and will Mulfler ends the game 19 to 9 the hawkeyes win it we're now joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, uh, congratulations on the win. What a wild one that second game was in particular. Yeah, just to, just crazy. You know, the way it started out, you know, we kind of take control, you know, get four in the bottom. And then to their credit, you know, I give a lot of credit to new coaching staff. You know, they got the job in the summer. You know how scattered rosters are in this day and age with the portal and everything. You know, they're just fighting to put guys together, and they're trying to create a culture and an understanding of, of what it takes to win. And, you know, after two 10-run two losses, they come out and, and play really hard that third game. And, and, you know, I thought that that's what they would do, but that's a credit to their coaching staff. It's a credit to their kids. Um, you know, and it's just going to take them some time to get where they want to but just really impressed with with them and and how they go about their business so they come in and you know they get Marcus out of the game get us into the pen really early and credit to their kid you know I don't you know it, it didn't feel like we were you know uneasy at the plate but but you know he puts up four straight zeros or five yeah four straight zeros after a four on first and you know you're looking at that game and you're like that's that's how you lose a game like that that kid we let that kid stay out there don't get into the pen you know they get up you know hit a big home run um you're up nine to four and we kind of feel like we're dead in the water and the one thing i just told the guys is five out of our first six hitters had quality at bats and then through five innings, five we had five more, you know, those next four four innings and change, and and you know that's unacceptable. And and obviously, um, then we were able to string together a bunch. I thought some really good at bats. Certainly, they helped us with some free bases. But I thought Gables at bat was really the key at bat. You know, first two guys get on. They bring in that reliever, you know, he fouls off two or three, three, two pitches and then gets a walk. And I felt pretty good about where we were at after that. That win I thought was kind of put us in a good place. That guy got uneasy. Now they're loaded and and now you got some some pressure on them. But I thought that was a really big at bat. And then we had, you know, no number of other big at bats. Davis with the big hit. Um, I was telling Rick we were. I think we were 12 or 13 for 13. We, we were batted 1,000 with runners on third and less than two outs. Did awesome. 12 to 12 or 13 to 13. I mean, that's how you win games. That's how you score a bunch of runs. We won every 3-2 count until uh, the punch out there in the, in the seventh. So um, just some of that execution stuff that we know – um, means a lot in the course of a game. I thought we did really well, and you know, credit to our guys for figuring out a way to to get back in the game and and get some big hits. And then certainly Elliot and and Volker out of the pen, calming things down, and even Jack calmed some things down. You know, uh, there early, just they got to him a little bit there in his in his second or third inning. But good job by the rest of those guys coming in and putting up zeros. Uh, offensively, Gable was the hero yesterday, or had the had the stellar game. Y you rely on on some of the the veterans of the team, Raider and Davis. A both games today just outstanding yeah and i thought pd had a good day too and and um you know raider had nine hits in, in the two <laughs> games i mean that's that's a pretty incredible day you could see it coming couldn't you I mean, yeah he was frustrated i mean a little you know bit. it was funny because he he would probably tell you he was really frustrated in bp and and he didn't have a good bp and you know he has a tendency to wear his emotions on his sleeve so you kind of know where raider's at <laughs> and how he's feeling and in the last round we just talked about it's like hey just get to the inside part of the ball you're just a little bit loose we got to tighten up and and his last round was way better and you know I, it's funny how that happens sometimes where 
you know, you go out on the field, you have a great BP, and you're spraying it everywhere you go, and you're 0 for 4. Mm-hmm. And, and for whatever reason, and then those days where you feel like crap, you get in a game, and everything's just in the right spot. So um, sometimes the BP doesn't matter. We talk to those guys. Sometimes it's like, hey, you know, you play basketball, you you mad when you miss a layup and layup drill. I mean, it's it's a similar situation. And, um, you know, I thought, you know, obviously just a great day. And Davis and Petey and, um, you know, Andy was on base a ton, four walks. You know, he doesn't have a hit, but he's on base four time scores three runs that's what you want out of the leadoff mm-hmm. the leadoff position you're not worried so much about about you know the hits just get on base and um again davis is big hit michael's big hit so just a lot of production up and down the lineup you know connor gets a start and he and he's on base uh, two or three times so that was great to see and um you know just a, just a really good offensive day i mean just really good weekend we needed this this type of weekend and thought our guys answered the bell on you know a tougher day to hit but it is a kind of a good day to hit if you understand and get some elevation to the to the the right field side you got some things going in your direction uh, with the pitching coach um john did the math I think two walks by the bullpen this entire weekend yeah is that right yeah i think out of 13 awesome. innings you know that's great um really good out of that group and certainly needed some things like that to start happening you know unfortunately the starting pitching just wasn't very good this weekend we didn't get through five one time um just a lot of traffic a lot of not you know and we didn't help sometimes defensively even in, in the game today we missed play a ball and right um you know just some things like that they found some holes but we just got to be better we got to cover some things up and you know we really felt like that was our strength and right now we're just searching a little bit there we we know those guys are fully capable we need to get them right and you just can't win you can't win a championship you can't win regionals you can't go to super regionals all those types of things if your starters aren't getting you into the sixth and seventh and right now that's that's the biggest issue is we're just not we're not getting depth out of that starting pitching as far as as innings are concerned but you know we believe in those three guys we'll take those three guys over everybody every mm-hmm. single time you know they just got to go out there and believe and and work through some of that stuff some of it's some of it's young you know Cade's first time starting in college some of that's growing pains there um and and the others just just got to believe in themselves yeah. and and sometimes it's not easy in this game and especially when you know, it feels like every ball that's hits in a hole, you know, and that's kind of what it felt like for Marcus to a degree. They just credit to them. They put it in play, found holes, you know, hit ball soft enough in the right places. And, you know, that's those those things have a, those, those things can happen. And, and unfortunately, it was a little bit of that today. But, you know, guys persevered, kept kept at it. And, you know, that's, you know, Coach Heller says it all the time. Just keep playing, keep playing. Game will come back to you because that's the only thing you can do. And I thought we did a really nice job with that today. Confidence is back, Coach. We'll see you for the midweek. Congratulations right. on a great Thanks, weekend. John. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our postgame show from Dwayne Banks today. We'll take a break. We'll come back and wrap things up. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox home comfort specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Iowa completes the sweep of Western Illinois with a 19-9 winner in eight innings to improve to 10-9. and That'll do it for the series with the Leathernecks, winning yesterday 11-1, and then today 17-7 in the first game, 19-9 in the finale. That'll do it for our coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball today. A long day. Thanks for sticking with us, Hawkeye fans. Thank, thanks for sticking with us during that game, too. It was a roller coaster of a game, that, that third game, the second game today. But we'll talk to you in the midweek Wednesday against Grandview right here at Dwayne Banks Field before a big-time series, uh, Big Ten opener with Purdue next weekend on the road at West Lafayette. All right, that'll do it from Iowa City today, 19-9. to The Hawkeyes win it. 
for my great board op down the line, Jason. Thank you today, Jason. Great job, as always. My color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Banks in Iowa City. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye baseball has been brought to you by High V. Score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeyes Sports Network.